life in New York is an amazing life. I have a great apartment, a wonderful house in Connecticut. I have two assistants that work in the house. I have my jewelry company. And then at night, I either perform or I see friends in theater. At this age... One guy said, I want you to meet my family, he took me to the cemetery. I love my career. I adore my audiences. But I live in New York. Melissa and Cooper live in California. They keep sending me pictures of all these wonderful things they're doing. I want to be in those pictures now. That's why I am moving to California. Joan Rivers Worldwide is my jewelry and apparel and cosmetic company. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I started 20 years ago sitting in my dressing room at CBS when I was doing my daytime talk show. And uh, it just grew from there. I love the energy of this place. They this is the one that together. stole your husband. <laughs> and she was 16 years old with breasts on her shoulders. And you don't have that in L.A. I mean, L.A., you see somebody in flip-flops getting into a big car. I want to have an office meeting for everybody. Hello? It's so difficult to say to people that you know, I'm leaving because you know that shakes their world. I have an announcement. I am moving to California. Does anybody have any questions? Are you doing this just to be closer to Melissa? Is that the reason? Totally. 20 years, this has been a business, and I'm not going to lose AM styles and PM styles or anything. This saved my life. What about your office? Who gets your office? Can I have <laughs> it's, 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 the head hasn't hit the floor. <laughs> it was so hard saying goodbye to everyone in New York, because at this age, you make short-term plans, like... Uh, if you're still alive at five o'clock, I'll meet you for a drink. And in a way, I'm leaving my New York family for my LA family. Uh huh, you know you can't get past me. Yes, I can. Everyone knows that I'm the Melissa part of Joan and Melissa. But what people don't realize is I also produce. I produce the red carpets, I produce the fashion police, I produce all sorts of stuff. I mean, you just have to read the credits real carefully and you'll start to see my name places. Ready? Hi. I live in Malibu. My son is amazing. I mean, Cooper surfs and plays lacrosse. Yeah! <laughs> Incoming! <laughs> and now I have Jason. Ah! Hi, babe. Hi, good morning. Good morning. morning. Mm. I work with a hedge fund, do a lot of structured finance, and I used to be a professional tennis player. So in the afternoons, I'm out there coaching kids. It keeps me connected to a big part of my past. Jason and I have been together about two years now. Our relationship is great. It's solid and it's supportive. I love, I love you. My mom doesn't know that he has officially moved in here. Could you pass that down, Conrad? Thank pepperoni you. Pepperoni or regular? Please, pepperoni. Also living here is my friend Conrad. Conrad is one of my dearest friends. He's the closest thing I have to a brother. Thank you for being there for me. I became friends with Melissa right after her divorce. She was going through some rough times. And during that period, you know, we really bonded and, you know, we've been friends ever since. Conrad's working on getting his real estate license. While he's been getting his life together, he's been living with me. Okay, you want to sit down here? Okay. Dominica is our new nanny. I watched her work with friends of mine in the neighborhood and the kids loved her and she did a great job. And, you know, I'm just really lucky that I got her. She's fantastic. Table looks lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. We're a family. It might not be a traditional family. The only thing we're missing is a comedic icon that I call mom. Everybody, 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 I have a slight announcement. You are my closest friends. And I thought I would tell you before you hear from other people. I have rented my house out for five years. And I am going to move to California. This is a joke. It's not a joke. 
and it's just time. I just think she's making the biggest mistake she's ever embarked on. Does Melissa really want her to come? I believe she does, but I think that comes and goes. And if Melissa's life changed and she met a guy and she got married, well, then where is Joan in all this picture? My biggest fear is that there's going to be a confrontation between the two of them. Where are you actually going to live? I'm going to move in <laughs> with Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be very difficult for her to move in with Melissa. I wouldn't move in with my daughter. It's going to be hell on earth. Where would you stay in the house? I'm not going to stay there forever. It's not so wonderful. It's the guest room, which is downstairs. She's going to end up staying there. It is so on her. She is such a New Yorker. It's all about the family. It's all about family. I love you all. I toast to all of you. Cheers. 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 Oh, my darling. My friends say I'm crazy to move to California, that Melissa and I will never get along. We're very headstrong women. But you know what? Uh, I have visited her before. We've been fine. To all of us. Oh, here we go. Oh, to family. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. I have a big surprise for you. Okay, I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm doing it, Mosa. I'm coming out to California. Oh my God, mommy, this is amazing. Cooper is going to be absolutely thrilled. I can't wait to tell him. I will be a perfect guest for you. Uh, there's one little hitch. Okay. I shouldn't bring it up now. Um, I'd like to bring the dogs. No, mom. No dogs. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, take, I'm bringing the dogs. The thing with Lola is this. When she gets really excited or really scared, she automatically pees. Mom, do not bring the dogs out. Okay, I, I know you're excited, and it's, I'm very excited, too. I love you. Goodbye. Hello? Hello? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try it. Okay, seriously, you guys, like, I need to start to get my head around the fact that my mom is coming. She asked me right away, where are you staying? Because she wanted to make sure I wasn't, I wasn't staying here. here. Lynn is a friend of mine, and I love her to death. She's a comedian and a writer, and she gets so excited to be around my mom. But what I love about Lynn is she understands both of us. Sabrina has been with our family going on 22 years, and she is the assistant to both me and my mom. She knows all the family secrets. I always say Sabrina is the actual functioning part of my brain. Someone is gonna have to go and help her. We voted you and get you to won. Go. Okay. I think it's a bad idea for Melissa and Joan to live together. Melissa is more laid back, Joan's more formal, and the two personalities clash in that manner. You can only have one queen in a castle. Okay, but you don't understand. I don't mind going. I like going through people's things to find this. If I can have, you know. <laughs> I really thought my mom needed help packing up in Connecticut. So who better to send than someone who's a total sycophant? You need help? Uh, no, ma'am. All right, boy. Let me just fart. I love snapping this. Melissa asked Lynn to come to Connecticut to help me pack. I mean, this is like asking. Forrest Gump to do brain surgery. It's just not gonna work. Why did Melissa send you here? <laughs> to help you and to lighten up the mood. She knew you'd be unhappy. If you're here to help Lynn, with all due respect, you're doing a job. Can I have a little more vodka? You can have another vodka, Lynn, but then you're gonna have to help me here. Well, I don't know what to do. Every time I touch something, you yell at me. I would use Ray Charles as a chauffeur before I would use Lynn to help me in anything. That's why I got Joe, my very good friend, to help me find Edgar's ashes. I haven't got a clue in hell where they are. Let her have a vodka. Let's find Edgar. That's what I agree. Lynn, this isn't. I thought you came to help me. <laughs> I am helping you, but when I have a husband, where do you want to have a It's the end of the day. Let me just find my husband. Shh, okay, we'll find we will we'll help you. I don't think this is asking too much. Well, like she's stressing well, me out. I'm, she's she's stressing you out. Edgar was Moses' father, I think. And definitely my husband. <laughs> he was Melissa's father. She would would you put him near Melissa? Well, where is yeah, Melissa? Yeah, well, Melissa's. Do we have any of Melissa's things? Let me look in Melissa's bathroom. I can't find his ashes. We've searched everywhere except Melissa's bedroom. Under the bed. I put him under the bed. I put him under Melissa's bed. I know. Oh, that's great. That's too I put him. No, I did. I know. I wanted him to be near Melissa. And I knew. Get off the floor. Nobody bed. would vacuum under here. Oh, let me. I sleep on this bed. I got him. I got him. 
Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, my God. Gross. He was under the bed. Yes, he was bed. under Melissa's he bed. Was. I wanted him to keep Melissa safe. What if she had sex in this bed? He'd be happy because he'd be yes. one that had her with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. Oh my God, he'd be so happy. I knew him a little. That somebody <laughs> in the family is happy. Thank God. And he was funny, charming. He's a true gentleman. I am bringing Edgar's ashes with me to Los Angeles. I am bringing my best friend Tommy Corcoran's ashes to Los Angeles, and some ashes. I'm not sure who they are. I think they're Vincent Price's ashes. Oh my God, there's another urn. How many dead people are in this? House? Where? That's Uncle Tommy, and this is the urn of the unknown friend. Urn. That is my worst nightmare that I would die and people wouldn't know who I was and they'd put tinfoil on the bottom of my thing. Yeah, and it's not so terrible. It's going out to California with Joan Rivers to live at Melissa Rivers' house. Not so, this is not a bad ending. I started collecting little bags of some of my very good friends' ashes because. I love to have them close to me, and eventually when I die and I'm cremated, I want them mixed in with me. And the families are delighted to give you this. They don't like it when you ask for something like, can I have Harry's old hand, or would you mind if I get a knee? They get offended, but they're happy to give you ashes. To Edgar. To family. Trust me, it's all this counts. Thank you very much. Have a good trip to California. I have not lived in Los Angeles since 1989. So that's uh, 21 years, long time. I know I'm gonna find a wonderful house. I'm gonna come and stay at Melissa's and I know within what, a week, two weeks, I'll find something. There's no question about it. Okay, bring your feet together, bring your fingertips together, bend your knees, take a giant step open to the right, extend in the triangle pose, reach. I hope my mom moving in here is really gonna change my life for the better. I think I'll have someone to lean on. I've been sort of talking around it with Jason, I admit it. So I talked to my mom. She actually has pulled the trigger on this. Take this arm on. What exactly? On coming out here and looking for a house and, and being here. Permanently? Yeah, I'd say pretty permanently. Okay. All right, you guys breathing? Yes. Okay, come back up to Not stand. really. I know he has no problem with her staying with us. I think his apprehension comes from how long is she going to be here. So I would just sort of bring it up in conversation at times when it was calming, like during yoga. I said to her that she could stay with us while she's looking for a house. Does she know that we're living together? No, I'm going to. When? Release your arms, relax your eyes a little bit, your jaw. I don't know that many people that can close a house in two weeks. In realistic, the fact is going to be a heck of a lot longer than what she said. I don't want to be living under duress the whole time I'm here and feel eyes piercing through my soul. Well, you're going to feel that whether it's three days or two weeks. Jonah and Melissa living together? No. Bad idea. I don't like violence. Press. Nice. Honey, it's gonna be fine. Let her go, let her fall. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Maybe her. Maybe we'll knock some sense into her. It's gonna be fine. My New York staff was very surprised. I thought they thought the only way I would ever leave that apartment was feet first. <laughs> Are the ashes in the rolly? Let's get the ashes. The ashes. They've been with me for 21 years. It was a great blow to them. Annalie. It's gonna be very hard for me and my daughter without her, just like my mother. Bye. John, I'll speak to you as soon as I land. All right, I'll take Melissa and Joan living together. It's gonna be a bloodbath for them. Goodbye. Wait, wait, All right, die. what's wrong? Uncle Tommy. Oh. And, oh, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> okay. My bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Goodbye, goodbye. Let's go, Wayne. Let's, okay, goodbye. Uh, oh. Lola! Oh, come on. Hello, hello, hello. That was a short trip. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, come on, my little Johnny Lola. Where's the face? Here there she is. is. Hello, Wayne. We're now engaged. Are you ready, Wayne? California? Here we come. Take her down, Scotty. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. 
So I went into Melissa's closet to hang up my coat, and there were men's clothes there. Either a guy is living here, or she's having a gender identity crisis. I think Mel is a very misunderstood bigot. I'm coming to L.A. to be with my family. Cooper, why is mommy so tired today? I don't know. <laughs> I think Melissa and I are very close. As I always say, I think we're almost like mother and daughter, which is a very close relationship. We speak to each other every day on the phone. And what my life is going to be is very much a part of Melissa's and Cooper's life. I want to live close enough that he can come to grandma's and do homework at my house. That's very important. Didn't get any flights. What did I do? Hey, everybody, we are meeting in the living room. Cool. Jay! Conrad! Family meeting! I called a house meeting to discuss the fact that my mom was moving here and staying with us till she found a house rather than her normal three- to five-day visit. Everyone really needed to know that this is going to be a long-term thing. My mom really does want to spend more time out here, and she's going to move out. Yay! Which is great. She's going to be staying here. There's one really important thing that I do want to talk about. We all know Jason's moved in, but I really haven't had a chance to talk to her about it. So I just really appreciate that nobody blurts out that, oh, yeah, now that Jason's living here. I was just like to say that it'd be nice to have 3,000 miles of travel time to let that seep in before, <laughs> right before on, Jason. she comes. Right on, Right on. I love Melissa and Cooper. I mean, I like what we've built here. We've all bonded. We became a family. Mm. I love Joan, too, but... I don't want things to change. You excited about Grandma coming? Yes. Up there, brother. Change is good, and Melissa needs change in her life. And frankly, I can't wait for it just to be the three of us. Comrade, what you doing in here? You know what? You need to get up. I want everything to be perfect. Right. The queen no, mom is no. coming. It's all hectic when she gets here. I understand. No I time. don't even want to know why to there's tissue on the side of the bed here. I, it's, a okay? runny, it's a runny nose, I swear. I don't want Joan to even know that you were in this room. If we don't pull it together, it's going to unravel fast. So we all have it all clean. Thanks. Work it out. <sighs> hey, Joan, we're just at the light. We'll be there momentarily. Hi, Conrad, can you make sure you move the uh, table a little bit? Yeah, I know how it is when she comes. Every time Joan comes to town, Melissa gets real flustered. It all comes down to her being worried that Joan's judging her. Joan and Melissa living together? Horrible idea. They're going to fight all the time. Are you nervous, Jack? Go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Here she comes now. Here she comes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, what is all this? Here I am, the door. Uh, I got hi, 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 hello. hello. Yes, my hello, hello. <laughs> sure, but hurry up. Oh, you want one? Yeah. Hey, y'all fight over the, her later. Come on. Joe, what did you bring? Here, well, those are the ashes. Oh, ashes? Joe, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Joe, no. I don't understand why everybody is so opposed to this. I and mean, what do mother and daughters do? When they come to visit, they stay with each other, and they don't annoy each other. Are you still wearing this ring? I hate this ring so much. People, people, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Right, Look alive. Here she comes, Coop, Coop. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Hello. Grandma. Hi, sweetheart. Hello, my darling. And the quite broad. Lola. Surprise for mommy. Lola. Yeah, Lola. Okay, hello, hello. Welcome. Oh, look who's here. All right. I brought Lola. Yeah, that's my Lola. That's my Lola. Hello, sweetheart. Thank you. How are you? Look who's here, man. Little dribble. A little dribble. It's a little dribble. I'm sorry. It's okay. We expect that from her. Why is your dog in my house? You know I always travel with Lola. She, she's the gale to my Oprah. And this is... Dominica is our new nanny. Oh, you must be Swedish. Yes. I can't.
cannot believe Melissa hired this bimbo. I mean, what does she want? A nanny for Cooper or a wet nurse for Jason? She's got a boyfriend. This is not right. So Can I have here. my cases, please? They're getting If not, them. I'll take them myself. No, the guys are getting them. Well, no, don't don't take just it give off. it to me. No, or just give me one. It. You brought a lot of luggage. You brought in California, you don't know the weather. You get up in the morning, you sweat, and then at night it's cold. You wake up the next morning, you're covered in rust. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not like you, Melissa. I, mean, I just don't throw on a pair of jeans and some shirt that you find in the closet. It's a nice shirt. It is a nice shirt. Hideous color. It's not a hideous color. It matches my legs. <laughs> realize it was this small. Okay, come on, everybody. We'll make two. It's only two weeks. All right. Bags down, bags down for Grandma. I'll put this. Okay, here we go. Thank you, darling. I'll see you later. I'm going to run upstairs. Okay. All right. Thank You're you. welcome. You need oh. a little less now. Okay, thank you so much. But the room is a little small. I wish there was a closet. That's there all. is a closet. It's a guest room closet. The room is not made for someone to live full time in No, I, 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 I know that. You, you can see that from the closet. So I went into Melissa's closet to hang up my coat, and there were men's clothes there. Either a guy is living here, or she's having a gender identity crisis. She could be the next Chaz Bono. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Can I get a surfboard? Cooper, you can't get a surfboard. Your mother will kill me. I found it. Ah, this is two weeks worth of stuff. Okay, so okay. what is this? It's the ashes. I brought, obviously, Daddy. That's my dad's ashes. Cool, huh? And this, I'm not sure of. I think it's Vincent Price. You want to see ashes? Here. Oh, oh, that's gross. Come on. Oh, it's that, not gross. Mommy, that's gross. It's Vincent and I adore him. That was my godfather. See all these little pieces of ash right here? I finally got Melissa alone, and I was dying to ask her about the men's clothing in her closet. Was it Jason's? Instead, I talked about the nanny. I mean, how many nannies come with their own stripper pole, and you pay them in dollar bills? Let me ask you about... Uh, Dominique? Dominica. Whatever. You don't put that kind of a girl into your house. I'm sorry. I am all set to tell her about Jason living here. And what do I hear? Dominica, Dominica, Dominica. She's great. She's very clean. She's a good cook. Coop, you like Dominica. Mm -hmm. He loves her. And she checked out. You know she, what I mean? I, I'm not worried about that. I'm sure she's been checked out by a lot of people. Mom, you have said it a hundred times. And I asked you not to talk about it in front of Cooper. It's not appropriate. And I think anybody that brings a girl that looks like that into this house, I don't know what you're trying no, to prove. No, I'm not trying to prove you're anything. To prove no, I'm not. But my point is, you're trying you to said... Prove something. I don't okay. know what you're trying to but prove. But the nice thing is, is, there's nothing I can do about it because I have to listen... Go. No. You can give her a wonderful check, say goodbye in Swedish, so long, and you can send her away. Enough about Dominica in front of Cooper. Enough. No, in front of Cooper. Right, enough. I'm so, yeah, you're right. In front of Cooper, you're enough. right. You don't bring someone looking like that into the house. You either hire an ugly nanny or a gay guy. Ask any woman on Rodeo Drive, ugly or gay, or ugly gay. That really solves the problem. Just really? You know, seriously, I, I've just... You know something, Melissa? Pick a nanny, pick them ugly. I had nannies with hair lips. I had nannies who they would go down the stairs and the knuckles would drag. I had nannies that the zoo tried to buy. All I'm saying is it's stupid to bring something like that. Do you know that I almost had five minutes where I was enjoying you continuously? I'm not saying she's not lovely. She's, she's probably supporting her Mom, old mother. We cannot talk about these things in front of her. I don't give a f Melissa. I what? just... I'm sorry, Cooper. Cooper no sweetheart. swearing. I'm sorry, sweetheart. It, Mom, it, seriously, it, I just don't want to talk about it. Wrong. I'm sorry. No swearing. I'm sorry, darling. Have you heard the word before? You know what we're going to do, Cooper? I am going to get you a jar. And every time I swear, I give you a quarter. So it can be your swear job. I swear. It's that simple. So I figured we'll do a swear jar. Every time I swear, he knows it's wrong. I have to give him money. I think I'll be a millionaire by the time he's 18. <laughs> I had to stop swearing because someone over here started swearing. No, no, we don't swear. You swear when you reach my age. When you reach 100, swearing Because we were around. in the market the other day, and someone cut us off, and he goes, You said, <laughs> So You owe me a quarter. 
<laughs> kind of broke. <laughs> That's when I realized that I had to cut it back. Let's go find a jar. Cooper, do you know that if mommy had had a swear jar, she never would have had to ever get a job in her entire life? That's how much money I would have made. If Ooh. mommy had had a swear job and listened to grandma on stage, she'd be living in a house with a much bigger guest room. I heard that. The nice thing is in that room, nothing echoes. <laughs> I love you, mommy. I don't want to ask Melissa whether or not Jason's living here. She should tell me. Instead, I'm going to ask Sabrina because she knows everything that's going on here. She'd be a great spy. I understand. Conrad has been living here. That's fine. Is Jason living here? I got to be respectful of your boundaries and hers. I met Joan at the Beverly Hills Gun Club. She came in to shoot. I was there as one of the bookkeepers. Here I am, 20 years later, the assistant to both girls. Talk to her. I talk to her, Serena, every day. I understand that. I know when the flowers haven't come up. I know when the gardener has a cough. I'm just asking you. Just ask her. How about that? (laughs) I hired Sabrina for her integrity, her allegiance to Melissa. 18 years ago, I thought, this is just the most wonderful woman. Today, I wanted to kill her. You think I should tell her I'm a lesbian? I don't know. It's been seven (laughs) weeks, and I'm not going to name names. Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, God, help us. (laughs) And she's a great kisser. (laughs) I never had these kind of problems. I was stood up for the father-daughter dance. I mean, you know, so I wasn't what you call very attractive. I'm delighted she has somebody. I'm just upset that she hasn't told me. Dr. Linda. Okay. Is he good? He's wonderful. So I'm settled in California and I'm doing what everybody does when they come to California. First thing, see a plastic surgeon. As kids, we worry. I don't like you continuously having surgeries. It's like, enough. Lay off. It's all good. Stop. While we're talking. No. Don't even go there with Just me. Just no. a little. Mom, seriously? No. Fine. I hear you. Well, not really, because my ears are back here. Dr. Linda's been waiting. Thank you. That's a very young patient. Don't you think it's a little early? Good luck. Mm-hmm. You're here today because of your arms. I, what exactly is it that bothers you with the arms? I can clean off my shoes without bending over. That is very loose. My arms are just flabby. I stand in the wind and I can literally take off. The scar would be pretty brutal. It may end up looking really, really horrible. We're going to say no on doing the brachioplasty. You're breaking my heart. I went to Dr. Linda and he said flat out no. I'm going to find somebody that will say yes. I may have to go to Mexico. That will find somebody. I swear somebody. to God, I was thinking it's going to be in someone's van. And then I went to a very young doctor who I thought would want to do it because it's John Rivers. Your arms aren't that bad. The only real way to get this to look right is to make a big incision. That is not the surgery for you. So well. you say no. And then I went to Dr. Norman Lee, who's one of the great plastic surgeons. I know him 30 years. I knew him before he knew his wife. He turned me down the fastest. My wife always says, Over the age of 45, a woman's best friend is sleeves. You're the fashion icon of the red carpet. You're going to bring back sleeves. You and Judy Dench. I want to get my arms done. I'm going to go until I find some quack that'll do them. Could there be a chance that you really are perfect the way you are? Did you see the arm? That one doctor said that for your age, it was perfect. They always say that, Lynn. Oh, for your age, you're you're standing up. (laughs) You're lucky you're standing up. You're lucky you know who you are. I'm very surprised in Beverly Hills that I could not get a doctor to say to me, let's do it. This is a town when someone says, I haven't done any plastic surgery. They mean today. Why'd you have to go to three doctors? Wait, well, first of all, I want to talk to no to your mother. You know, Lynn, why don't you let me tell you? Wasn't the story? recommended. This thing is going backwards. Three doctors have said, this is an unnecessary risk. You know what I always say about plastic surgery? What? Go for a fourth opinion. I would have to understand that I could never do like, hello everybody, or I can never have my act. I mean, thank you and good night. Are you telling me that you don't want me to do it? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. It is my face, it is my body, it is my money. But the point is when you start taking elective medical risks over vanity. Melissa, you were an elective risk. 
I stretched my uterus because of you, but it was choice. Do you want me to make it clearer? Can you I make don't it clear, want so, you. Clear it up for me. I think I'm getting your point. <laughs> Lynn, stop, or I will say something that you don't want anyone to know. Such as. Such as, such as, come on, oh, come on, Melissa. Your mom knows that I've had promiscuous sex. That is not what I'm talking about. I don't mind that you sleep around, you're a whore. I don't care. I'm not a whore. Whatever you want to call it, different generation. I am so glad we can finally put this whole plastic surgery thing to rest. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. I hung my coat up in a closet, and a lot of Jason's clothes are there. Why didn't she tell me? Conrad? Conrad! Conrad, let's go! I came to L.A. to be with Cooper. So I said to him, what do you want to do? He said, I want to go to the beach. You taking a sandwich with you? Mm-hmm. Okay, could you grab the chairs? Yep. All right. Who's Should driving? We... All right. I'm driving, I'll drive. You're, you're driving? Yeah. I drove for 20 years of this family. Sure you I never drive? had an accident. I don't want to jinx it. Out, 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 out. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm really I not hate cool with her driving. This is kind of scary. Okay, okay you'll see. You sure you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. So beat me. Don't get me nervous. Can I raise the seat up a little bit too? You might be able to. Okay, hold on. Is that working? Okay, this is fine. Okay, just get this right. No, no, don't hit, uh, no, don't touch those buttons. No, it's the seat warmer. So which one do I fix the mirror with? Right. Everybody ready? Yeah. Let's just do it. All right, okay. Where was your brake? No, uh, right yeah, over here. Just... On, your, on your left side. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it went off. Yeah, right. you good? And where are your lights? Well, no, they're automatic. They're automatic. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay, nobody get me crazy. All right. Let's go to Little Rogers. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Move over! <laughs> <laughs> You're on their side of the lane. Oh. <laughs> Hello, how much? Nine dollars. Thank you. Is there a place to get coffee and stuff? Mm. There's no coffee, I can't have a nice day. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have not been in a baby suit. My idea of a two-piece is coveralls <laughs> and a bag. But if he wants to go to the beach, we'll go to the beach. I just want him to start having memories with me. I think that's very important. Okay, we are here. Ugh, what's the smell, Koopy? Dead fish. Dead fish? Yep. Okay, this is good. All right, let's get you into your wetsuit. Just morning. wait for me, Coop. All right, let's go. Cooper, be careful! Conrad, will you watch him? Would you mind getting my back down? Thank you. Dominica uh, took off her towel. <laughs> Why not? I think of it, it's a good way for Cooper to learn to count. My pleasure. I never in my life saw a nanny take off her top. I mean, six little boys went through puberty behind us. It broke this. It broke? It broke? I think it's done. I'm sitting here on the beach in Malibu. California is fabulous. <laughs> my friend Margie, who is really my very, very good friend, she doesn't want me out here. She doesn't think I'm going to fit out here. But she's got a lot of common sense. I mean, she'll say to me, mind your business. So she anchors me in a way. Joan, I think you need to come back to New York. I don't want to hear about New York. What? This is tragic. I am sitting here on a beach with my grandson running around on some stupid paddle game. The only thing is I have my coat up in a closet and a lot of Jason's clothes are there. What do you care? I don't, I don't know. Ma you were there. Ma you were I a guest. Know. It's not my business. 
Why didn't she tell me? Because it doesn't look like he moved in yet. It looks like he's been living there. You know what I mean? I don't get it. I don't get it. I tell her everything. I wouldn't worry about that. It just hurts. It just hurts. I told my mother nothing. <laughs> my mother asked if I were a virgin after I had Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Bye. Talk to you later. We're going to search out. Let's go get you a new boogie board and let's get you some booties because this is just crazy. Do you have boogie boards? We do. Can I get a surfboard? Cooper, you can't get a surfboard. We're gonna get a boogie board. Please, please, please. Let's see. Let's let's see for a second. Please, Come Grandma. On. Please, get the board. There's a board here. Cooper, I really your like. mother will kill me. Here, yeah, I'll go look this? for it. But I can't get you a surfboard. I don't know about surfboards. Your mother will kill me if we get you a surfboard, and we don't need this on our first day. Found it. No. Please, Come Grandma. What time is it? That's a six-one. A six-one. Uh, yeah, is that perfect, good for him? Perfect height. Please, Grandma. Sprout will do well on that. Please, Grandma. If okay. you don't tell Mommy that I bought you the surfboard, we'll put it away and we'll tell her at the appropriate moment. Okay. Is that all right? Can mm -hmm. you keep a secret from your mother? Mm-hmm. You swear to me? Yeah. What are you guys doing? I promise. Nothing. We're just looking at surfboards. So. You know how much Mel's going to trip out if you do that. She's been planning this whole thing of, like, Cooper doing better for school and getting one down the road. Okay. I've, don't, I wouldn't mess around with it, Joan. All right, listen to me. Go out with Conrad and I'll put it in the car. Okay. I can, we'll I can put a safety nose on that too, so if that's an issue. Oh, a safety nose is very important. <laughs> can you put one on me? Okay. I'm just going to wait for you guys outside. Uh, Cooper, come here. Your mother is not to know. Do you understand me? Because she'll be furious with me. Secret? Secret. You promise? Mm hmm. Okay. I'll be in a lot of trouble. Okay. You're welcome, Grandma. Thank you. I want to spoil him. That's what a grandmother's about. He wanted the surfboard so much. And he's been good, and it's our first day. I did something I probably shouldn't do. I cannot believe that you bought him a surfboard. Careful, careful. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So, dinner, dinner, dinner? Oh, we ordered Chinese. Jay and I are about to go pick it up. You know... Excellent. You ordered Chinese? All right. Yeah, we ordered Chinese. See you Actually, we were just talking. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Why has anyone told me Jason's living there? And obviously, he's been here for a while. Why are you ordering now? Because there's so many people. Come on. Just relax Listen, and enjoy. Have Mom, a girl that Mom, relax. Mom, relax. Relax. All day Mom, long. Relax and enjoy. She should be making your food. Yeah, Mommy, will she clean up? Yes, she does. But I just thought too many people. Okay, okay, all right. okay. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I hope Melissa will tell me. I'm going to try not to say anything and let her come to me. Lynn! Yeah? Come help me set the table. I'm coming! I want to see a ring up Melissa's finger. She wants another child, she better damn hurry up and have another child. She's not a year out of college. She's a grown-up woman and she has, what, maybe 12 eggs left? Why haven't you told her yet? I didn't want to do it on the phone. I want to do it... You know, it's just the right time. Is it worse to just tell her now, or what happens if she actually finds out beforehand? Jason just has to accept that I have to do it in my way and in my time. Look, you knew when you started dating me, you signed up for the crazy train. I, uh, but I didn't <laughs> sign up for mother moving in. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you going to tell her you wanted to do this? It's a family you eat in the dining room. She's Here we go. Like, they get really expensive oh. China. A typical dinner in my home is probably a lot more casual than my mom likes it to be. Just want to make a toast. I hope this is the beginning of many happy meals. I hope to get a wonderful place very soon and have all of you at my house. So, Aww, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, everyone, let's start That's passing this around. Oh, here, this Coop, I know you want the lemon chicken. Yeah. Yep. And there we go. Here, I want to hear about the beach. It was good, but I can't tell you about it. Why can't you tell me about it? It's a secret. You know my rule. There are no secrets between us. What is the secret? What's the secret? Someone tell me, what is the secret? Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Someone has to turn to Jason and say... What are your intentions? Just want you to know that you'll be watched. I want to hear about the beach. It was good, but I can't tell you about it. Why can't you tell me about it? 
It's a secret. You know my rule. There are no secrets between us. What is the secret? What's the secret? Someone tell me what is the secret? Can you pass me the phone? Don't look at me. No, no. There are no secrets between mommies and sons. There are secrets between mommies and daughters. I accepted the family dinner. I put the Chinese food in the cartons in my silver. But then, when Melissa's giving Cooper a lecture on mothers and children have no secrets. No secrets, Cooper. No secrets, Cooper. Excuse me. You have a big secret from your mother. I bought him a surfboard. Mom, you can't do that. He was supposed to be earning from like good being good. My mom bought Cooper a new surfboard. And I'm not annoyed at that. I'm annoyed that she told him not to tell me. So obviously my mother saw an opportunity to get herself out of trouble by turning the tables and confronting me that I hadn't told her that Jason had moved in yet. I am not sure exactly who's living in this house and who isn't living in this house. What is that supposed to mean? I just don't understand why there are such secrets in this house. There aren't secrets. Is, is Conrad living here? Yes, Conrad lives here. And Jason I, is living here. Are you living here, Jason? I don't understand why this is such yes, a big Yes, thing. Jason is living here. And then I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Welcome. I just don't get it. Don't. I you, you tell me everything. You tell well, me. Mom, I didn't think there was something like I should say you over the phone. You gas, Melissa. No, you, that's you usually tell me. I know that. Well, that's, I tell everybody. <laughs> Your man's been living here for a month. And what else? Maybe you're married, maybe you're not. To well, you also did... What? Tell Cooper not to tell me something. I just don't think you should be telling a nine-year-old to keep secrets from his mother. And my intention it's was good. It's not the same as someone moving in and changing a family dynamic. It's a big difference than a stupid surfboard. I just would like to know if someone is living in the house with my grandson and my daughter and establishing, let's try using a fork, in case we ever, and a knife, in case we ever go to Buckingham Palace, the queen will stare at you. Let's not forget about our knife. As we were saying, Jason, there's two people that are going to get very attached to you, but one person in particular is going to get very attached to you. I would like to see a ring on your finger, Melissa. Mom, here's the bottom line. We're really happy. We've made ourselves into a family, and we want you to be a part of it. I know it's a different generation, but you don't have a father, and someone has to turn to Jason and say... What are your intentions? That's all. We plan to be together you, forever. Whether we get married or not, that's for another time. Just want you to know that you'll be watched. Fair enough. Confucius says, don't live in sin. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am now living in her house, and that's a very different dynamic. You have to learn to not say as much. Who are you and what have you done with my mother? I know you have boundaries. I just choose not to acknowledge some of your boundaries. (laughs) And Melissa knows just how to push my buttons, which is great, until I'm on a respirator. Yes. And (laughs) then it's going to be trouble. Next time on Joan and Melissa. Hold on. What is going on? I thought you would love it. You can't just make these broad, sweeping... I'm sorry. And this, I thought you would love it. Mom, wrong! Why did you move to L.A.? Oh, just, ah! oh, put your hands oh, up. Mom, put get your, out! Put get your out. hands up. I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm gone. I swear to God. I'm gone. What are you doing? Oh, my God. I would just be so proud to say, you see that slut on the cover? That's my daughter. Previously on Joan and Melissa. I'm doing it, Melissa. I'm coming out to California. Oh my God, Mommy, this is amazing. Melissa needs change in her life. Welcome. I don't know that many people that can close a house in two weeks. Let her fall. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Maybe her. Maybe we'll some sense into her. This is. Dominica is our new nanny. I never saw a nanny take off her top. Someone tell me, what is the secret? There are no secrets between mommies and sons. Tell there are secrets between mommies and daughters. Are you living here, Jason? Yes, yes. Jason is living here.
honestly, this has been going great. I mean, I'm so happy you're here. Cooper's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. We love having you here. I love that we started the family dinners, and I'm so glad you made that happen. You're 100% right on that. I think this place is great. I've been so happy being here with you. And I'm, as a special treat to you, I'm going to redo the living room. I think my living room is still beautiful. Oh, Melissa, not saying it's not beautiful. I'm just saying it's blandly beautiful. I don't think it's, that. It's uh, boringly. It's boring. I don't think it's boring. I live here and I like it. I'm going to treat you. And I'm going to just spruce it up for you. Mom, that's very... I would love to do it. Okay, that's very generous I'd love to of you. i to do it. It's very generous of you, but right now, I really like things how they are. I, I just don't want to do anything right yeah, now yeah, in yeah, my yeah. house. Yeah, but I am going to treat you, treat, totally blank check. No, Mom, no. Done. No, done, done, no, done. no, no. Please just leave it alone for now. <laughs> Hi, Julie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm from Timothy Corgan's office. Come on in. I was expecting you. Okay, Okay. great. Thank you. Joan? I've got such a surprise in store for Melissa. I'm going to get rid of all her living room furniture, make it much more sophisticated. Let's California. Let's see if she's in here. Okay, great. So Joan asked me to make a secret appointment with the decorator while Melissa was out. I knew Melissa was not going to be happy about it, and I didn't want any part of it. Hi, Joan. I'm from Tim Corrigan's office. So nice to meet you. I thought Tim was going to be here. No, he can't make it. He's out of the country right now. Um, okay. I don't want to work with a woman. To me, when you look up the word interior decorator in the dictionary, it says, see, homosexual. Everybody knows this. I want to surprise Melissa with just, I don't know, a little more color, a little more... Okay. It's a little too California for me. I think she thought I, I was a little young and maybe a little green to be to be working with her. Um, but, you know, I think as she got to know me a little bit more, she felt a lot more comfortable. And it's it's pretty beige, so you yeah. want to infuse some of the colors maybe in other parts of the house into yeah. the room. Okay. And a little just, I don't know what, but I just know I'm not happy with the whole thing. I don't think Melissa knows about it, and I think Joan wants to kind of come in and do a really quick overnight makeover of the house, uh, which should be pretty interesting. All right, hurry up. Do light years measure time or distance? Do light years measure time or distance? What do you think? We're poisoning you. Okay. Time or distance? Time. Distance. All right, this is a good game. This bicycle's wheels are crooked. Which word needs the apostrophe? Melissa, do you see what I'm seeing here? You sitting on the couch? No. I've been living with Melissa and my grandson Cooper for a little while now, and it's working out great. But the nanny, ugh, I call her the hunch front of Notre Dame. This bicycle's wheels are crooked. Which word needs the apostrophe? This is just wrong. There's a hooker watering the plants. Melissa, what is going on here? Mom, she's great. Cooper loves her. She's efficient. She's clean. And for God's sake, she speaks English and can drive. I think it's fine. Look, I mean, who gets up and who orders a plant in the morning? Yeah, but who orders a plant in the morning? Let's finish the sentence like that. Melissa's like the good me. I mean, I don't know where she got this from. She trusts people. She likes people. And I said to her, you pick a nanny, you either get an ugly lady or a gay guy. That's what you get for a nanny. I think one of the requirements for a nanny is you have to wear underwear. <laughs> am, I, am I wrong? I just think you're being a little... Well, turn around. Just turn around. Not you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> My day, they wore uniforms. How long ago was Grandma's Day? I'm telling you. 100,000 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. In New York City, you wear, you wear uniforms. Mommy. You know what? Look at this. Look at look at this. You have my permission to talk to her about it. Why don't you take a piece of candy and just put it smack in front of your boyfriend? Wait. I don't understand this. Okay, but that's all we're, but all I'm asking you is like, I heard you. Enough. Drop it. Oh, I was playing uh, the, the fifth grader game okay. with Cooper, and uh, he really loves it. I know Jeff Foxworthy. I know the producers. Can we get a tour? 
I would love to take him on a tour. I will certainly call and see if a tour is possible. That would be great. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Okay, and, and we go backstage and if you meet some of those little children and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. So let me go through what I need to with you guys as I'm having a meltdown. Um, Melissa, I also received a call from Joe Francis this oh, weekend. my buddy Joe. Joe Francis is the creator of the Girls Gone Wild franchise and has sold, I don't know what, a zillion DVDs. He is a longtime friend of mine and a good friend. He really wants you to do the cover and also the, the video. He has a new video <laughs> coming out. Sabrina was going through the list of calls with us, and she said Joe Francis had called and wants Melissa to be on the cover of a new thing he's doing, Women of Hollywood Gone Wild. I thought this was wonderful. I it's fabulous. No, 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 but... Melissa, you're in a business where you've got a great body, it's a magazine cover, and it's an international show. And they, I'm they, not, how, you told me how many videos he sells. I know, but I'm he not. He sells doing, in the millions. But it's not something I want to do. Melissa still has everything in place. I think it was great that somebody noticed she has a great body because she's always hiding it and wants to do something with it. In my day, when you did it, you were a slut, you were a tramp, you were disgusting. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody, Demi Moore has done it. I just, Kate I can, Blanchett I can it. tell you why I don't want to do it. Because I you have a very pretty body. Yes, I'm not concerned about that. It has nothing to do with how I feel about myself. I think Melissa's got a great body. She is young. This is the time you do it. She's going to hit 50 and she's going to say, uh, I should have done it. I don't want Cooper to go to college and be like, dude, we've seen your mom's You know, I just don't think that's right. I'm not going to do it. You have a great ass. You should wear tighter jeans. Okay. Bye. Bye. You can't see how pretty your ass is in these jeans. Bye. You're wrong. You're going to hit my age and you're going to want to show your ass. I am going to get Melissa to pose topless if it kills me. Or her. I sound just like my mother now. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. I never thought I'd have to be so specific. There's a rule in this house. You don't sneak into the bathroom and take naked pictures of me in the shower. This was a good idea, Mom. The toad? I said it was massages so that we'd have to get undressed. I knew once Melissa took a look at my body, she'd want to do a topless video. She looks great now. I regret not having a big romance with Burt Lancaster, <laughs> who really came after me when I was on The Tonight Show. I regret that. Daddy was invited to Monaco to meet Princess Grace and have lunch at the palace. And I worked instead. I stayed home and went to Akron, Ohio and had a club date. I regret that. Didn't you also once give up, pass up meeting the Pope? I regret, yeah, didn't meet the Pope. It was too far out of town. Regrets, regrets. I re always regretted I didn't have more children. Are you regretting that at all, you think, Melissa? Well, I don't think I put it in the regret column yet. I just think you should do it while you can still bend. I'm just saying, Melissa, time flies. Mom, I know, but... Cooper I... is nine years old. Glad you're thinking about it. Do it now while you look good. Jeff, could you go to the other side now? The other yeah. Oh. Hands... A gold, Jeff. Oh, Hands of gold. Have you ever seen a worse body than mine? The truth. Careful. There's a tip involved. <laughs> Mommy, I love you to death, but you rarely have conversations about regrets, nor of this kind of sort of philosophical bit to it. You're trying to remind me that you think I should take the offer. What offer? I don't even remember. What are you talking about? I think if somebody has a beautiful body, I think they should show it. At least I'm not saying flat out no. I'm thinking about it. Now, that's a mother's idea of a happy ending. I, I'm just saying you don't want to be lying here 10 years from now when they have to lift the flab up to get to your stomach to massage you. I'm just saying think about it, Melissa. I, did I just say I'm thinking about it? Think about it. Did I just say I'm thinking about it? It wouldn't kill you to call him up. When my breasts fell, they were measured on the Richter scale. And that's it. Once they're down there, honey, 
bed down there. I can get a mammogram and a pedicure at the same time. It's too late. Protecting my son comes before something like that. And there's also a great deal of money on the table. And that's and the hard part And this would be your me. son's college, college I, education. I agree. I'm sitting here, I'm trying to relax, and you're just not gonna let it happen. You, this typical bait and switch. You can't just let me have like the last word in a conversation, can you? Please. Can you see it? I love the style. The bracelet is beautiful. Perfect. Really terrific. Yeah, absolutely go. Okay. I think it's great to have the webcam. I can run my entire business through it. The only bad thing is you can't make obscene phone calls. Can it be double? You can add a long extender to All it. All right, try to make it long enough, add an extender, that it can be doubled. All right. Yeah, these I'm not so crazy about. I'll be very honest with you. Yeah, I, I see what... Hold on a second. That's Dominica, honey. Hi, Mr. Burns. Hi, sweetheart. You know what? I think you and I should go out together and get you some, some work clothes. You just wear all your nice clothes around here and it's just not right, okay? Would you like that? Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills. Okay. We'll go into Beverly Hills and we'll just get you things that are just a little more casual for work, if that's okay with you. I think you'll be happy. My treat. Okay. My treat. Good deal. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> just my therapy scream. We are looking for a nice au pair nanny kind of uniform. Something pretty. Right. Something okay. pretty-ish. I was really excited when Joan told me we would go shopping. I thought that we would go to like BB or Guess, but instead we came to the uniform store. Okay. This is cute. That'd be I cute. like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's a nice cute. color for you. Sure. You were with me in New York, I would say, the screen is Dominica. Let's try it. Let's try them all. Okay. Okay, sweetheart. Do you ever go out at night with Cooper? This is very New York. It, that's not bad. I don't think so. Keep okay, going. Keep drawing the next one. This is my favorite. Does something go under it? Uh, yes. There's no sides. I could tell her the next time she has to go to her gynecologist. Oh, okay. Does come with pants? Dominica just has to understand that you dress one way at work and another way at play, unless you're a hooker. Try it. Blue one. Let's see. I thought maybe if you like yeah, oh, yeah, we get a about, little well, tighter. We would, we would also button it up. Oh. Now, this is cute. You look like you have pride in your profession. We'll take this. It was like a, a coverall, which I think would be great when she's in the back with Cooper and they're playing touch football. I don't want to know what he's touching. Thank you both very You're so much. You're welcome. Have, Have a, good a lovely day. day. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Huh? Did they send the jewelry samples? No, they did not. All right. But I got great news yeah. from a fifth grader. Yeah, yeah. And we booked the tour. Oh, Cooper will be thrilled. He'll That's be great. Mm -hmm. Cooper loves the show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And I know Jeff Foxworthy. So I had Sabrina call to make an appointment for us to get a tour. I know Cooper will go crazy. Good, 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 good. And good. as a bonus, yeah. we've also booked you as a celebrity contestant. What are you talking about? We booked you as a celebrity contestant. The producers Sabrina. asked if you would be you would be interested, and I said, of course. I would, I, I would be called dead being a contestant on a quiz show. Sabri so how long have you worked for well, us? Well, listen. 20 years. Have I ever done a quiz show? Once. I did it once, Family View, because Melissa stood next to me. I'm not as smart as a little rotten fifth grader. I am now a f contestant. I can't remember which states border Hawaii. Right now, for $1,000, give us the five Great Lakes. Uh, Lake Superior. One. Uh, uh, the Great Lake. The, the Great Lake is not, that's, that's, there's no Great Lake. Uh, My day was so much easier. Uh, you took two sticks, if you rubbed them together and you got fire, you got an A. <laughs> Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Erie? 
Keep going. And Lake Erie and S. Superior. Okay. And what? You can do this. I'm going to kill you. Okay. I'm going to kill, kill you. me later. Good. But you I'm, can do this. I will do it. So for, is it a yes? I'm going to do it for Cooper. That's what I knew you'd say. Joe Francis, who's the creator of Girls Gone Wild, wants Melissa to pose nude for a new project, and I am determined to make that happen. I am going up to Melissa's room now, because she's taking a shower, and I'm going to take some pictures of her in the shower, because I think once she sees how pretty her body is, she will be very glad to accept Joe Francis' offer. I mean, it makes sense to me. So let's go in. Joe Francis offered this amazing deal. Magazine cover and picture on a box set going all over the world. And she, she's thinking about it. She's wrong. She's wrong. She's got a great body. Do it now. My breasts. I can nurse China from my bedroom. It's all over. It's over. So upset, I don't understand it. I was taking pictures of her naked all her life when she was a little girl. She never complained. It's all right, I'm gone, oh, I'm I gone. I swear to God. I'm gone. What are you doing? I'm doing what a... are you doing? I, I never thought I'd have to be so specific as I would have to say to my mother, hey mom, there's a rule in this house. You don't sneak into the bathroom and take naked pictures of me in the shower. But apparently, I really do need to start spelling things out. What I, I, is wrong with nothing me? Nothing is wrong with me. Mom, mom, A couple of pictures. Not, not, not. You look very pretty. Drop the mom, towel. What is wrong with you? If you see how mother, pretty you're about. I don't care. You knock. I'm not asking for much. That cross line, do me a favor. Please knock. She said that I'm breaking boundaries. That I'm breaking boundaries. But what about yelling at your mother? What about yelling at your mother? I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't knock. Okay, I did kind of break into her bathroom. Okay, I, I took pictures she didn't want, but I'm still her mother. Mom! Melissa, one more. No! One more. Mom! How does it hurt no! you? Got him. <laughs> Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Can I get you excited? Yes. Okay. Your DVD cover. What do you think? Oh my God! Yes. <gasps> oh my God! Living with Melissa is only temporary until I find my own place. Realtor friend of Conrad's has set my mom up to see a penthouse, and honestly, so excited. I think that's a great idea. I mean, you're used to. Yeah, uh, apartment style living. It's like New York. Right. So it, it might it might really be the answer. Let's hope. The reason I came to look at this building is because they said this is absolutely like New York living. I didn't see sirens. I didn't see police. These are the developers of the Plaza Hotel in New York. So you should feel right at home. I was going to just turn around and walk right out because they ruined the plaza. They took away all the charm of the plaza. There's nothing to look at when you look out the window. New York, it's a pleasure. You look out the window, you see bums exposing themselves. Here, it's California. They don't have coats. I asked the price, $14 million. $14 million for what? So out of here. $14 million. Do you know what I can get for $14 million? An entire body lift. Nice to meet you. Too. Too. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Vicky, you too. Hi, okay. Vanessa. A pleasure. Hi, Hi fantastic. Nice Come on in. Do you do lightning bolts? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bonds a mother and daughter together like agony. So I thought, let's get waxed. 
And in between screams, I could convince her to do the topless video. What are you having? I'm just getting my bikini line touched up. I'm kind of embarrassed here. <laughs> really? It's my first time. What are you doing? Ah, I, please, just, just the hair, leave the skin, huh? Don't get waxed in the room with another person. It means it's gross. Person. It's another gross. Person. It's your mother, first of all. That's even worse. Oh, most of you've been there before. If anything, you certainly see my vagina. For you, it's like deja vu. Oh, God, that's gross. Is it possible while you're there, you can touch up my roots? Never mind waterboarding. Just take the Taliban in and wax them. Ah! They'll tell you a secret you never knew you had. Huh? Oh. Why don't you want to do the topless video? At least promise me you'll talk to him. Fine. The only good thing out of the waxy was Melissa agreed to go and speak to Joe Francis. I was thrilled about that. Come here, love. Oh, boy, yes. How delicious. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This my so Mom. good. Please stop feeding what? the dogs. Go, uh, go, uh, go, one go. more bite. No, mother. Oh, no. Melissa, go, for go, God's sake. It's go. his birthday. Mom, it's not his birthday. Come on. It's a dog's life. What else is this dog got? Mom, you I don't. no sex life. Melissa, I've never seen a dog die from eating okay, people no, food. No, Mom, it's because he takes food off the counter. I'm sorry, Mike. If you were my dog, you'd be eating this delicious muffin now. Yes, Mike. I'm sorry. Your life sucks. Come on. Yeah. Let me I'll get one of your away. treats. Let me get one of his treats. What are you giving him? Let me just try it. Go ahead, try it. It's gross. It's chicken breast strips. I'll just try it. Well, look, you already got one. That's so terrible. That is gross. It tastes like chicken. Mom, that's gross. Speaking of breasts, Melissa. What? The pictures are amazing of you naked. You know, I was just really over my mom sneaking into the bathroom and taking pictures of me the other day. I mean, she just wouldn't let it go, though. I mean, she just thought it was absolutely hilarious. Mom, I swear to God, just give me that camera. Just give me the camera. Good morning. Alfredo, that Alfredo. looks fabulous. Turn around. What? Good. Looks very nice. We could take it in maybe a what little bit. What are you wearing? She's wearing Stop what don't we... Don't me. It's a, called a uniform. It needs to be taken in a little bit, but look how nice she looks. I mean, are you serious? <laughs> Dominica, go put on your jeans. Look, I'm not against an appropriate uniform, but you made her look like a prison guard, like a prison matron. Oh, she looked perfectly fine. Mom, she... It could be taken in a little. A little? Or maybe she'll gain weight. I doubt she's going to gain weight, but I mean, it was ridiculous. Well, whatever it was, she had, she had pride in her profession. She looked like she had pride in her profession. That's important. Good, Good, thanks. We're here to see Joe. Joe. Okay. okay. My mom seriously just would not stop. So I finally said, fine, I will go meet Joe and talk about this Hollywood Moms Gone Wild project. You know what? What? My bag goes better than your bag. You're right. Okay. Right just be open-minded. I'm going to be open-minded. Mom, 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 Joe, mom, Oh, mom. just a little. Okay, mom, please stop. How does it hurt you? Mom, just, a just little. stop, okay? All right. I'm here. I'm being open-minded. Lick your lips. Oh, my God. Mom, just... just okay, I'll put on some lip gloss. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah, much better. Okay. I'm gonna be... Okay. Hi, I have a meeting with Liz. Okay. When we walked in, there was a girl gone wild. Candidate standing there. And that's what they look like. And Melissa looked so much better better than she. So I thought, this is a shoe and Melissa will see this and understand how great looking she is. You can go ahead and go back. Thank you. You know, you should wear your hair down. Mom, you should just mom, wear mom, your mom. hair down. Just, how does it hurt your beautiful hair? Oh, for God's sake, it's fine, hair. fine. Mom, stop. Jesus, Enough, God. okay? Enough. Right. Mr. Francis is ready to see you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll follow you. Right this way. Hi. Well, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. You know my mom. I know. Nice to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Sit down. Thank you. How are things with you guys? Things are great. 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 So I was surprised to get 
that phone call from you. God, you know. That's, well, I think she'd be terrific. I think, she'd be I think terrific. she'd be fantastic. I, I'm surprised you haven't asked her before, frankly. Well, mom, stop, please. Uh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> let's let's just you know we've got so much to catch up on, but let's just cut right to the chase. I just want to get this. Dealt with. Do you actually know what we're talking about here? No, no. I just I just got the message and I said I'd come and see you. And what do you think? Hollywood moms gone wild. I think it's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. Isn't it great? Can I get you excited? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me get you excited. Okay. okay. All right. We've already gone to the trouble of mocking up your DVD cover. What do you think? Oh my God! <laughs> think yes. <gasps> oh my. God! I would just be so proud to say, you see that slut on the cover? That's my daughter. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Hold on. What is going on? Is this the best? Is this it? Where's my stuff? Wait a second. Oh, that is not my body. It doesn't matter. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that Joe made two mock-ups, one of the cover and one of that would go on the box set. As much as I don't want to turn this to business, for me, it's, it's, business. Business. it's business. It's business. It's business. So I just do want to talk about legitimately what your expectations are and what financially I'm going to be- get. Well, we're good friends. So right. it's whatever you're comfortable with, number one. Right. That's the most important to, to us and to everybody that's involved in our brand. Is it you're comfortable? What numbers are we talking about and what exactly? I, I need details. You uh, want to write down a number? Write down a number. First okay. of all, what, Do I play, show it to play. you? You show it to me. I am in charge of my own destiny. Fine. Are you in charge of your destiny with your mother? Well, no. No. <laughs> and that's what you and I discuss. Let me write down a number. It takes you away. Did you see what I wrote down? Yeah. But I'm just trying to be open-minded. Okay, I am not going to lie. I mean, Joe's offer was incredibly tempting. I mean, that was a lot of money. But in the end, you know, I'm a mom, and I have to do what I think is right for Cooper. But, you know, like, if you want to feel it out, if you want to think about it, this isn't a high-pressure timeshare sales seminar. So if you'd like to come tonight, we're going to have a wrap party for our HDNet show, and you can come and meet some of the girls who have done it and see how you feel. I see nothing wrong with this. You know what? And this is an extremely generous offer. And think of Cooper going to college. Just think. I mean, that's really my motivation is I will then have a lovely nest egg for my son. Okay, you know what? I'm going to come by tonight. Give me a little time to think about it. Come by tonight. Just check it out. I'm going to bring Jason. Bring Jason. We'll have everybody there. there. I'll talk to some of the girls. And hopefully it'll give us a little time for you and I to catch up, too. It'd be great. Can I keep these? Absolutely. I'm going to keep it Suitable open. for framing? Su- absolutely. So are you kidding? Look at that. She looks so. great there. I have a lot to think about. I have a lot to think about. Okay. Joe, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I love you to death. I'll I love see you tonight. Too. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you so much. Mwah. Mwah. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming. I always see you tonight. It's a mother's dream. Am I, isn't it? Mwah. Bye, Joe. It's so good to see you. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. Bye, guys. She'll do it. <laughs> Thanks, Joan. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. Hello, hello. So excited. Hello, Judy. Hello, ladies. How are you? Melissa's going to be thrilled over it. It's a surprise. I got rid of all her old furniture. It was just too California. I mean, the rug looked like Burt Reynolds' old hair. I mean, just wrong, wrong, wrong. I gave it to her charity, the Bogart Foundation. I bought in Timothy Corrigan, who's a great interior decorator. He does Sarah Jessica Parker's house. And we're going to redo it all. Mrs. is going to walk in and she's going to go, wow. Let's go. Okay. All right. Movers. Let's get them. Come on. Come we're on. ready for the rugs. We're ready for the rugs. And then we just need to bring in one of the chairs. See, now this looks a lot more like my living room in New York. Yeah. I want people to walk in here and drop dead. Yeah. I want a special box we can put bodies in. <laughs> so every night, we can just take the bodies out. <laughs> That's what I would like. Oh, it's going to be terrific. They're bringing in one chair. Or, let them bring in whatever they can bring in. Absolutely not. Pretty, but no. Don't even bother with this one. <laughs> no, no, no. Take this away. This is just wrong. Too dark. Too dark. Too muddy. I'm learning your words. <laughs> uh, Melissa would 
This is so not Melissa. Yeah. So not Melissa. And, and, and I think it contrasts it con- too yeah, much. Yeah, it's really depressed. It's Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. This Bingo. Is okay, great. I love redecorating. Out with the old, in with the new. Except me. Sabrina, would you bring me some scissors? Please. Here I come. We'll get some scissors. Yeah, let's They'll make it we'll much faster. Scissors. Can you bring me some? Thank you. Look at this. Look well, what happened to the furniture? Well, what, can I we, gave can... it away. I gave it to the Bogart Foundation. Come out, Sabrina. Yeah. Hold on. What is going on? Is this the best? Is this the best? Look at this. Where's my stuff? I gave it away to the Bogart Foundation. No offense. So not okay. It is my house. Last time I checked, I actually own this place. I appreciate it. I know your heart's in the right place, but mom, you gotta talk to me. I thought you would love it. You can't just make these broad, sweeping. I'm sorry. Gym, and then, I thought you would love and then it. To donate my furniture? I thought. Did you think maybe? What if I didn't like it? What if How I didn't not like it? Sarah so what Jessica if? Parker uses him. Oh. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, you know what? I'm so done. Sarah Jessica you know, Parker uses him. Mom, wrong. Where is my furniture? I gave it to the. Could you, you gave what, my what, furniture you, away? The X name you gave the, the ladies' day. Could you bring in some more of the decor? You Let, gave my furniture away. I didn't away. give it away, Melissa. I donated it. You're That's always giving it away. You always talk about the Bogart Foundation. I gave it to the Bogart. Well, mom, you can't. I just, could have given it to God Dogs of the Blind. I don't care who I could have given you it gave to God Dogs. Okay, you know I what? gave it to your Do foundation. Do not turn this around on me. I that, gave it to okay, your people. Thank you. At least you did that. Why did you move to L.A.? So we could do these kinds of things together. Or at least talk to me about it. But next time you really want me to be happy, unless it's a Birkin or a large piece of jewelry, let me know. Oh. We need lamps? We need lamps. I have a pair of lamps that I want to try. You know what it was? Maybe I was trying to create a little of New York here. No, I really did like my old furniture. Well, then you should go to the auction. It's a win-win. You give money to the charity. You but I already money. own my furniture. Well. I don't want to buy my furniture back. I already own it. Well, see, owned. You know, charity begins at home. When did you become such a giver? <laughs> With your furniture. <laughs> My grandson Cooper's favorite show is Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? So I pulled a couple of strings and I got us a backstage tour. Next thing I know, I'm a contestant and today's the day and it's not going to be pretty. I mean, up until last year, I thought the Vikings discovered America at halftime. If Daisy needs 18 feet of lace. Oh, here we go. She has no taste. How many yards must she buy? It doesn't matter because she's a big pig and nobody's going to ask her the prom. I suggest she saves the money and get on a weight watching <laughs> program. She needs how many yards? If Daisy needs 18, 18 feet. 18 yards. No, feet. <laughs> 18 feet of lace. How many yards must she buy? And then they talked me into it. Oh, it's so wonderful. You can give the money to charity. And then the other part was, Cooper will be so proud of you. Cooper will be so proud of me only if I win. Otherwise, he's going to go around saying, I'm adopted. It's not my grandmother. I'm adopted. It's not my grandmother. Are you going to be ashamed of a stupid grandmother? Yeah, kind of. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Cooper. (laughs) If this is stupid and legs You guys, now. five minutes, and we're in that wait, wait, car. Wait, 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 five minutes. It's going to be ten yes, minutes. Not. Come on, let's go. All right. Okay, let's get packed up. Hey, you guys, go get in the limo. In case there's a fifth grader that I might like. Is it a popular name? Art. Art. Okay. Thank you very much. Why are we doing fifth grader? Good. Because you said it's your favorite show, and you were show I would go on it. Do you think I want to go on the show? Seriously. He didn't yes. say it was favorite. He said it was would fun. Would be fun. This is gonna be fun. Well, then why am I sitting here? Do you think I want to go and look stupid in front of all of America? So I find this whole thing so frustrating, and I am pissed, and I don't want to do this. 
Hello, 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 people. Where are the little children? Where are the little smart children? Hi, John. Hi. I'm Marcy. I'm I know. your producer. Nice that's to working see with you. Today. Nice to see you. I'm looking for some So in a few sweetener. minutes, we're going to take you into the run-through room and just okay. um, walk you through how to play the game and all that. Okay. All right. So okay. you're doing it. All right. Fine. Yeah. Can I take my coffee? You yes. sure can. All right. All right. Great. Okay. Which way? Hello. 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 Hello, sweetheart. Hello, angel. Hello, right. pussycat. Come up. Right. I know where your I know where your parents it. live. <laughs> <laughs> Are they clean? We can make sure they're. Pretty make right. sure they're clean. I don't want any <laughs> child that just picked its nose. I'm following you. I'm following you. Your suggestion about the whole pet oh, coop, coop. There goes grandma. Oh. Go get her. Go. Oh. Go, go, go. Hey, Grandma. Hi, sweetie puss. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Does the captain of a, of a submarine look through a telescope or a periscope? He looks through a periscope. Correct. Is that correct? It was obvious my mom was nervous. And really, I think having Cooper with her, like, chilled her out. Divide 70 cents by five. How much do you get? Uh, 70 cents by five. It's one, 20, four, five and 20. It's uh, 14. Correct. Sometimes we all have to do things that we're not necessarily comfortable doing, like me taking my top off or, let's say, my mom doing, are you smarter than a fifth grader? How do you say hello or goodbye in Hawaiian? Uh, um, aloha? Yeah. What do we call early movies that were made without sound? Uh... Silent films, yeah? I like uh, this, uh, the <laughs> fact that you've got your grandson reading you questions in the makeup chair. What do you do when you realize your grandmother is a moron? <laughs> How do you deal with this? How do you deal this, with this? Grandma's this is a what moron. makes me laugh. She's done everything there is to do in this business. You name it, she has done it. And the fact that she's nervous about being on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader cracks me up. Do you want to go see the set? I would, love, would you like to see the set? Yeah, yeah come yeah, on. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, come on, Koopy Doos. When you come out, you'll come say hello to the kids, right. and then you'll walk over here, right. and we will begin the execution up here at, <laughs> at, the, at the podium. Okay. Where's Let's see, we have the audience out here. Come here. Hello, audience. See what it looks like. This is a nightmare. She's a nervous wreck about taking the test on Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. That cracks me up. Yeah. You're going to be able to hold this over Grandma's head for Forever. a long, long time. Yeah, that'll yeah. make it cool. But, you know, Grandma holds the thing called the checkbook. <laughs> so it bounces. <laughs> okay, this is going to be fun. We'll just say you're right on everything. Just say I'm right on everything. all the money, right? Sounds good to me. Sounds good to just me. Just pitch just a little bit. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen... Joan Rivers! Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Hi! Oh my gosh! Mwah. 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 Did you think about it? What's gonna happen when Cooper goes to college and if some, be some dudes will be like, dude, your mom's boobs are on the video? And Ladies and gentlemen, Joan I still don't know how I ended up being a contestant on this game. I think I'm going to do well in history. I was there for a lot of it. and uh, Like the Black Plague, not so terrible. Great parking. My mom kicked ass, and we are all so proud of her, especially Cooper. I mean, come on. Her cool rating went through the roof today. I think she did really good. She was awesome on stage. Yeah, it's over. I don't know. My grandma was like, Phew. well done. I am so proud of her. She did so well. Come on. She did a great job. I just wanted to get the money and give it to my charities and run like hell. I'm going to take Jason with me to Joe's party tonight because Joe and I really do need to finish the conversation about whether or not I'm going to do this Hollywood mom's gone wild thing. Hi! Oh my gosh! Hi. Mwah. 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 Hi. 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 
What's up, Joe? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to see you. Girl, we gotta talk about today. I heard about this big day. We should talk. I want to show you some girl. No, is that okay? Go look at girls. Girl, look at girls. Look at girls. What are you? Perfect. 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 I love you, and you're my friend, and the offer was... Are you breaking up with me? Of course I'm not breaking up. I never break up with you, Joe. Oh, my God. Okay. No, I yeah, love okay. you. I, I thought you were breaking you. up with me just now. I love you. I adore you. But I can't do it. I can't. I gotta think of Cooper. Is it the offer? No, it's not the offer. I will up it right now. No, it's not that. I've been, it's, you, know, you know I've been kidding for, like, years, I and know, I've been like, I you know, gotta do this, I you know, gotta do that. I, know, I was kidding, I but today I'm serious. Like, I know. But when you're a dad, you're gonna understand. I have a nine-year-old son, and you know how important being a mom is to me. And I worked so hard at it. You're a great mom. Too. But the thing is, it's like, what's gonna happen when Cooper goes to college and a freshman, and it's hard enough, and some be, some dudes be like, dude, your mom's boobs are on the video, and like. Someone's making fun of him at school. I just, I can't. I no, can't. No, I understand. I, Look, and you're gonna be a dad, and you're gonna understand that. No, listen. And I'm flattered. I, regardless, and I love you. regardless. Listen. Okay. Whatever you're comfortable with, I love you. You're my friend. I so whatever. I went to Joe Francis' party. I turned Joe down. I'm not doing the video. Wrong. Wrong. It's your life. It's your breasts. Yes, it is. Yes, they are. That's wrong. Sorry. That's okay. Just totally wrong. I guess I'm wrong about a lot of things, like the living room. No, you weren't wrong about the living room. You were right. I should not have done it. I absolutely take full responsibility. But I still can't get my stuff back. Listen, I tried to do a nice thing. I'm not saying you didn't try and do a nice thing. It would be a wonderful thing to have you come home and have really a pretty living room to come home to. I versus? Think, versus your old, rather shabby... Living room. Really? You didn't notice it was frame, Melissa? I was saving. Shabby chic? I was waiting till the appropriate time to get things recovered. Well, I think the appropriate time has come. I'm sorry about that. And Dominica? Dominica, I'm right. Here we go again, Melissa. It's almost like a zigzag. You were wrong, I think, about the, 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 the naked pictures. And I have those wonderful ones I took in the shower. Okay, again, shows. so wrong to come into my bathroom and take pictures of me in the shower. You look great. It doesn't matter. You it was so wrong. Great. I'm going to post them on my blog you and you do? will see. Oh, Mom, I will not be happy. Next time on Joan and Melissa. Okay, I'm in the Cooper. How many miles a year do you drive? Uh, very little. Two in front of the plastic surgeon. I am sick of takeout. It would be cool if I could learn how to cook. You got, you got all frozen food. You got nothing I could cook here. Cooking isn't anything we're even remotely good at. As long as I can write a joke, I can have somebody cook for me. These are Uncle Tommy's ashes. I want to spread Uncle Tommy in places that are meaningful to him. This is where Judy Garland lived. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Previously on Joan and Melissa. I am going to move to California. Where are you actually going to live? I'm going to move in <laughs> with Melissa. <laughs> Change is good. <laughs> oh my God, there's another urn. How many dead people are in this? Where? <laughs> That's Uncle Tommy, and this is the urn of the unknown friend. I am bringing Edgar's ashes with me to Los Angeles, my best friend Tommy Corcoran's ashes to Los Angeles, and some ashes, I'm not sure who they are. It's not so terrible. It's going out to California with Joan Rivers <laughs> to live at Melissa Rivers' house. This is not a bad ending. Welcome. Who's driving? I'm driving, I'm driving. You're, you're driving? Yeah. Move over! <laughs> okay, nobody get me crazy. You're on their side of the lane. Good girl. Good girl. 
Good girl, Lola. Mrs. Warrior, I don't get enough exercise. It's ridiculous. I run up a tab every day at Neiman Marcus. Think it's easy pushing other women out of the way in a sale? What is this walk going to do for us? You're always complaining about trying to lose weight. Melissa. And you, if you exercise, at least make it fun. Let me tell you something. In this town, everybody's considered too fat. Gandhi would have been considered too fat. <laughs> I am not into exercise. If God wanted me to bend over, he would put diamonds on the floor. How much longer? I don't know, a little while longer. But Mom, I, I want you to be healthy and happy. Melissa, healthy and happy don't go together. Happy and hot dogs go together. Happy and chocolate go together. Happy and vodka goes together. Happy and healthy does not go together. So I will lose five pounds and you can buy me a smaller coffin. At this age, I don't understand exercise. I have spent my whole life on diets. The Britney Spears diet, only eat what you can spell. The Goldie Hawn diet, lose 20 pounds, just take off your extensions. <laughs> I mean, you name it, there is a diet. Uh, I had the Jane Fonda exercise book for a while that I worked very hard on, and I used it as a wonderful tray for my breakfast. <laughs> Mom, you don't think this is nice and peaceful? Melissa. This, if I had a heart attack right now, I could lie on this street for an hour and nobody would come by. You know what this is like? This is like after a nuclear attack. You don't think it's serene? There's nobody here. While I was out walking, Melissa, it became a very Beverly Hills kind of morning. First of all, nobody is on the street. You don't walk. In Beverly Hills, you get driven from your door to your car. Nobody's here. Mom, it's Is nice. Is anybody here doing anything? New York, you see people, you walk. This is boring, Melissa. I think it's lovely. I'm not really sure how taking a walk on a beautiful day in a lovely neighborhood is so horrible, but apparently the fact that there's not like bums laying in the street, people pushing and shoving, and cars honking made it apparently close to an unbearable experience. How much longer? Now, see, okay, this could be a nice house for you. It's being built right now. Oh, I don't like Mediterranean. I haven't found the right place yet. I have, in my lifetime, bought four houses, and each time I walked in, and I knew it right there and then. Hasn't hit me yet. Look at this dog. <laughs> Mom, we've been talking about a house, but I think even as, as important as a house is a car. Of course I'm gonna get a car. Well, the car situation here is kind of scary. Because I know if I get in a car, I'm now a target for drive-by shootings. But then again, there are a lot of people I don't like, so maybe it might be the other way around. I, I want to get a car that I think Angelina Jolie's driving. Oh, I want to we... get a car that Sarah Jessica Parker would drive. If you're going to get a car, how about something a little bit more practical, like when you got the station wagon? God, I don't want a big car all I'm my life. I want to a big car. I drove the the good car, the right car, the family mother car. Let's throw the dogs in to get washed car. I want a car that says, hot patootie, look out. And I want a, I want a horn that plays music. Come so on, this is good. We started talking about it earlier. What are you gonna do <clears throat> with Uncle Tommy? I am gonna spread his ashes where he loved being. Uncle Tommy was probably my best friend. I met him one of the first day I went to make the rounds as an actress, and we stayed friends for 40 odd years. And he was Melissa's godfather. He walked Melissa down the aisle. Gave the eulogy at Daddy's memorial. Yeah, he was just- He I think was part of the family. And he asked to be cremated, and he asked uh, in his will that uh, I decide where he should be sprinkled. I'm gonna spread them, I think, in the Beverly Hills Hotel because he loved being there. Yeah, he loved that. I'm gonna spread them uh, all up and down Rodeo Drive because if you didn't know where Tommy was, you couldn't reach him on the phone, you went on Rodeo Drive, you found Tommy. Just wanted I to mean, be where he would have wanted to be. And the nice thing is, is you've already started that, so I like that you're continuing that trend. A little of Tommy is gone in uh, Buckingham Palace, Paris, the countryside of London, and then I thought when I came out to California, I'd love to put some of Tommy out here. That's what Uncle Tommy would want. I That's think exactly, so. I think, what he would want. Mother, can you just get your dog to poop so we can go home? Oh, God, come on. Empty bag, empty bag. My dog, two, your dog, zero. <laughs> 
Come on, Lola. Come on, Lola. Look at a nice tan you have today. Doesn't so it look cute? It's Ooh, really cute. Chinese. Chinese. Ooh, Chinese. Oh, Chinese. Oh, yes. Ew, that's okay. It's good luck. Back to sweet with you. Good luck. Okay. Here we here go. Here we go. Pass it Thank along. You. Now that I'm here, I am insisting we sit down once a week for a terrific family dinner. I mean, that's how I was brought up, how Melissa was brought up, and how Cooper should be brought up. I mean, you should sit with your family and fight. Here, I'll hold this for you, hon. Thank you, man. I got it. You know what's so funny? What? Chinese food on metal containers. No, on Chinese metal, food. These are silver. Uh, Chinese on food silver. on silver trays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say that the Rivers women can cook, and it doesn't matter. Our great, 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 great grandmother met God, and he said, what room do you want to be good in? Kitchen or bedroom? Take it from there. Okay, that is so incredibly gross and information I did not need. It's well, unreal. She was a moron. She said, for you. So <laughs> we got screwed. None of us in our family can cook. You guys have done all these crazy, amazing things over years, and you never did like a cooking segment or learned no. how? It's a Rivers family. People call it a curse. I call it a tradition. I was brought up. It is a curse. It's not a curse. It's a curse. Do I look underfed? You never cook anything? Nothing. I don't. I want to know more about the curse, the Rivers curse. No one in your family cooks. It's a curse. Nobody in my family has ever cooked, OK? Melissa was brought up on TV dinners, and I was brought up on radio dinners. And before that, I don't know what they had, but uh, no, they didn't cook. You don't even have like the one meal the, when you were sick or anything? The well, you could always make chicken soup, but very often my mother forgot to pluck it. And there were things that happened. <laughs> we're, not, we're not natural cooks, we have other talents. Haven't you thought about like a shaman or an exorcism? No, if God wanted me to, to, to cook, my hands would be aluminum. I'm telling you right now, it's okay. We can get through with it. And as long as I can write a joke, I can have somebody cook for me. I always say everyone should do- What they're good at. What they're good at. Cooking isn't anything we're even remotely good at. One word, caterer. I have wonderful memories of different caterers and cooks of ours growing we up who made delicious things. We had caterers that were almost like family when Melissa was growing up. Peter's spinach oh, salad. Peter's spinach salad. Till he went to jail, superb. 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 <laughs> it's true, he did go to jail. <laughs> was that joke about Jewish women? No, Jewish good. women, what are you making for dinner? A reservation. But um, um, I think I would like to learn how to cook. I mean, I can make your basics, and I would like such to, as I can make eggs. I can boil pasta. I can make microwave pizza. I can make sandwiches. I can make little pizzas out of English muffins. Good for you. Maybe I'll take it upon myself and learn how to cook. Maybe I will be the one to break the curse. You never know. Cooking. Um, why not? I can try. It, it looks like it would be fun. It seems like something that would be nice to have a little more skill at. I want to surprise everyone. I really do want to learn how to cook. Coming up are Joan and Melissa. These are Uncle Tommy's ashes. So I thought we'd take him today and I'd scan him. What do you mean, wait, I'm going? Of course you're going with me. I wanted you to drive the getaway car. We're gonna go get Grandma a new car. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. One day it might be yours. You pumped? Mm -hmm. I know nothing about cars, and I really don't care. Whatever car you want is fine. Yeah. I'll hammer out the details, all right? Okay. So I asked Cooper, what kind should I get? He said, Mini Cooper. Pretend like we're just browsing, okay. buddy. Thank God Melissa didn't name him Hyundai. We're looking for a car. I just have Mini Coopers, no Coopers. And this is the hot car. I wanted to say this way. All the celebrities car. driving. Lots of celebrities drive them. Could you give me a name? I can't. Confirm or deny. I can't. You can't just, confirm or deny. I can't deny. dish. Short. One word. Short with a short wife, <laughs> Danny DeVito. Keep going up. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Zip lips. Zip lips. I know it's not Angelina Jolie. There's no room in there for 162 children. <laughs> I understand that my mom wants something like fun and sporty and all that, but I really think there has to be a little bit more um, of a practical element because- Then I should buy a hearse. How many miles a year do you drive? Uh, 
Very little. To and from the plastic surgeon. I'm definitely yeah. low mileage. <laughs> low mileage, high well. maintenance. That's who I am. <laughs> I need a car. I have certain standing appointments. I need to go to the, 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 the hairdresser. I need uh, to get my manicure. And the plastic surgeon, I mean, Botox, I absorb it like that. Okay, so show me. I get in that car and I drive around and it's red and it's zippy. That car makes me feel so good. So yeah, it makes me feel like I, like I always have a uterus again. Woo! <laughs> Cooper's named after me. It's red, it doesn't have a roof, and it has a lot of buttons that you can play with. That's why it's so awesome. What would this cost me? 26,200. It's a lot of jokes. I translate everything into jokes. I get $7 a joke. So when they're starting to talk $26,000, $27,000, that's a lot of jokes. A weekend in Vegas about 8,000 jokes. Okay, so what is this, like a cruise ship for a night? This is a gay cruise <laughs> with a meet and greet. I love my salesman. Anyone that brings a dog to work with them is a nice guy. You can't do just a little better. I'll knock off another 100 bucks if you take a picture with my dog. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Once I went car shopping with Cooper, I knew I was gonna get the Mini Cooper because that's what he wanted. But I thought I'd pick it up later and surprise him with it. Keep the 100 and give it to the ASPCA. <laughs> Will do. Steve. Absolutely. How nice you doing? to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. My friend Jimmy Kimmel recommended this man, Steve Moderano, who's a chef. Let me show you the Absolutely. kitchen. Absolutely. After you. But I mean, seriously, you don't look at him and think like major successful chef. But the truth is, he's 100% brilliant with food. So my mom has decided to implement these weekly family dinners. Well, that's nice. And we're not sitting in the kitchen, we're sitting in the dining room and all talking. No one in our family can cook generations of women not being able to cook. My mother can't cook. Her mother couldn't cook. No one in my family can cook. All we do is do takeout. I just think that's not right. I'm feeling I'm the one you. that needs to break the cycle. I want to surprise everyone. I really do want to learn how to cook. Pretty on Melissa's, on yeah. Melissa's table. I love birds. Yeah, I love birds. I don't like them symmetrical like that, though. I think they should be. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one live, one dead hunting season. Okay. Uncle Tommy. Aww. Look at this. Look at this. <gasps> look at this. Is that oh, cute? Oh, look. Uncle Tommy was handsome. Look at him. Yes, Uncle Tommy was very handsome. He was very and debonair, wasn't he? These are Uncle Tommy's Look at the ashes. little scooper scooper. Real yeah. ashes? Well, he's my best friend in the whole world. I met him when, the first day I went to make the rounds as an actress, and we stayed friends for 40 odd years. And he had no family. Well, uh, he did, he just didn't like them particularly. Yeah, so he absolutely came into our family. He never married, he was gay. And uh, Melissa became his daughter, in a sense. Edgar became his brother. It, it was a holiday, he was there. It was a vacation, he was there. He was just our family. Here are the ashes that we found. You with your ashes. There's Tommy, and there's the unknown friend. I still don't. I still don't know who this That's is. That's the one we we had in Connecticut. We had found didn't know in who Connecticut. Was. I don't know who this is. I think it's Vincent Price. I started collecting little bags of friends' ashes about ten years ago because I love them. And I feel they're very close to me, and it's easy to ask a bereaved family, can you have a little bit of ashes, rather than asking, can I have Harry's finger? John, Uncle Tommy looks like he's in a mayonnaise jar or pickle jar. Yeah, what I did was I, I saved some of him for New York, and some of him I left in Connecticut, even though the house is rented, and this I want to sprinkle today. So what I wanted to do, I want to take him, put a little already, in London, I put a little in France. I put a little on Betsy Bloomingdale's back. I put a little on my hand. He thought she was the chicest woman alive. And I said, oh, good to see you, Mrs. Bloomingdale. And Tommy went home with Mrs. Bloomingdale. So I thought today I'd sprinkle him 
So I'd throw a little of him in the Beverly Hills Hotel because he used to hang out there in the polo lounge. You're going to take him to these places today and throw and him in? sprinkle a little. A little. Scatter, scatter. John, you're killing me. I'm never hugging you again, just so you know. <laughs> We're going to the Beverly Hills. I'm going? Of course you're going with me. OK. I wanted you to drive the getaway car. Wait a minute. I thought we were watching Cooper today. We'll take Cooper with us. To scatter ashes? Oh, please, Lynn. It's, it's, this is good. This is green. <laughs> this is very green. This is biodegradable. I am not oh taking up a, a plot. I am not watering a cemetery. I think you should be very I careful. I am sending Uncle Tommy back into the universe. <sighs> I think it's great. I think Melissa's going to get power of attorney over you if she finds out about this. I am going to definitely be scattered. And I'm going to have Melissa scatter me in front of all the stores I love, little in Connecticut, little in New York, a lot in Melissa's house. It's going to be fun. Let's go. All right. I'm, I'm a loyal friend, and I'll do this We're with you. This. Oh, my God. It's going to be fun. And I'm going to take Uncle Tommy with us in the car. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Now we go to Rodeo Drive. Joan, there's a Rolls. Why don't you just throw them on the hood of the Rolls? Not a bad idea. Joan, don't open the window. Just go on. Joan, there's a policeman. There's a policeman. I had a friend, Tommy, who loved oh, men in right? uniform. Uh, who's sure in front? Who's in back? I'm in back. I will drive. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today I'm on a very emotional mission. I am going to spread the ashes of my very dear, dear friend, Tommy Corcoran, all over his favorite places in Los Angeles. If the police show up, you run with me. We leave Grandma. She's famous. They won't Don't take you to jail. Don't get upset, Lena. Don't. I'm playing. The police are not going to show up, Cooper. We're doing something very, very nice. Uh, yeah. turn right. Right? Uncle Tommy was probably my best friend, and so I've kept him in my closet, which makes me feel very good and very protected. And then I thought when I came out to California, I'd love to put some of Tommy out here. And I would love to put him Beverly Hills Hotel. Oh, I love the Polo Lounge. Love the, the Polo Lounge. They used to call him uh, Tommy Hollywood. Yes. I Definitely want to put him Rodeo Drive. Yep, absolutely. He adored Judy Garland. So I'm going to try to find Judy Garland. I house. think you are so on target. Oh, sorry. You're going 15. In a 30. Nobody talk to me. OK, Grandma can't talk and drive. Oh. <laughs> um, big toys. I love power to the workers. Wave, wave. Oh, the wave of a queen. To the queen's wave. See that, Cooper? Oh. Your grandma's single by choice. Wait, 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 give me the jar, give me the Here jar, give me the jar. I got it. Uncle Tommy! That's the Beverly Hills Hotel. Wow. Uncle Tommy's feeling good. You'd walk in, there'd be Johnny Carson with a hooker, and there'd be <laughs> Ed McMahon with one of his wives, and it was just great. You'd see everybody. Joan Collins always in a different wig. It was <laughs> so exciting. Cooper, just stay in the car. Watch the door. Tom, be careful. Back at the Beverly Hills Hotel, my sweetheart. What I just did was something totally illegal. I went and I sprinkled Tommy. He's now in the Beverly Hills Hotel grounds, which is part of where he should be. And I am very emotional at the moment. And I don't care. No cop sauce. No. He's now with the Petunias. That was exciting, John. Yeah. I think you've officially lost your mind. When I die and get cremated, there are certain people I want their ashes mixed in with me. And then all that can be together and then scattered. So happy that I'm doing this. You have no idea. I know. I am bringing him back to places that he loved and was happy in. The other night when we sat down and had our 1700th meal that was to go and in a container, I started to think about the fact that maybe I should try and learn how to cook. So I called chef Steve Moderano and asked him if he could come over and, and you know, start to teach me. My mom has decided to move to LA and she's staying with me while she's looking for a house. It's the point where all we do is do takeout. And 
I, I just think that's that's not right. So, what kind of cooking do you do? You like macaroni, right? Yes. Eggplant salad with fresh mozzarella. Ooh, yum. Fresh tomato okay. and arugula. Forget about it. It's unbelievable. Do you know if you have eggplant in here at all? I could probably tell you we have no eggplant. You're kidding me, right, kid? You got you got all frozen food. You got nothing I could cook here. Mac and cheese. Two in the morning, I go for that. I don't see no macaroni. Pots, pans underneath. Yep. Melissa, there's no pans. Yeah, there's a pan. Yeah, you got two. Steve seems awesome, and I am so excited to surprise everybody with this meal tonight. I mean, I'm really into this. Koopy, are you ready to get out and help me sprinkle Uncle Tommy? Mm hmm Okay, now we go to Rodeo Drive. We love Rodeo Drive. Gucci and Fendi and Chanel and Valentino. This was his stomping ground. It's always tricky for me because I'm short. Now what do I do? I can't. Is he honking? Are you kidding me? OK, here we go. Open your pockets. Oh, John. No, no, I think maybe this might be better. There we go. Look at that. That's great. OK. Just shake him down. You can do it. You can do it. You look great. Thank you. I love you on the view. Thank you. Just come here. OK. Get ready to run. Get ready to run. Get ready to run. Let's go. Ready? OK. Bye-bye. Thank you. Coop, oh my god, it's on you. OK, here we go. Come on, Coop. I love Diwali. Oh my God, it's me. such a nice store. Wonderful. Tommy Corcoran would have loved you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank no, you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Don't look at him in the eye, no. Cooper. I'm honestly nauseous, John. I'm throwing Don't up. Don't say you're not going to throw up. We're not just going to all walk in. Lynn, uh, we're good. Come on. John, there's a policeman. There's a policeman. Uh, there's really a policeman. I had a friend, Tommy, who loved oh, was that right? uniform. You got any more? I got a little more. OK. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. When I saw those people on the tour bus, I thought, if they only knew what I was doing. John, there's a Rolls. Why don't you just throw them on the hood of the Rolls? Not a bad idea. Joe, don't open your window. Just go on. Don't open just your go window. On. You put Tommy on the roof of that cuz. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let me see you splash oh splash. <laughs> I've been asked. TMZ showed up, and I was dying to say to them, kiss my ash. Thank you so much, bro. Have a great day. You're fabulous. Bye. Love you. Cooper, do you like Lindsay Lohan? Because Grandma's going to spend time with her. I have so many things. Thank you. Mrs. Rosenberg, let's go. I, she looks go. like Joan Rivers. It's not okay. her. She gets it a lot. Let's go, please, okay. please. Hello, Fendi. You threw him at Hello, me. Hello, Fendi. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, was it? That's really, it's really nice. Throwing your uncle around like a Mardi Gras parade is nice. It was all good. Give me the last out of your pockets. We're hitting Chanel. See if you can get any bone. Here. Don't, and don't brush him off till we get in front of a good store. There we go. Hello. My friend Uncle Tommy loved this store. Thank you for letting me show it. Come on, John. It's time Thank for your you. medication. <laughs> OK, are you ready? Mm -hmm. We did it. No more Uncle Tommy. Shake the last out. And Uncle he bought me too. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. This is where Judy Garland lived. Rest in peace, Uncle Tommy. Hey, what the hell are you doing? It's people like you that made Judy turn to drinking drugs. Son of a bitch. Okay, this is Judy Garland's house, guys. This is it? Okay, this is gonna be good. One, go, go, go. Really, be careful, be careful. Don't run out in the street. Cooper, very careful. Okay. Okay, here we go. I want to spread Uncle Tommy's ashes in places that are meaningful to him. This is where Judy Garland lived. He was a major fan of Judy Garland's. And if I can sneak into her house, how great would that be that he's in Judy's house? John, what if the people are home? Doesn't matter. Just a little in Judy Garland's garden. Shh. Cooper had no idea who Judy Garland was until I said Wizard of Oz that he knew right away. Toto's mistress. Cooper, you don't have to be worried. It's okay. Cooper, stand up. It's okay. Do you want to say something about Uncle Tommy while we're here? I just want to say 
that I love Uncle Tommy, and he loved Judy Garland. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Uncle Tommy. Rest in peace, Uncle Tommy. Somewhere. Hey, what the hell are you doing? I'm sorry. Uh, is this where Judy Garland lived? Get out of here before I call the cops. What happened at Judy Garland's house was just terrible. I was spreading the ashes in the front yard. Big deal. And this man came out right away, and he was going to call the police. It's all right. Thank you. I hate when you trespass on people's property, and they don't appreciate it. It's people like you that made Judy turn to drink and drugs. Son of a bitch. Don't listen, Cooper. It's Judy Garland's house. When you buy Judy Garland's house, what do you think is going to happen? You live in a house where somebody was a legend, a legend live here. We all want to see where Judy shot up. We all want to see where Judy had fights, where Judy fell off the wagon, where Judy got fat. And I just found it awful that he didn't understand that. That's memories. Coop, please be careful. The street is right there. Your grandma's having a nervous breakdown. Poor okay. Judy Garland. Love you back. The person who lives in Judy Garland's house is not nice. See, this is where I miss not having a gay son. Now, if Melissa had been the gay son that I longed for, she would say, Mother, did you get inside? How is it decorated? It, it's all right. He's yelling at us, He's though. not yelling at us. He's fine. He's just all fine. Bitch. These are regular eggs. I'm gonna start scrambling. Okay, so start scrambling. Go this away. I actually know how to do. Go I am not ashamed of it. I embrace the family curse proudly, but I feel I'm gonna take the first step towards breaking it. Oh, That's all right. Your hands are clean, right? Yes, my Look hands there. are very clean. You wanna season this. Okay. We'll scramble it up. I'm scrambling, I'm scrambling. Oh, That's all right. Let me show you. Like a motorboat. All right, let me try, let me try, let me try. I had a great time with Steve. Totally got each other. Try and leave all limbs. Hold your knife. There you go. That good? Do the next one. Do the next one. Okay. Don't be afraid. Okay. There you go. gonna bite you. He's from South Philly. I went to Penn. Lots to chat about. And underneath that big Steve exterior is a really sweet, nice man. So now how'd you learn how to do all this? Oh, well, I started cooking out of my mother's basement. Do you still talk to your mom? My mother, she lives with me. She uh, lives with you. Absolutely. You know my mom's living with me. I haven't lived with my mom since I was 17 years old. My mother's 80 years old. She still tells me what to do, how to do it. You know, she's like, she's still the boss. If I go out, what time you coming home? Oh, yeah. What are you wearing? Did yeah. you eat? Now, did your mother do that to you? Yes. She's changed my furniture. She criticizes everything. Am I not allowed to, like, try and grow and change? I think you did. Your mom still looks at you as her little girl. I don't think she's trying to boss you. I think she's just trying to keep teaching you something. That's how I see it. I might be wrong. I don't know your mom that well. But she reminds me of my mother. Yeah, then the Jews and the Italians, Absolute, not much different. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a place called Hamburger Mary's that Tommy used to go to to dance late at night and just have a good time. It's a gay bar, so I am going to sneak in the back door, which is, uh, I have a feeling what most people do that come to this bar. My name is Bridget of Madison County, holding for applause. Oh, you're too, too kind, really. Uh, I am a recovering drag queen. <laughs> um, the 12 steps that we do as drag queens in recovery are uh, uh, six to the bar and six back. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys, it's Joan Rivers! And this is your poll. <laughs> this is my poll. This is how we make the extra money when the show flops. It's all true. Uh, trust me, I know. Uh, <laughs> I love you back. I, 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 I 
don't mean to uh, interrupt you. I, I, a friend of mine named Tommy Corcoran, I don't know if any of you remember him. He was uh, from out here, and he used to come here very often and oh, dance yeah. at night. Uh, he died, and I wanted to bring his ashes, and I wanted to sprinkle them here a little bit. Because, yes, I know, he's my very good friend, and he was, he was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. And uh, he had a lot of good times here. Mm. And he picked up a lot of... Mm. People and you can call it trash. It's okay. That's a, <laughs> and disease. Oh. But uh, but if you don't mind, I'd just like to um, spread a little of Tommy around the dance floor, and then maybe we could all dance. Yeah! Okay. Tommy Corcoran, Tommy Corcoran. Yeah. It's like church. Yeah. My favorite place that I put Uncle Tommy was at this gay bar that he always went to because A, there were very cute gay guys there. He'd like to be among them. B, they dance, and they dance even in the afternoon at that gay bar. And Tommy loved to dance. So I thought, what could be better? On Joan and Melissa. I was preparing the meal with Chef Steve. Maybe I'll let them think I did it myself. I'm not going to be the first one to take a bite. Let's put it that way. Going down that Pacific Coast Highway in that red convertible with my hair blowing in the sun on me, I felt like a Californian. I wanted to do something great. I just wish Jennifer Anderson had a husband I could take away. Can't wait for Cooper to see it. He's gonna love it. Hello! Oh, oh. my God! <laughs> I got it! I got it! I got it! First of all, the rule is the older the person, the bigger the car. I mean, she should be in a tank. Is it great or is it great? It's awesome! Well, it's not really what we talked about. It's a mini Cooper. Wow. Yes, it is. Cooper, help me pick it out. And Jason got me a very good deal, and I just think it's wonderful. Well, I am glad you love it. Isn't this great? Let me, let me sit over there. Let me right, sit over there it. for a sec. It's awesome. This goes down, this comes in, uh, it moves up. Cute. Is that great? I mean, you know that you'll never have the top down. No, I drove with it all down. Really? And something works, and it, it's, listen, this is with the top down. That's impressive. It's really great. Congratulations. Okay. It is very, very I cute. I just love it. Well, congratulations. I like just it. A, congratulations. I like it. You know, like it? Mm -hmm. Like it? Love it. Okay. Okay, out, go. You know what this is? What? Chick magnet. A chick <laughs> magnet. <laughs> You're well, growing that much too obviously. quickly. A chick <laughs> a magnet? Chick magnet? <laughs> Conrad's gonna use it. Oh, no, Conrad's not gonna use Conrad it. Conrad is not gonna use this. I am so excited about having my own car because it really makes me feel like I'm here now. I'm in California, got my own wheels, and they're on a convertible. You know how long I've wanted a convertible? I mean, it makes me feel young. Oh, that reminds me, you gotta go shop by the DMV and get your handicap plates. <sighs> Margie, can you see me? I can see you, barely. What are you wearing? God. I keep in touch with my friends in New York every single day by webcam. I mean, it's wonderful. You can see each other, you can laugh, you can give each other the finger. It's, it's good. I sprinkled Tommy's ashes today. Where? All over Beverly Hills. It was absolutely amazing, because he loved that place, you know it. Then I went to Rodeo Drive. Yeah. And I sprinkled him in front of all the stores that he loved and didn't know money to. It's fabulous. I think. What a way to go. I'm going to do the same for you. Where would you sprinkle me? Well, the first, I think I'd keep you forever. I don't know if I'd sprinkle you. I'd put a very pretty little jar. Joan, I'm not sprinkling you anywhere, so don't leave it anywhere in the will. I'm, not, I'm going to keep you forever. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love you. I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye, sweetheart. <laughs> 
I'm gonna do, because I have no idea that you're here. I'm okay. gonna tell them that I have a special okay. surprise, okay. and then you can come out. Is so it what, 10 minutes? Up. Okay, I'm gonna start to get everyone together. One, okay. Two. While my mom was off scattering Uncle Tommy all over town with Cooper, I was preparing the meal with Chef Steve. I'm just thinking maybe I'll let them think I did it myself. Which ones can I take? Well, nothing yet. Okay. One second. See, I watch Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. So I know about these things. You know about this. Well, I know about these yeah. things. Tell me when. As soon as I gotta do something. To the window. Isn't that what, isn't what they scream on Hell's Kitchen? Good. Yeah, See? Thank you. Dinner. All right. Melissa doesn't know how to cook. I'd rather die than eat Melissa's cooking. In fact, I did have it once and it did almost kill me. I, I go right here next to Grandma. Ooh. He gets wine? No, yes. no wine for food. Thank, Thank you, you Sabrina. Ooh. You're right there. You know what? I've had Melissa's cooking. And if she's not reheating, I'm not eating. Oh. Jay, you're oh. here. Mel's never cooked before. I mean, she turns the microwave off and makes coffee, but that's about it. I'm a little hesitant. I'm not going to be the first one to take a bite. Let's put it that way. This is unbelievable. Thank you, yeah, all yeah, ye, of, ye of little faith. What Let's is this? Just, Tell me this what this is. This is eggplant. Eggplant. So everyone dig that's in. That's my favorite. It was lovely to see people reaching for food that wasn't surrounded by cardboard. It was, wasn't it? Was it was great. Awesome. Presentation. Is our family. Cooking is not. I think pretty is what counts. I don't care if you give me a beautiful plate and you put a dead bird on it. As long as the bird's got a flower in its mouth, I'll say, this is fabulous. This is absolutely it's delicious. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. May I say, you have broken the family curse. Well, thank you, everyone. Wow. Cheers to that. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. I think that it's unrealistic to break probably, what, about a 200-year curse? Oh, at least. In, in one day. Do you understand? My mother is not rolling her grave. She's going yum-yum. And it was wonderful having good food. He is to not ever see a white carton again. This is the end of takeout and the beginning a family dinners. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Chin -chin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, you guys thought I really did all of this? And then I realized, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, because what happens when they ask me to make it again? I really did make a huge effort today um, to try to learn how to cook, but thank you. Before we all get too carried away, I'm gonna admit I had a little help. Is he single? You'll see. Steve? All yes, right. ma'am. Everyone? Hello, hello, This hello. is my friend, Steve. Hi, oh, Nice to meet you. Steve. Welcome, welcome. When Melissa introduces to Steve, I went, this guy is a cook? He looks like he came off the set of Oz. Sure, sure, he sure. had the patience to help me today. She was good. Now, I want to know, can you come every night? <laughs> <laughs> and Steve, I insist that you join us. Yes. Oh, Steve, this is amazing. Uh, would you mind getting up to Medica, please? <laughs> Would you just sit down next sure. to him? Don't no ask problem. any questions. Don't make me sweat. Really want to sweat. Yeah. <laughs> this is Lynn. Lynn is a wonderful girl. She's blonde, but you know, she's Italian. Uh, how you doing, Lynn? How, nice how to are meet you? you. Love the Pleasure. Food. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Everybody talk to each other. Leave them alone. Exactly. Don't leave us alone. Your food. Thank you. You're joining us. Thank you. To Steve, yeah. and perhaps it's premature, and Lynn. I want to say that meal was delicious and I'm so proud that you did it. Can never have done that in a million years. I, I helped do it. And you learned some. I did. I actually did learn some stuff. <laughs> So how'd it go today? Did it feel good to scatter Uncle Tommy? I think a lot of people are gonna think I'm nuts. And I think it was the nicest thing I could have done. And I think it was such a happy day. We ended up dancing on his ashes. 
That's exactly. Like what he went on, what he wanted. What he wanted. I miss him so much. I miss your father, but your father's almost 20 years. But Uncle Tommy was, uh, it's still so fresh. With my mom coming back to LA, it was really the right time for her to spread the ashes. I have his friends over here that he scattered in Judy Garland's house. He'll be very <laughs> jealous. Tommy was part of our family, and she and Tommy were together all the time in New York. And with her coming back to LA, I think it's it really represents a fresh start. Let's put this upstairs. closed in my life and in Melissa's life, and that's terribly, terribly, terribly sad for us. We're a small family, and he's a big loss in, in our small family. Oh, I hate endings, Melissa. Nobody likes them all. Yeah, but my poor Uncle Tommy, my poor dear Uncle Tommy. Where will we put him? Uh, how about, this would be nice. Usually Jews light candles on the anniversary of the person's death to remind you of them. And it wasn't the anniversary of his death, but I thought it was wonderful that we lit it and we thought about it. I miss him so much. I know. With death, everyone treats it so differently and you must do what you want and act as you want and mourn as you want when it comes to losing a loved one. Don't listen to what other people tell you. You do what you want. Come on, let's go tuck Cooper in. Come on. New life always cheers you up. Oh, God. I just want to put him next to somebody cute. He'll be happier like that. Next time on Jonah Melissa. You don't listen to me, you don't hear me. I find this absolutely insane. I know you're miserable here. I am jumping through hoops to make you happy. Well, what do you want me to do? Sit here and be your, sh your, your whipping post? No, but you're not. You In essence, I can't do anything to please you. Let me get the out of here. Time out. I am confused. I, the whole group turned on me. It, it was awful. I really think I've ruined everything. You have it. Previously on Joan and Melissa. Oh, oh, put your hands up. Put get your out. hands up. Put get your out. hands up. Oh, oh, she got so upset. I don't understand it. I was taking pictures of her naked all life. Do you know that I almost had five minutes where I was enjoying you continuously? We cannot talk about these things in front of people. I don't give a Melissa. I what? just. I'm sorry. To, I, it, Mom, it, seriously, it, I just don't want to talk just about it. Right I'm sorry. No swearing. I'm sorry. I got rid of all her old furniture. And we're going to redo it all. This is going to walk in and she's going to go, wow. What the f is going on? Nothing, that's the problem. What do you mean? Because I thought California was supposed to be glorious places to look at. You can't see a damn thing with the smog. You don't see the Pacific because the stupid trees are covering it. When Missy brought me into this house the first time, we walked through those doors and you saw the Pacific. The view was astonishing. It's 10 years later and the trees are growing up. Melissa's neighbor, Peter Tilden, refuses to cut his trees. I don't know why he's so resistant to doing it. Maybe you can convince him. I'm hoping the Malibu fire will come right up to his house. And if it were a nice day, there's no place to swim here. Look at this. This looks like a, 
a giant toilet for Kirstie Alley. What, what the hell is this? I put the pool in when I bought this house. Over time, with the ground shifting and everything, it started to slip. So I had two choices, either fix my pool or watch it fall and flood the neighbors. I would have gone with flooding the neighbors because that would have gotten rid of the trees that are blocking your view of the ocean, but it's not my house. Look, let me do something for you. Let, let, let me take this over as a project. They are trying, but I mean, Oh, sure. you gotta push these guys. Can we do this project while we're looking for a house project? This has nothing to do with a house project. With this, let's just get this finished. This place should be so beautiful. And it makes me very unhappy. You're you're right. It makes all of us unhappy. So let's It'd be go great. Let me get the number. When was the last time this son of a bitch talked to you? Uh, the other week. Well, there there you go. You're right. No, you're right. When you're right, you're right. Steven, Steven, Steven! Oh, oh my god! Oh my goodness! So oh my! Oh, how are you? You smell good. Conrad sent me up with this realtor, who said he had this amazing house for me to look at in the Hollywood Hills. I cannot wait to show you this house. It has a pool and it has city views and it's a million six four nine. So far, I'm not so thrilled. Termites. It needs to be washed. Can you feel the energy of the Hollywood Hills? No. There's no place like it. <laughs> Talk to Joan. Holly went to crack Hello. Up. You know what that bird is saying? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You're damn right. <laughs> This is one of the bedrooms. I don't like going downstairs to the bedroom. It gets me crazy. I have it already in Melissa's house. The celebrity lives here, and a gold medalist lives across the street. Can you confirm it's a gold medalist? I have to do my research, but yes. I want to go home and really just take a shower. Thank you very much. It's a little bit too small, though. I don't think any celebrity is living in this neighborhood. And I'm not going to break the pattern. Okay, ladies, so we have several things that we need to go over. Public relations is certainly 50% of this business. It's important that the public constantly is aware of you. Joan, you also got an offer from the Dr. Phil show. They want to interview guys about mother-daughter relationships. Dr. Phil? Maybe it's in a positive light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> now, we're gonna air Dirty Laundry, let's air it on our own show and get paid. I am so tired of people, they just don't understand our relationship. They really don't understand no. a mother-daughter relationship. No. There are gonna be arguments. A mother's job is to say to her child, you're totally wrong and you're doing it wrong. Do you get That's a mother's in? job. Do you get to put in for overtime? We um, have a crew coming in. They are doing a web video. Blue Fly, they want to see your closets. Get a lot of Joan Rivers jewelry. Blue Fly is a big website, so it's great for us. We're in the fashion business. It's great for people to be able to see our closets. If you're not in the public eye, you are totally forgotten. And it's called FaceTime. Your lawn looks like hell. My lawn? Your lawn. Peter Tilden, I guess the only way I can really describe family. him is family. I mean, Peter really fills the void for me of surrogate father. I mean, we I mean you're really his best together. friend. He's my best friend. I speak to him at least twice a day. His radio show is number one drive time in LA. Unfortunately, he's also Melissa's neighbor. If you would just cut Yeah, his he does need to trim his and trees. Trim the trees. He's gotta trim the trees. Um, come on, you have a nice house and you don't cut your wing. The only one in the area. Okay, I don't wanna make you feel bad. My gardener had a stroke. He had a stroke a year and a half ago. Apparently. And he has, and it's a very slow re recovery for a gardener. <laughs> I have such a love-hate relationship with Peter Tilden. Sometimes I have such an urge to call up his show and say, hey, neighbor, cut your lawn. We should be talking about this on your show. Maybe a neighbor should come on and say, My show Mr. Tilden also leaves his trash out. My show is Raccoon hot. City. You're not weaseling your way onto my show. Melissa and I would like to do is, is, Not even going. What else, by the way? Don't touch the lemonade. Oh, trust me, I'm not touching the lemonade. And by the way, you're not coming. Why should I put you on the radio show? I want to go on the radio show to convince him and kind of shame him on the air that he must trim his trees. And come on the radio show, we'll pick a date. Don't bring up the lawn again. You're a clean man. 
You don't know that. Why don't we stop talking about this? Because I'm going to blow my brains out on my lawn. Luckily, we won't see you. celebrities or people that are sort of pretend they're celebrities? I think that's a very what? loaded question since we're about to do it. So they came over and we found things, I mean, uh, you didn't know what the hell they were. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you never know what's going to come out of your closet. Some days it's a, it's a funny rubber thing. Some days it's, it's Tom Cruise. Who knows? When I was a little girl, my parents dressed me very formally. I'm really a jeans and t-shirt girl. Would you ever wear a pair of jeans? My two-piece is jeans and, and a, a hoodie. <laughs> 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 That's my, my swimming outfit. <laughs> this, I don't know if it's for this. I think, I think, there. <laughs> I think this is what this is for. Have you ever shopped on the internet? I have never shopped on the internet, and it's breaking my heart. I think my account has told everyone, don't show her how. <laughs> That's fabulous. I'll cut there. Good morning. Joan and Melissa Rivers. I've never been this excited. Yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> Peter Tilton's our neighbor and very close with our family. He's a big radio personality. Very and you're a you. wonderful neighbor. And as soon as we get our view back of the Pacific, we'll invite you over. The trees took 150 years to grow, <laughs> and they're going to stay. No, they you know not. why? You know how they say, you know what's the most important thing in real estate? It's not location, location, and location. It's Lawyer, lawyer, yeah. lawyer. You this touch is, a limb on the tree, this is not he will the way kill you. To start a, a, a nice morning. You Peter. brought up the trees. I love talking to Peter because he's funny, and he gets it, and he's smart, and he's also number one drive time. I just hate to say this, and the trees don't even block it. I hear yelling. I hear going on in the house. There seems to be a little bit of a, a you know, always attention. May I just say? Well, no, I'm more than just say. Shut up. It's always, you're always yelling there. No, I'm living there temporarily, as you know, and until I find my own place. Which will be how soon? I as mean, when? As soon as you sell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it's, saying. It's, you pay me the right price, I'm out right now. Let's negotiate right now and you can have the friggin' trees. You know, it, it, it's hard when you have a lot of people living in under one roof. But li like my family yells and we don't like each other. You really yell. I mean, I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot no. of tension over there. It's hard. It's, and it's, there are a lot of people in the house. And there's a lot of people in our house, which you know. Uh, Melissa's uh, boyfriend, I found out, is living there now. Which you know. I I knew living there. You just found that out? Yeah. Didn't tell me. The younger boyfriend. Be nice if you voted. Be, wait, <laughs> when you date, it's not going to be younger? Well, at this point, I have no choice. That's what I'm saying. So who's <laughs> the choice? But, but this isn't stuff I really want to talk about it's right fine. now. I mean, it's well, not. Here it goes. Well, here thank goes. God he's Jewish. Is that what she told you? Jason, no. isn't Zimmer, is yes, he Jewish? It's all good. Is, is he, he Jewish? Jewish? He's half Jewish. Is right. he circumcised? Yes. Why? What? Why do you get me to answer these questions? Just, why didn't you ever tell me Jason wasn't Jewish? Because it doesn't matter. I've been speaking Yiddish to him. When he's too polite to tell you he doesn't understand, well, you should appreciate like, the manners. I feel like an idiot when I say to him, I'm and he says nothing. Well, I don't know what that means either. It means good luck. Okay, see. Because I gazint? Yeah. You're perfect for Jason. <laughs> I would like to know that my daughter is going out with someone who is Jewish. It's I don't think Peter, that's... you know, it doesn't matter what I think, what I say, it means nothing. Everything I do is going to not whoa, whoa, be whoa. good enough and wrong. Is that so? As a half oh, really, Jew. What have I done right? <laughs> Every, you, you're fine. I love you. But uh, what have I'm I just, done 100% right? Just a what is one thing in my life that you can't find anything to criticize? Your mother. That's the one thing. That's <laughs> God, I said my name. Cooper. Yes, too. You, you criticize me all the time about how I'm raising Cooper. Did your mother always criticize you? That's what mothers do. I understand. Mothers nurse their children and criticize them. Nobody else will do it. I understand that, but do you think sometimes there could be a sentence it's without criticism? Like, there's good criticism and bad criticism. Good criticism is telling someone things that their friends won't tell you. And what is bad criticism? I don't know because I've never done any bad criticism in my life. Is there one thing in my life that you do not have one thing 
that you say, wow, she's doing that right? Yes. What? I think that you are bringing your son up brilliantly. There you go. See that, even with the thermometer. Set up brilliantly. But then why do you constantly tell me how to do it better? Because you could do it more brilliantly. Even though she says, oh, you're a great mother, but I would do it this way. It's like, I don't think she understands that that actually is like giving the compliment and then taking it away. I'd like to say this was fascinating. It wasn't. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. No, thank you. <laughs> Coming up on Joan and Melissa. We received a call from Perez Hilton, and he wants to meet with you. Have Perez Hilton here. Let's give him something to talk about. That's what he wants. Melissa was asked to do some... Nude modeling? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was making that up. Now you're discussing my business with people? Be aware of those around you. That's all I'm asking. So can you explain to my mom what was happening. The pole right, was leaking. Right. The pole shifted an inch and a half from side to side. Right. And there was cracks along the infinity right. pole, OK? Do that. Now, how much longer? Because let's well, just start with, it is now time to put on your ice skates. <laughs> this child has not swum at <laughs> all this summer. Well, that's the reason. When, when is this going to be, this nightmare going to be over? I haven't seen a workman out there in, in six years. But that's because. You could have had a child and he could have had a bar mitzvah that's before that pool gets okay. fixed. But that's because I don't want to redo it again. I'd rather have them triple check everything with an extra geologist than. But how long, where's the geologist coming? You is have he to high, wait for I them. Think, is, he, is he in high school? Where exactly does the tile go besides on the infinity edge? Goes on infinity, the whole back wall of the oh. infinity. And this you race. You don't want that kind of okay, tile so on the back wall. Okay, so we need to look for a different Absolutely tile. Absolutely not. Do I have to have tile on the whole back wall? Yes, because before you had stone, you had the problems. But yeah. They, well, I can't. Oh. But the stone looked beautiful. Uh, I'm sure we're not the only people that have said, I don't want a swimming pool that looks like I'm in the YMCA. Their job is to know what they're doing and to do it. And I agree with you, but I just felt like it was a little aggressive. Uh, just a little aggressive. I I'm did. not saying you were wrong, but I'm just saying, well, maybe they need it. They just hate when you're right. I think that's part of the problem. And we also received a call from Perez Hilton. What did he what say? He called, he said he loves the documentary. How nice. And he wants to meet with you. That'd be great. That'd be great. Perez Hilton is probably the biggest gossip columnist working today on the internet. He can literally make or break somebody. He can do a high tea. Yeah, because it was it say on his website, Queen of All Media? Yes. Queen, but I mean a high tea. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, clotted cream. The whole the nine whole yards. The whole nine yards. High tea is a very formal English ritual. My husband was English, and when you have somebody you really like over, you invite them for high tea. Okay. Let's do it tomorrow. We can do a high tea. This is, come on, Cooper, I'm going to show you how high teas work. My grandfather used to drink high tea. I was so excited that Perez was coming over the house. So I had them ship out my china and my silver for the high tea. Give me two round trays and then go in the back of the silver closet and find the, the big serving one. Flatware, I'm not sure about, but um, you know what the hell. Send me out cake forks. Mom, what are you doing? I'm, doing, I'm setting stuff out for the Perez Hilton thing. Why? Because Melissa, we wanted to be great, that's why. But I have my good stuff. Now, so let me call you back. Missy, it's Perez Hilton. I want this to really look fabulous. I, but I mean, Melissa, come on. I'm not, we're not gonna serve, this, this is a plate for a Russian peasant. Oh. I don't think Melissa was thrilled about that, but I just didn't want to take a chance. Look at all yes, this. Yes, I'm looking at it. It's all the good stuff you bought with was, me. But Melissa, this still has traces of Charmaine on it. <laughs> I think you're being absolutely ridiculous. I absolutely value my mother's opinion even though she thinks I don't. She doesn't. I do. Not at all. I don't feel like you value my opinion. Oh, I'm always, I always listen to what you say. Fine, not whatever, whatever. I, I'll cancel the whole thing. That's not what I'm saying. Mom. Well, I don't know what you want from me, Melissa. I just can't open my mouth about anything it seems. That's not true, Mom. Just because you once not say, that's nice, but if my tone was bad, I apologize. All right, okay, let's just drop it. Listen, send out the cups and the saucers. Oh, 
There is so much tension in our house right now. If I needed a break from it, Cooper needed a break from it. So I thought, let's go down to the beach, relax, have some lunch. So what do you think about Grandma being here? Are you enjoying it? Yes. Sort of. Why only sort of? Well, you always fight and stuff. Does it feel like we always fight? Yeah. I was shocked when Cooper brought up the fact that my mom and I were fighting so much. I'm just really concerned that you think Grandma and I have been arguing too much. Does it really feel like all the time? I mean, you obviously noticed it. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm who's right and who's wrong? You. I'm wrong? No, you're right. I've trained you so well. I can't lie and say that I wasn't happy that Cooper said that I was the one who was always right in the fights with my mom, especially because, I mean, we all know my mom bribes him. I mean, she just gives him money, writes him checks, hands him things. So I must be really right. It's just hard, though. Grandma's got really strong opinions, and she's living in our house and is used to doing things her way. Like, when we're visiting her, it's always her way, and we respect that, right? Mm-hmm. But when she's in our house, I feel like she's just kind of... kind of trying to make us do everything her way. Yeah. Obviously, we argue, and Cooper's seen that before, but if it's that much that he's saying something about it, I realize that we gotta do something. This cannot continue. You're getting big. I know. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. I've got an idea. Team building. I'm not going to do team building. Well, this is stupid. Team. Say fabulous five times like you mean it. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. 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 Hey, babe. What? Oh, there you are. What are you up to? Eating. <laughs> <laughs> The little, Hiding. Things, the little things. The little things. Truthfully, this house is out of control. There's so much tension. This isn't what I wanted. I wanted my mom to come out and for us to be a family and be supportive and for this to be a good thing. There's so much tension. I mean, everybody's unhappy. Hey. Um, what? I've got an idea. You do? Yes. Team building. Team building. Like that corporate thing, like where people have to move the log from one side of the river to the other as a group. Uh, exactly. Team building is done in a lot of corporations in America to create like a positive working environment. And that is something that this household needs. It's supposed to be building trust and bonding and unity. It's a safe place. It's exactly. You but know. maybe they can find someone who deals more like with families and can do like a one day team building thing here. It's that or we all go play paintball. Well, I'd really rather go play paintball, but I think this actually might be more productive. <laughs> this is the teapot. This is the coffee pot. I was so excited when my silver arrived from New York because I really wanted to do things right for Perez Hilton. Nobody does this in L.A. It's my mother's. How great to oh, see her. Oh, those are beautiful. And Perez will absolutely love this. How could he not? So I said, let's get a waiter. Let's do it right. And let's praise Gay, because then he'll get it. You're the waiter? Yes, I am. Have you ever done high tea? Seriously? Uh, not a high tea service, no. There are three parts to it. Go sandwiches, petty fours, scones. I'd like you to do a British accent as well. A little British accent wouldn't kill you. Can you keep that going? I will try to do my best. Okay, because if you slip halfway through, we're gonna look like Okay. Would you like me to address you as Miss Rivers? Either Miss Rivers or Your Highness. You have your choice. Okay. I prefer Your Highness. Okay. <laughs> but I think perhaps today it would be Miss Rivers. Oh, okay. And we'll go through the home menu. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Are you gay or straight? Uh, straight. Put your stuff away and we'll go through it all. Okay. I get go. the one straight waiter in LA. Throw these in. How many do you want? Where's your cup? Give me oh. ten. Give me, oh. give me four. Four? Give me five. Give me as many as you have. And let's get some hot water. Out of the gate. All right, you go get it. I'll be right there. Perez Hilton is just a big deal. He has huge readership. He has tremendous power. And uh, he's coming life. for tea. It's so much fun. Good afternoon. <laughs> you have a butler. Yes, Thank ready. Thank you. Have you ever done this Do I put it on the napkin? No. 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 On the plate. Do me first. I do you first. Well, you're really close with your mom. She lives across the street from Wait, me. Wait, so your mom's across the street? My mom's across the street. Are you serious? Yeah, but I love it. Because she's across the street. 
I just love having her so close. I wouldn't mind if she lived with me. It's a very Latino thing to have your parents with you. Right. I, I think it's great to have your parents with you. Until I get a place, I say, I'll move in here. How close are you? Yeah, I'm in my guest room. Can she hear you when you're being intimate? No, thank <laughs> God. And I can't hear her, thank God. You're being intimate with no, people? No, 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 no. You don't date much? No, there's nobody left. Are the two of you in therapy together? No. How often do you go? Very little. So we want to know everything. How did they find out to listen to you? I just got lucky that I was one of the first to really use a blog to talk about celebrities. I'd rather talk about Mel Gibson being crazy. Yeah. You must see him around here. I would run. Who lives okay. near here? There's there's, there's just a lot of people who oh, do come live on. Oh, come on. Oh, this no. is the dirt. Yes. I'm not going to say who lives yes. in the area. Oh, for God's sakes. Hillary Swank. Okay. Oh, you swing. know what? I'm gonna have to end up selling my house and moving. <laughs> Mom, can I actually talk to you in the kitchen for one yeah, second? Just, one second. Me for one don't move. second. I just said to you, please don't discuss my personal stuff at Peter, and then you go and you do it with Perez. It's like I feel like I talk and you just hear like white noise. You belong to the public. Just as they want to know about Snooky and her menstrual cycle, they want to know about yours. Why are you telling him who my neighbors my are? I've got to respect he my can, neighbor's everyone privacy. Can find, everyone can find I don't out where Harry Swank I don't care. Be aware of those around you. That's all I'm asking. Fine. Okay. Have Perez Hilton here. Let's give him something to talk about. That's what he wants. The nude pictures of you. Oh my the God. Photo no, shoot. no. Perfect. No. Perfect. Photo shoot? You ran into my shower. That's not a photo shoot. Oh, oh stop. Oh, just. Oh, put your oh, hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Oh, put your hands up. No, I don't. Did want I have to a camera? Mom, was there a picture? It's I, a photo shoot. It's not a photo shoot. Oh, I don't want you to show shoot. this. And mom, seriously, like, no. Enough. Be perfect. Enough. Don't do it. Melissa was uh, asked to do some nude modeling. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was making that up. No. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say producing TV. No, that I didn't I mean to do. Be loud. Mom, can no. I talk to you in the kitchen for a sec, <laughs> please? You right can do there. a mother-daughter nude you. thing. Thank you. So terrible. <laughs> That's so terrible. I just said to you, please don't discuss my personal stuff. And I cannot believe you told him about the topless video offer. Well, of course I had to tell him about that because I just showed him the pictures of you naked in the shower. You showed him the pictures? Mom, okay, so now my neighbor and now you're discussing my business with people? Word, I think Mom, it's very, I would be so terrible to get into Perez Hilton that it says M Melissa was asked Mom, to post. Mom, this is one of those things that we should discuss before. So if that's not something I really feel comfortable talking about, I'd really appreciate if you would at least say, can we talk about this first, okay? Thank you. My mom and I have been arguing a lot recently and I really feel like it's escalating. Bye. Bye. I feel like we cannot go two minutes without bickering. This is why it was not okay to take pictures of me. I bet the Kardashians don't fight with their mother like this. Damn it, I can't deal with this. We need to find a team builder who can take control of the situation. But we got a lot of strong personalities. I just hope we can find somebody who can handle this group. I've got some people coming to see what they have to say. Oh, someone's here. I know my mom is gonna be beyond skeptical of doing this whole team building thing. And I need to interview a bunch of people to make sure I find the right one because God knows there are a lot of quacks out there that do this kind of thing. First person we have is a communications expert. What I do is I help individuals, I help families, I help people with their communication challenges. When you have people who talk all the time, you have to listen at one point. Listen, listen, listen. The world, the way it is today, it's a lot different now with extended families, blended families. There's so many more dynamics. One of her big points is it's always important to listen. She doesn't listen at all. My brother told me one time, Melina, you talk about yourself a lot. I'm like, I do not. Well, what do you know? The next expert we met was Eli. And she's sort of a spiritual psychologist. And I know this really isn't my mom's sort of cup of tea, but what she had to say was pretty interesting. What the work is about is not talking about healing, it's about doing about it. I'm gonna implement turnaround techniques. So they're literally in the middle gonna be changing their body posture and God knows walking around going fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Kitty. Stand up, arms in the air. Okay, look up and say fabulous. And you say happy five times like you mean it. Fabulous. 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 Hi. 
Hi. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm Melissa. Hi, nice to meet you. The next candidate was an anger management expert, and well, there's a lot of anger in the house. The situation here is, it's almost like we're walking on eggshells, or at least I am, because I feel like everything is about to become a criticism. I feel mm -hmm. like nothing I do is good enough. I feel like there is absolutely no boundaries. The anger, I'm really feeling it. So I have a really fun idea to smash that anger. We are gonna take plates, we're gonna write on those plates everything that's bothering them, and then we're, they're going to smash these plates to smithereens. You don't listen to me, you don't hear me! All right. Okay. So critical. Nothing is good enough. It's not funny. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I love smashing things. My mom, however, has a history of breaking things in anger. I know that she threw a fax machine across an office. I know she threw the phone that she had ripped from her wall over the balcony of her apartment. I don't know if this is a behavior we need to be reinforcing. Come on in, sit down. Please. I'm Dr. Carol Lieberman. I was asked about team building. The issues that are here in this house are much deeper than one can do with some of these uh, team building exercises, even if I was here for a week doing them. So what, what do we call you? You can call me Dr. Carol. Dr. Dr. Carol. Carol. Can you give me a little bit of your background? Yes, first of all, I'm a psychiatrist. Um, Which means you can prescribe. Yes. So okay, if that's, all, that's, that's, if by all the way, goes to hell in a handbasket. You, <laughs> you have just jumped to the head of the top of the class. <laughs> I want to find a team builder that is gonna get us all to think and look at the big picture than all of our little narrow focuses. Honey, we're gonna be fabulous. I love you. I love you too. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. I wake up every day feeling like I'm a failure. Let me get the out of here. One hour of team building is going to require 18 years of therapy with Melissa and me. We all know that we've been having a little trouble with everybody living under one roof and a lot of bickering. And Jason suggested maybe like a team building thing. I think the team building idea is great for everybody. I mean, John and Melissa, they need it the most. Hopefully it brings some good. We can work through some stuff, some issues that are going on in the house. Mom, John, you know, I'm down. not gonna do team building. Mom, this it's is not stupid. team building. It's just a chance for all of us to kind of safely air our grievances so we all get along better. Team building is done in a lot of corporations in America to create like a positive working environment. And that is something that this household needs. I don't want to have my problems. Okay, well, the lady's coming right now. Her name is Eli. She's great. Let's just give it a try, please. This oh. is here she is. Melissa and Jason hired me today because they saw bringing Joan into the house change the dynamics. I could hear you guys <laughs> bickering outside. <laughs> and it was going down the tubes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a moment and we're all gonna think about something that makes us feel funky and we're gonna model that in our bodies. And we're gonna say funky five times like me. I don't like the team building. I didn't want to do the team building. It gives you a chance to vent and tell somebody how much you hate them. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Ready? Funky. 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 I don't trust anybody, I'm sorry, that thinks they can come in and fix your life. You usually find the psychiatrist is the one whose wife is cheating and he's going to jump off the ledge. OK, everyone, stand up. Arms in the air like the Y of the YMCA and say fabulous five times like you mean it. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. 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 <laughs> Funky to fabulous. That's Eli's philosophy. Just to start with, I don't like philosophies that involve arm gestures. Yay! We just used the power of the body-mind connection, so now we can sit down. So what do you say when you're feeling lousy, stand up and go fabulous five times, makes you feel better? Yes. Eli said that apparently by saying funky to fabulous, you'll feel better. I wish you were saying fat to thin. Let's go with something that would help me. I don't need funky to fabulous, I need fat to thin. Old to young. I'll give her things that count. If funky to fabulous, who gives a I scream therapy. Or I'm really upset, really things are just awful. I just go into a room and I go, ah! 
and it all comes out of me. So oh. that's the same thing as fabulous, isn't it? Exactly. That never... makes your body come up and open yeah. rather than closed and screaming. And you have more oxygen in your brain, and where you direct your eyes, it opens up your chest. What are we talking about? This is just stupid. And Melissa bought, it. Melissa drank the Kool Aid. <laughs> Beautiful. We're now going to do more of team building with role playing. The first activity we did was a role playing where we all had to dress up as sort of the character of the roles we play in the house. Every person in the group plays a role. What we're doing is we're acting out the way people see us. I see you as earthy. You think everybody is wonderful. You think the world is wonderful. Sometimes You're a right good back. person. Next. Who in the group is the clown? Lynn. Lynn. Who is the ringmaster? Sabrina. Who is the nerd? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's Conrad. Who here is the person that the house has made the devil, the evil person? That would be her. The devil hat on me? On me? I thought they were going to put the clown hat or the, the, the laurel wreath, a little fair. Uh, the, the, the devil? All of them? Nobody said mistake? Very upsetting. And so who here would be the little girl? You're my little girl. You need to treat me a little bit like a child. And that leaves Jason. Jason, Jason often feels like he can't say what he needs to say. I had no idea that Jason had a problem with me. I mean, he should have come to me and said, I have a problem with you. It shouldn't be done in front of six people and a woman who is waiting for her check. The things that you say sometimes come off harsh. Right. And the way that it affects the rest of this household is not very conducive to having a loving environment. Right. And that's when I have the problem. And I get that. In New York, you say you, you do it, you get on with it, and life is good. California, how do we really feel? And what you find out is, Everybody hates everybody. Before you were here, that was a very harmonious environment. I don't know what I'm doing and it's so terrible. Am I supposed to say nothing when your curtains aren't hanging no, right? No, but Am mom, I supposed to say nothing? But no, but mom, it's everything. But you take everything so personally. But I don't. It's at one point, though, you hit saturation, where it's what, like... What have I said lately that really upset you? Give me an example. Give me an example. Anything you see, you say. Like, it's I, look at this, the tiniest little You know, dust you really here. annoy me. You don't work. You've lived here for two years. You go in the refrigerator. You take things out. You don't wash your hands. I really don't want to hear from you, no, Conrad. But that's a you know what? F you, Joan. I do work. I do contribute. And you are really out of line on this. Time out. The more specific you can be with your mom about something very specifically that she done. said that really hurt your feelings, the deeper we can go and the more we can actually turn this around. I'm really worried about Joan and Melissa. I mean, all I hear is constant fighting. I don't want Cooper to walk in the middle of it and constantly just hear the F-bomb being dropped. One day you guys were having a conversation and you were like, oh, I'm tired, da 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 da, I've been doing work all day. And you were like, oh, please, don't give me that. Like, you just went out and worked out and did return three emails in a day. And like, she comes upstairs near tears. Maybe it was the wrong day to say to me how tired you were when I had flown back and forth to the East Coast and had three hours sleep and got up and worked all day. It's like I can't even express how I, f that, that I'm tired. Okay, and I'm sorry. Fantastic. So did you really hear your mom say she was sorry? No. Well, I don't think she really I didn't really it. mean it. <laughs> I know, she says I'm sorry to change the subject. Okay, so, but I don't dwell. If something is wrong, Fine, it's but done, the thing is you move ahead. Right. I don't want to discuss this for the next 26 weeks. Sometimes, even though we're all sort of trained to accept that my mom says things she doesn't always mean, sometimes they just cross the line into cutting enough that it's hard for the rest of us to just write it off to, she doesn't really mean what she's saying. Do you see how the, the conversation is getting more honest? As we get more real and authentic, what yeah. we're gonna do is we're probably gonna get, it's gonna get ugly because it's often- It's gonna get ugly. I don't like the team building. I didn't wanna do the team building and it's exactly turning to what I thought would happen. It's going from bad to worse. I walk in every day stealing myself for what fresh hell am I about to walk into? That's what have good. I done now 
or what am I going to say that is going to elicit a reaction that's going to be hurtful? I can't even walk in my kitchen and say I'm tired. Got it. So, so I should me, move out of here. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what this is about. This is about learning. Do you think I'm happy here? Do you no, think I'm I happy don't. in one room? No, I am so sensitive and hyper aware and only want you to be happy and want you to be proud of me and want you to respect what I do and the life that I've created. Please. I'm letting you finish. Without making a face. I'm beginning to feel this emotion building up inside of me and I am not feeling like I can control it and I know this is not gonna be good. I wake up every day feeling like I'm a failure because I can't come down my stairs and not be scared to walk into the kitchen and hear that there's something else, even if it's a minor thing to you, isn't good enough. Please let I'm me finish. I'm letting you finish, then I have to answer. And I love you, and I know you're miserable here, and I am jumping through hoops to make you happy. But I can't even walk in and say I'm tired without getting a verbal backhand when I'm working till 2 a.m. with three different shows, but I'm keeping it from you because you worry that I'm tired, and I'm doing this to help make our shows run smoothly so I can be not necessarily like daddy, but that's my role, that you just have to walk in and be funny. And I can't even take two hours for myself without feeling like I failed. And I know you don't always mean what you say, but sometimes it cuts. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Everything I say, Melissa, but it's not you take true. as negative. That, but Mom, How many times in one day can I say, you're brilliant, you're you don't, beautiful. You don't say oh, it to Melissa, me, Mom. I have, I, you don't. So, this is such California bull I can feel the explosion. It's this giant wave, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. And I'm terrified. I know how hard it is for you to be here, but I think it's okay for me on a Sunday morning to take three hours off and go surfing with my son. And then who I'm, says no? I'm just using Melissa, this. Melissa, no. you, no, no, now let me say something. Wait, wait, wait. Now let me say so something. Wait. You, everything, wait, so no, minute, no. I, I, I find this absolutely insane. Damn right, I say, you look tired, because you look tired. Who was the first one to say to you, but take then, time for your boyfriend, right, but take but time mom, for your then son. why when I walked in and say I'm tired, you go, what did you do today? You played tennis, you have no right to be tired. Because that's all I thought you did but all day. Why? But I shouldn't have to sit there and hand you my itinerary and listen. Fine, I should be able to listen. walk into my kitchen and say I'm tired. Fine, okay. Listen, I shouldn't be in your kitchen. Everything I say, Melissa, but it's not you take true. as negative. That, but Mom, How many times in one day can I say, you're brilliant, you're you don't. beautiful. You don't say oh, it to Melissa, me, Mom. I have, I, you don't. Sabrina, she how does. many times do I say, you look great, she you does. are marvelous and that. This team building is getting out of control. My heart aches for both Joan and Melissa. You know, Melissa, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know See, what I you want from win. me. But I don't so, know what you want from me. I it is not it. a day that doesn't go by that I don't say Melissa is smart, beautiful, bright, perfect, terrific, wonderful. I love you and I respect you. I still every day wake up and worry and try and take care but of you. But that's what mothers and daughters do. I understand that. But what do you want me to do? Sit here and be your sh your, your whipping post? No, but you're not. You never say anything nice about me, but mother. But you're not my you're whipping You come post. in and you're criticizing mother but and everything you, you do, you make the house. You have just said, in essence, um, I can't do anything to please you. Let me get the out of here. Yeah, One hour of team building is gonna require 18 years of therapy with Melissa and me. Time out. So one of the things that's happening is, uh, is that everybody like is sitting here like this is true. No, we all have something to say. So, this is a train wreck. So Lynn, this time it's I'm speaking. This is a train wreck. So it well, sounds you like earlier. your daughter isn't hearing what you exactly. actually want to give her. If we could have like foreign subtitles under everything both of you are saying, what you are really saying is, I love you. No, I'm not. I'm saying that I have a duty to her as a mother. A duty? I, of course, the minute you have a child, there's a, a duty. duty. You're damn right. I can't, I don't even have the words. I don't have the words. I don't know what that was about. I didn't think we were in such dire trouble that we needed to come in and do this group play. This is, this is 
such California bull It got so tense with Melissa, and Melissa is so upset. I've got to find my own place. All right. I'm going downstairs. It, it was insane. Melissa went upstairs. Joan went to her room. My entire world as I know it is a friggin' wreck. It's OK, babe. I've ruined everything. You haven't ruined everything. You haven't done anything wrong. I am confused. I, The whole group turned on me. It, it was awful. It was just awful. I just didn't think it was going to get that deep. Nobody did. No. I mean, it's like, you know, she said she does love you. She does care for you. And you said the same thing about her. I mean, for God's sake, she sold her place in New York to come out here to be closer to us. You know? And it's like, for God's sakes, you know, you let her live here with you. I with just us. feel like I've blown everything. No, no, no. She is living with us. She was supposed to build a team? You just blew the team out of the water. I am so upset I had to talk to somebody. What's going on? I had a fight with Melissa. I mean, uh, it could have been on pay TV. It was so bad. Why? What well, happened? She went crazy. What the hell are you still doing living in her house with her after all these weeks? I'm coming back to New York. I'm already back. I'll see you in New York. I'll call you when I land. I just didn't think it was really going to get that deep. And no, I, didn't I didn't want so to. And, you know, I feel like, you know, I think my mom's hurt and I know I'm hurt. I'm just really bummed out. I know. I'm just a little drained by the whole thing. More than a little drained by the whole thing. I know, babe. It's okay. Next time on Joan and Melissa, would you just tell Melissa that I love her, but I just think it's time for a little break. Whoa! I'm so home. Has anyone seen the apartment? Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda are coming in a couple of hours to see. I can't go. I'm doing Letterman today. Oh, oh, Joan, how you. are you? How do they treat you out there? We had a big argument, and I came back. Who doesn't fight with their mother? <laughs> Thank you. All the more reason to maybe stay in New York. Yeah. <laughs> She didn't call. She didn't call. No. Okay. Previously on Joan and Melissa. <laughs> oh, put your hand up! Oh, oh, yeah. Since my mom's been at my house, it hasn't exactly been smooth sailing. What the is going on? Where's my stuff? I thought you would love it. You don't bring someone looking like that into the house. Damn it! I can't deal with this. I've got an idea. You do. Team building. So we talked before yes. that there's been a lot of anger. They brought in this big team builder and all she did was blow us all out of the water. I wake up every day feeling like I'm a failure. Let me get the out of here. One hour of team building is gonna require 18 years of therapy with Melissa and me. I think I've ruined everything. You have. You haven't ruined everything. I don't think that way. My mother and I have to go judge a drag show for charity. She won't look at me. She won't talk to me. I mean, this is absolute crazy time. If it were up to me, I would be on a plane right now. I'd be flapping my underarms and just going like a bird but we have this commitment tonight. Melissa and I tonight together have to host this, this drag show. So I am staying because we promised them and it's for charity and everybody's coming and then I'm gonna get the hell out of here first thing tomorrow morning. before we do an event or work, we at least go over what's gonna go on and the protocol and how it's gonna go. We drove to and from the event in separate cars. I mean, could this get any more absurd? I'll tell you the most difficult thing about show business. When you're feeling terrible, you're angry at your partner, you can't let the audience know. They are there to have fun and that's your job, but boy oh boy is it difficult. 
my mom just simply won't even acknowledge me. I mean, you would think with a thousand screaming gay men, she would be thrilled and she won't talk to me. She won't look at me. These are the so Jones. We're, we're holding down the red carpet <laughs> for you, sweetie. How are you? Mwah, and mwah, and that's beautiful. Hello, hello. hello. Joan Rivers impersonators mwah. always make me laugh, but they never look like me. And they're so proud, and they think, don't I look like you? And you want to go, no. Every time I cut my hair, I feel <laughs> terrible, because I know all over America, people have to buy new wigs. New wigs. Yeah. Let's start the show. Let's go. 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 On that stage, it was the first time probably in my entire career, I just, I knew if I said one word, I'd start to cry. Our first one is Cha-Cha. <laughs> Our next finalist is Morgan. Yeah. Holiday. Holiday. This has never happened to me before. I literally had to say to myself, smile. It was a forced smile. And I kept saying to myself, you're a professional. The show must go on, but I couldn't talk. At this point, our judges are going to ask a question of our girls. Are you ready, judges, with your questions? We're on stage judging this pageant, and my mom still won't talk to me and still won't look at me. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to work like this. I feel like I'm being thrown under a bus. Who would make a prettier woman? Johnny Depp, Brad Pitt, or Rosie O'Donnell? <laughs> well, I don't know about Rosie. Um, she could change my oil, but I'm not sure it makes you crack me. Please discuss the impending nuclear buildup in the Far East and what disarmament would mean to the free world. You know what, I read the National Enquirer every day. <laughs> Our big winner, a woman, man, lovely Victoria Beckham gone to war, is Morgan McMichael. I just think we have to get space between us. There's no question. Thank God. I have to go to New York anyhow to do the Letterman show, so I'm just leaving a little early out. And I'll be back, maybe. Oh, I can't leave without saying goodbye. Too many things happen in life. You don't walk ever away from someone you love without saying goodbye. Uh, would you just tell Melissa that no matter what's happened, that I love her, but I just think uh, it's time for a little break. Mom, I'm right here. You can look at me and I tell me. I can't look at you, Melissa. Things are said, and uh, it's not enough to say I'm sorry sometimes. But that's it's just not I... enough to say sometimes well, Mom, I'm sorry. Mom, that's what I'm trying to say. And I'm just going to go to New York, and I'm going to do the Letterman show, and I'm gonna see my other dogs, and we'll see. If the plane crashes, my good pearls are hidden away Mom, behind so my sweat. Mom, funny. I'm not making a joke. I couldn't buy my mother's stuff for three weeks. How was the flight? The flight was fine. I had a snorer next to me. Oh, but I was, better okay. than a scratcher. Ugh, ugh, ugh. We have the call with Letterman with the producers. Has anyone seen the apartment? Well, Gaddafi's folks, they said they wanted to come back for a second viewing. <laughs> I know. I don't Did know you what... tell them I don't want money with blood on it? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I love my New York apartment, but it's been up for sale now three months and it's hurting me. I've had no offers on it. Valentino, did he like it? No. He didn't like it? Did not. Didn't like not it? A, not at all. 
Valentino Valent did not like. I wear his clothes. Oh, All right. Boo him. Okay. Okay. You had Amy call yeah. as well yeah. to tell you that Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda. Uh, Cotby are interested. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, what so do they want to say? They, are they coming in a couple of hours to see us? What are you talking about? They, they can't come. I'm doing Letterman today. No, but they're going to come before that. Graham, I can't. She just called. Oh, to Jesus. see the place. Oh, God. All right. Well, then. Uh, but all they right. didn't. Oh, I hate yeah, they didn't want. Graham, my assistant, said Kathy Lee is coming to see the apartment. I am so excited because she's got the style, she's got the money, uh, and she'll get it. It's a very New York apartment. Hey, the apartment okay. looks so empty. Right. Get every light on. What time are they coming? Sometime after 1 o'clock. Where are the pictures for the piano? All the pictures are over here. Here we go. These are all dead people. This is not good. Dead. 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 Live, thank God. Maybe we should just do like a dead section. Get me celebrities' pictures. Uh, Any other celebrities? Well, Prince Charles. Prince Charles in front. That should get me an extra 100,000. Flowers, flowers. OK, I'm going for flowers. Flowers, uh, son of a bitch. Ah, uh, umbrella under, umbrella up. OK. Has Melissa called? I haven't heard from her, no. All the excitement going on here with Kathy Lee coming over to see the apartment and getting ready for Letterman. There is one thing on my mind. Melissa, is she gonna call? Is she gonna call? Should I call her? I just don't know what to do. Good morning. Hi, babe. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Can you believe my mom is doing Letterman tonight? It's great. I think she'll have a blast. When was the last time she was there? Can't remember. Right? Ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago. It's a big deal. Yep. Do you think she's going to change her mind about moving out here? Everyone needs some space and time to cool off. I hope not, but you know, right now, I, I don't know, and I just can't think about it this early in the morning. Love Grandma. I miss her. We all do. Cooper has really been enjoying having his grandmother here full time. And he's concerned that it's gonna go back to the way it was. And he misses her and he really wants her here. And he's he's anxious to find out if she's coming back. You need to call her. They just can't sit like this. I know. And I'm not saying you have to call her now. You still have every right to be upset. I mean, I'm not exactly thrilled either, but it's just family. I know. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Kathy Lee and Hoda are here. They're down here. The price is negotiable. <laughs> are you going to say what the price is? I would no. like 25 million. Orchids. Orchids. Orchids like no, this? No, an so, a plant. You got a rag? Like a plant, yeah. Can I borrow no it? Plan. No plans? Uh, give me a plant. Give me an ice cream plant. One of these guys. Give me that. That's good. This will have to be. OK. We gotta get the apartment pulled together. I have to have my hair and makeup totally redone. Sure. This is gonna be someday. Yep. Oh, Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. <laughs> You're getting wet. This is what I love about New York. You walk outside and people say hello to you. It's just great energy. Okay. All right, you have 20 minutes uh, oh. until your call. All right. Hello? I need vases. Mr. Stern is here. Hello, sir. Hi. Come in. Come in. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. And Mrs. showing the apartment and getting ready for Letterman, I wanted to see Margie. Margie is the kind of friend that you say, help, I'm in trouble. She's there. Kathy Lee Gifford is coming to look at the apartment. I got to do Letterman. And here, hold this. Put this in the library on the coffee table. I'll bring some more in. I need your help. OK. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah. I had a fight yeah. with Melissa. I Why? flew it. I, oh, don't ask. Calm I, down. I, You're going to be good. You're, uh, everything is good. So glad to be back in New York. You are? Oh. You're going to stay, right? I don't know. I don't, really? I don't think she I don't think she wants. I think everything I do is wrong. Everything. Well, welcome to the world of mothers and daughters. You're in the way. You're in the way. You should come back to New York. OK. Perfect. What do you think? Perfect. It looks gorgeous. But Kathy Lee Gifford, that's gorgeous. Yeah, they haven't got such nice flowers right. she's, on the she's Today Show. Yeah. That dog is sweet. Yeah, this dog. You would never argue with me, would you? Because you know I'm right. Don't stay there. I don't know. Honestly, I hate to say that. You know, Because my I, kids live there, too. But uh, uh, it's just not for you. I love being with her. I love I know, but the family I thing, but I don't know. 
your life is limited there. You're never going to stay there. I, meanwhile, she hasn't called, so I don't think I have... She'll you know, I walked you. out, I said, that's She'll it, I'm going. You. I should call her, really. She's very connected to you. And I'm very connected to and her. And you're connected to her. I stormed out. It's going to blow over. Oh, hey, Mel. Mel, you got, you got a second? Yeah, yeah. That fight, the fight was pretty gnarly. Yeah. Like, no joke. That kind of freaked me out a little. Yep. Uh, it was a doozy. Do you, do you think she's going to come back after that, honestly? I honestly don't know. I don't... I'm so fried, I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, Thanks. And thank you for being there for me. I know just, you, I'm sorry about all no, that. No, but I know you took a bullet for me in that one, and... I, I, just, I, got, I got a feeling she doesn't come back. Honestly, I have no idea at this point. Oh, looks good. Cassie, Lee, and Hoda are here. They're downstairs and are on their way up. Okay, all right. Um, I'll okay. let Kevin know. Yeah, let him come up. What's killing me is Kathy Lee is showing up on the same day I'm doing Letterman. So I'm so ripped apart. I want her to see the apartment, but I've got to get ready for the show. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Nice you came. How are you? Oh, oh, nice to how are you? It's so good. You. It's so yeah. great you came. Yeah. Oh, you hear so much about yeah, I'm not, I haven't so been here for a long time. Yeah, I've been away in California. So excuse the way it looks. My friend Amy has complete access to my apartment. She can show it to anybody because she's a brilliant salesperson. Let me just tell you very briefly, it was a ballroom, it was one room. It's very unusual, we got five fireplaces. It was J.P. Morgan's daughter's house. And this is the ballroom and the bedrooms, which you'll see were where the orchestra changed and did all that kind of stuff. Look around, if you well, need me, amazing, I won't Joe. be here. So you're comfortable with me just walking them around, right? I, yeah, okay. okay, all right. Even those Hoda shop lifts? Stop Even those, it! Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I see she's in a thin yeah, dress. Yeah, come in here, come she, left, she left a very large purse in the underwear, it, you know what I'm saying? I made her do it, because I know the woman. Is it, take it's what you want, I'm insured. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, okay. <laughs> right, I'm not Thank here. You, Joan. Feel so, free to do whatever you want. I just want to say one more thing. <laughs> I know you're listening. No, no, no. The price is negotiable. Are you going to say what the price is? Or do you have to go to Southern I would like 25 million. It's three levels. Yeah. And uh, there's a private apartment for somebody else to come in. Elevator comes right into Elevator it. Elevator comes right into and it. And you've owned it for 20 years. I've owned it for 20 years. And uh, it's an amazing building because there are only five other couples in the building. And right. did they all get along? Mm. Uh, well enough. <laughs> I mean, it's like the UN. Good enough, good enough. <laughs> if we do the microfiber, a good way to differentiate on your lines mm -hmm. is this hem detail. Look how right. cute that is. I teamed up with Jen Adams to create a set of bed linens out of these amazing new fabrics. It's so overwhelming that we got this meeting with Thomas. He runs a billion dollar company. The fact that he is flying in. It's huge. It's huge. Jennifer and I have a meeting with the CEO of a huge retailer who specializes in sheets and towels and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, that would be a great place to launch our product. My mom and I aren't talking right now, and this is one of those times where I'd love to bounce some ideas off her and really just go over the art of the sale. I mean, let's face it, my mom is the most amazing saleswoman. How far along have you got? The fabric that we have, you can feel it. Did and the beauty. It's 100% cotton? It, no, it's not. No, it's microfiber. It's microfiber. Yeah, it's a good handle. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I mean, I put this next to my very good sheets, and yeah. this is softer. Right. I'm sitting in the meeting, and my mind's wandering, and I'm thinking about my mother. What have you got for me that's special? Different bring me and the the Rivers brand, which, thanks to my mother, is known for style, quality, value. Oh, I'm like, I'm trying to focus. I gotta stay focused. I have to stay in this. And all I'm doing is sitting kind of like, God, I wish I could call my mom and talk to her about what's gonna happen in the meeting rather than staying mentally in the meeting. Are you interested enough that we should continue the conversation? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I think my cage maybe got a little rattled, 
but after all those years working live on the red carpet, I'm pretty good at faking it. Well, what do you think? Um, I'm not gonna say it was a home run. <laughs> You know, they didn't show us the door and say, thank you, we'll call you. <laughs> Don't call us. Exactly. Yay. Fantastic. Let's get going. So this room, it, it looks so beautiful and everything, but it transforms into, you can have like 40 people for dinner. I told them I was going upstairs, but I can't stay away. I'm going to sneak around and listen to what these two say. And these are my friends. I can just imagine at night when it's candlelit oh, and, and the lights and are beautiful. It's, beautiful. it's very it elegant. Feel... To me, it feels more like a hotel or some right. grand room. Right, right, right. You just said that this place like a hotel. What? Charlie Sheen has never come in here and locked a naked hooker in my bathroom. Never. Do you know what? It's a lot like Joan herself. I mean, she there's a lot going on all the time with Joan. Right. And there's a lot going on in here. My apartment in New York is an amazing apartment. It's very quirky. It was an old ballroom that I divided up. So it's not for everybody. It was a private house owned by J.P. Morgan's daughter. He had three daughters. And I think the favorite one owned my apartment. Um, and she's still there. She haunts it. You know what it reminded me of first? The Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. Catherine the Great, the one that, that died with the horse. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hello. What was good enough for the Empress of Russia is good enough for the Jewess of New York. My favorite thing is this balcony. Okay, well, this is worth $25 million. This is crazy, beautiful. So this is charming. So, <laughs> she's so crazy. I just thought you might want to see the dining room. That's all. I'm not here. I think Kathy Lee is interested, but I think they're also snooping a little, like in the medicine cabinets. I always do that. First thing I do, go in the bathroom, gotta pee. Then you look in the medicine cabinet and you see all the prescriptions. Aha. She's not so happy naturally. This is a very casual dining room. It's oh small. Oh. Where's I'm talking to you like an idiot. She's like, where's Waldo? She's everywhere. Anyway, I'm so right, glad you're trusting you. me with a tour. Let me take them upstairs to your bedroom. And can you leave us for five minutes? Yes. Okay. You want to do the kitchen first. Where would you kitchen. rather me do I'd rather okay. you show them the kitchen. All right, so the kitchen is very way. cozy. Right, yeah, you, you Before mentioned Before I that. take you into the kitchen, Cozy. listen, don't be judgmental about the kitchen because pe judgmental. if you do buy Kathy Lee, they can open this part up. Judgmental. She's supposed to be my friend. Judgmental. Look, this is the whole kitchen. See, I think for $25 million, somebody's going to so, want a so little bigger a little kitchen. Bit of How can anybody not like this place? Look at this place. This place is amazing. Look at the ceilings. The 24-foot ceilings. That's real gold beefing on the walls. It's an amazing place, amazing place. This is really secret. This is where the orchestra played. Amazing. Oh, I I mean, it's an apartment well, to entertain in. That's what this is all about. This is my whole bed. It's beautiful. It's, it's, oh, it's cozy. It's beautiful. a party, right? Oh. Sit on the bed and look at the view. All right. We'll see you in two minutes. I feel how comfortable the bed is because it's so oh, but feminine. Look at the view. She's so, oh, oh, my God. Isn't oh. it unbelievable? Are you wearing underwear? I don't know, but how many people oh. have slept in this bed? Oh, I'm coming up. Oh, how oh, would I oh. finally got you wearing a walk <laughs> Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Excuse me, Joan? Yeah, yeah. That's the late show calling for you. Okay. Be a folk. Thank you. You're welcome. I must be white hot for them to actually pick up a phone and call me. <laughs> Lower your miniskirt, your breasts are showing. <laughs> Kathy Lee has got the style, she's got the money, uh, and she'll get it. It's a very New York apartment. Joan, has any man ever complained uh, that it's just so girly girl in here? I think they should always feel they're coming into the boudoir. Mm -hmm. Of a courtesan. Yes. I'm, uh -huh. you know, then you shouldn't sit in bed with, you know, like a, a sweatpants yeah. and socks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Welcome. No, no, how many men have you had in here? Uh, let me count the notches. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, uh, you know what? You're such a survivor, Joni. Mm -hmm. And it's so much you're, and, fun. And you're, you're the type of person that makes yourself happy wherever you go because you don't expect anything of the world. You I go think, in right. and you and have no you, entitlement do attitude. You, mm -hmm. Do you? No, I feel do like you? we're supposed to, no, if we're blessed, we're supposed to be a like, blessing. Yeah. I just got back from California last week. and, and Could you live there? I, want, I would love to. She but could. But one second, thing you are second. very aware of when you're out there is that everybody is younger than you are, everybody's thinner than you are, everybody is driving a better car than you are, 
and every and let everybody let you know exactly where you are in the business. Mm -hmm. it's, they're very different. I think the people are just very different also. I think they'd be very welcoming to you though because to I Joan, mean, yes. I think, yeah. Trust me. I have been taken in Spago the wrong way so often I've eaten in the kitchen twice. <laughs> <laughs> How do they treat you out there in LA? N uh, now. Truly? Now, yeah. Truly? Yeah. Uh, second class. You're really? kidding. B, B, no Surprised. question about it. Wow. So you're an A in New York. You're an A in New York. I'm an A in New York. All the more reason to maybe stay in New York. Yeah. But Melissa, I miss, we had a big argument and I came back. Well, well, it is what who it is. doesn't fight with their mother? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, there isn't, there's tension between mothers and daughters. Mm -hmm. Not, never a lack of love. Yeah. I'm sitting on the bed laughing and carrying on with Kathy and Hoda, but I am missing Melissa so desperately, and I, I am hoping she's missing me too. I can't find the wax. I think it's in that bag. Let me check. X's and O's, X's and O's. Or stripes. Or stripes. Thank you for doing my board, love. Mm -hmm. Can you make sure you get some on the rails towards the center? Yes, yes I will. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. With everything that's been happening with my mom, I really needed to take a break. And I needed to get in the water. I love to surf, I love being in the ocean. It's very healing for me. And I love more than anything going with Cooper, who is just a fantastic surfer. I'm always so impressed with him. As a parent, it's my job to teach Cooper that life isn't always as planned and that sometimes people fight. It's fun when you learn. Yeah, well, you know, when people love each other, it's okay to argue. Mm -hmm. Because underneath it all, you love each other, so you know you're gonna make up. I mean, it's lousy while it's going on, but yeah. it's all gonna be okay. Should be back. You know what? Maybe Grandma's on the boat spying on us. Scary. That'd be funny, I'm just scaring you. Grandma's not spying. Excuse me, Joan. Yeah, yeah. That's the late show calling for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Before going on The Letterman Show, I went over all the jokes that I wanted to say with his producer. There were no surprises on any of these shows. I love Twitter. If Twitter had been around, the world would have been different. Different, different. You know, this is Amelia Earhart, where the hell am I? Or, hi, I'm Mama Cass, should I eat this sandwich? My history in late night's kind of interesting. Um, I worked seven years in little clubs in Greenwich Village and nobody cared. I went one night on The Carson Show. First night on, Johnny Carson said, you're gonna be a star. And from then on, I was the darling of late night. I was on The Carson Show for years. I was guest host, the first woman ever to guest host. I try to be up to date, I try to look hip. Tonight, I was gonna get a nipple ring to wear out on the show, but I took it out because I kept tripping over it. I went from The Carson Show over to The Fox Show, first woman ever to have a late night television talk show. And Carson was so angry with me that he never used me again and none of his graduates ever used me again. So for the Letterman people to find my phone number and call me up and beg me to come on, I must be quite hot in the business. <laughs> it's very hard to get old. It's nice to be recognized, you know, because all my friends, I don't want to mention names, are like, uh, I like Goldie Hawn, she comes up to me, would you believe I have a grown-up daughter? And you want to say, yes. <laughs> Who are we kidding? And lower your miniskirt, your breasts are showing. I mean. <laughs> so that might be good. That's sort of what I have to talk about. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye. 
It went well. I read her the jokes, and she did what every good uh, producer does. She laughed at every joke, and she's going to put it all in order, and she's going to send me now uh, back. She's going to fax me back uh, what she thinks we're going to talk about, and I'll bet you none of this will be in there. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. You be let him and say, hello, nice to meet you. Oh. Hello, Mr. It's nice to meet you. Nice, okay. You didn't have me back for 20 years, so f you. Did you come on the red eye? I came in on the red eye. Mm -hmm. I had a terrible fight with Melissa before I arrived. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go back. I don't know what I want to do. I do know that... It's very nice to be back in New York, I'll tell you the truth. I feel so out of place there. My clothes are wrong. Hate the room I'm living in. And I can't find a place. Everything is so California. It's just not New York. And I feel very out of place. And God bless Melissa, you know, but it's very hard to women living in the same house. Really, and a lot of things were said that shouldn't be said. Oh. Yeah. I still have not heard from Melissa, and it's been a full day here. And I've kept the phone lines open, and I am very upset. It's a long time since I've done Letterman. Twice in 20 years, I've been on the Letterman show. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm only going on because all that buzz mm -hmm. around documentary. I know exactly why Letterman booked me, because my documentary is the number one money-making documentary in America. So now let me ask you. You be Letterman, say, hello, nice to meet you. Just say hello. Hello, Mr. It's nice to meet you. Nice. Me. Okay. Nice to see you again. You know, it's been uh, twice in 20 years you had on, so I just really wanted to come back to prove that I could be on. So, <laughs> you, and get up and walk out. <laughs> get up, say thank you. It's been 20 years. You didn't have me back for, uh, twice in 20 years. So, I, by the time you call me up again, it's, I'm going to be 107 years old or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think people really understand what a big deal this is. My mother, the whole time I was growing up, was the queen of late night. And when she had the falling out with The Tonight Show, and then the Fox show didn't go so well, and my dad passed away, suddenly she almost became, you know, blackballed or a pariah. I mean, no one would have her in late night. It was horrible. So for her, to go back on Letterman, it's a huge deal professionally, but it's really a huge deal personally. The other thing, just a quiet <laughs> you. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of Eggie's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna sprinkle them on the chair and on Letterman. When I touch him, I'm gonna put a little Eggie's ashes on him. Melissa never wanted Edgar's ashes scattered. So they've just come around the world with me. And I started collecting little bags of friends' ashes about 10 years ago because I love to have them close to me. And eventually when I die and I'm cremated, I want them mixed in with me. And the families are delighted to give you this. They don't like it when you ask for something like, can I have Harry's old hand? Or would you mind if I get a knee? They get offended, but they're happy to give you ashes. Is he gonna know that you're doing no. that? No. Well, then what's, what good is it, it if it's he doesn't just know? It just makes me feel good. I wouldn't <laughs> let me on since Edgar died. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I'm on, and so is Edgar. My late husband, Edgar, was really always there for me. Uh, from the minute I was on late night, I met him after my first shot on the Johnny Carson show. Johnny Carson introduced us. And so um, late night is always connected in my head with Edgar, and he was there with me when. I did the Fox show, he executive produced it, and then uh, we both were fired from Fox. You think that's stupid? Do you think, uh, I just want to do it so bad. <laughs> I don't think you should know. Do you have a small plastic bag? How um, about compact? That's very small. Oh, powder, yeah. If we could empty this out, <laughs> let me go get Edgar and put him in now, okay. You're really gonna do yes, it? Yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'll, just don't lose this. Don't let it get wet, all right. It's all the surprises. All right, hold on, let me go get Edgar. Where's my bag? Make sure you bring enough to sprinkle it all over. Hang on, all right, let's just see if it's <clears throat> This is so smart of you, okay, hold on. All right, just see, he may be heavier than this, hold on. They're in there? Yeah. 
Somebody I think this is going to sprinkle through. Let's just try it over here. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. This is good because <laughs> I pull that out, then I can sprinkle him, really sprinkle him. Okay. Is that really? Him? Yes. Stop it. Really? Again, who else would it be? <sighs> Adele. That should be enough. Okay. I just oh, that's plenty. That's great. Okay. All right. I am sprinkling Edgar tonight without them knowing it on the Letterman show. On the set. On the set. All right. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And Adele, this is now in your hands. We forget Edgar's ashes. You'll be in another compact by next week. <laughs> Edgar is now going on, which is so good. If we're going back on late night, Edgar deserves to go back on late night with me. You want to pass me, Edgar? Give me Edgar, and then you can start testing me. Okay. Uh, hands up, okay. I'm just gonna carry him on with my Altoids. Okay. Where does he want to start? All right, he's gonna start with whenever you're here, you're always involved in controversy. I'm always involved in controversy. What's okay. happened? Yes, I am. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just me. Uh, on my Twitter this week, right? Yep. Uh, I did the stupid joke about Lindsay Lohan. I said, uh, Lindsay Lohan is on a new liquid diet. It's 80 proof. Well. This, I don't know, this man, this woman, I don't know who, somebody that was her lover, started writing about me, and uh, so I looked this person up, and it was either a girl or a really ugly boy. I mean, even Michael Jackson would say, pass on this one. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that, but we'll try. Okay. Right. What I always do before a talk show is I have my assistant pretend to be the host and ask me questions so that I can run through my jokes. May I ask how old you are? I'm 77. Look, they're applauding. You know what people applaud when you say you're old? Because I hope you'll die from the sound and I'll get your apartments. <laughs> I, death is all around me, David. I mean, my friends are dying. I hope I die like my grandfather did quietly in, in his sleep, not like the other people in the car with him. <laughs> Let's find out to, uh, how much time they're giving me. Because mm -hmm. the clip I know is a long clip. It's the joke clip. It's the joke clip. Okay. I don't even know who I am, what I am, what number I am on the bill. You know, all that kind of right. stuff. Right. Well, First guess, second guess, you don't know where you are. Right. Okay. Let me ask. Now, this is exciting. Let me tell you why. Because the Letterman show was shot in the Ed Sullivan Theater. And I did 41 Sullivan shots. Going into the stage door now of the Ed Sullivan Theater will just flood me with memories. My first appearance on Ed Sullivan was a mistake. Uh, Ed Sullivan was getting a little dotty at that point, and the agents had been pushing Johnny Rivers, the guitarist. So he goes on stage, on camera, and he says, next week on this stage, little Joni Rivers. So I was booked by mistake, and then Ed Sullivan had to put me on because he had announced oh, wow. me. And this is the theater we're going into, and here we are now. Isn't that exciting? All Very. right. All right. On Joan and Melissa, when he said I was never banned from late night, and I said I was never booked in 20 years. What is that called? Scratching on the door to get in. He's not warm. Okay, so we got Edgar on, on camera. He said, what's that? And I said, I brought Edgar. And he said he didn't believe it. And then I opened it up. I said, I brought him out because I'm back on late night and Edgar should be on late night too. And then 
I put Edgar underneath the seat. So that was a very good thing. <laughs> Thank you. It was like playing a, a tennis with somebody. He really, you'd say something, and he didn't know what I was going to say. He'd hit back, and I'd hit back. So I liked that very much about him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's not warm. I, you know, he, he's not playing for you, if that makes sense. Where Jimmy Fallon wants you to be hilariously funny. I just don't think this guy has it in it. This guy is just a very cool. Mm -hmm. This guy is like an ice blue mm -hmm. if you're going to give him a color. When he said I was never banned from late night, and I said I was never booked in 20 years. What is that called? Scratching on the door to get in. So he thought that was very funny. Mm -hmm. When he talked to me about uh, age, I think he was very surprised when I said, how old are you? <clears throat> I'm so tired of people being young and I'm old. And guy's 63. If he were a woman, he went through menopause 14 years ago. The Goldie Hawn joke just went yeah. right into the bleachers. Yeah, that was that just... was great. Yeah, a lot of them were very good. Yeah. Now, if I were talking to Melissa, I'd call her and tell her. I, I may call her and tell her because she didn't call. Her. She didn't call. Her. No. Okay. Walked back into my apartment, I thought my life should be perfect. I am at the top of my game, just done a great show on national television, living in this amazing apartment. And I was so unhappy because I realized none of it matters. Just my family, my daughter. That's all that really matters in the end, isn't it? Let's see who called. Okay, Margie and Peter Tilden and and no Melissa. Okay, okay, that's good. It's okay. So, what do you think? How'd you do, Mommy? Huh? Come on. Come on. Let me tell you all about it. Okay. Come on. Come, my little sweetheart. So there I was. On Letterman, and I haven't been on Letterman for a long time. Yeah. So I was there. How you doing? Hello? Hi. 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 How was Letterman? Ah, uh, it was great. What? It was great. I'm so glad you called. I know, Mommy. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry about, uh, I'm sorry about everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I just, I'm so sorry. Oh, Mommy, I miss you. I miss you, too. Just tell me how the day went. I want to hear everything. It's been some rock and roll day, you know. Well, Margie was here, I got here, you know, and Margie came over and uh, we had to show the apartment, that was crazy. And Kathy Lee and Hodica came over. Mom, don't cry. I'm just, I'm just sorry about everything. It's okay, Mom. And I just miss you so much so much. It's just so hard, Mom. It's so hard when I feel like I can't say anything. And I admit that I have trouble hearing what you're trying to say. Because I know all I hear is the negative, And I know I, I get that. I'm going to try and make it better. Oh, Mommy, I just I'm so happy today went well. And I love you. And we miss you. OK, so. But what, well, more importantly, what about Letterman? Well, Letterman was fine. It was great. I brought some of Daddy's ashes on with me, and I put a little Daddy under, <laughs> under the desk. 
<laughs> I can't believe you did that. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I can't believe you did that. Well, it just went very well, but I'm sitting here and the apartment's great, New York is great, and I just, uh, I just want to come home, Melissa. Mom, you gotta come back. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Things got out of control. I will be home, and I promise you, I promise you, you know. It's okay, Mom. I love you, Mommy. I love you, too. I'm so glad you called. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you, too. Okay, honey, take a, give Cooper a big kiss. Uh, hello to Jason. I love you too, Mommy. Everyone loves you here. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Next time on Jonah and Melissa. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I am so sorry. A next thing that's missing from your life is you need to get out there and go on some dates. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going under down. <laughs> you must be Hello. Jerome. I am Jerome. No, that's not that BMW. I have the yellow one right here. <laughs> Previously on Joan and Melissa. I want your hand up. Get out. It was not okay to take pictures of me. I bet the Kardashians don't fight with their mother like this. I feel like we cannot go two minutes without bickering. Damn it, I can't deal with this. And I know you don't always mean what you say, but sometimes it cuts. But what do you want me to do, sit here and be your whipping post? This is a train wreck. I'm going downstairs. Things are said, and uh, it's time for a little break. Mom, you gotta come back. Things got out of control. I decided to come back to L.A. because life is too short. Parents have to take a lot of from their children. We have to, you know, you always say you have to suck it up, and this is one case where I'll suck it up. When I got back to New York, I had everything all over again. There were my friends in my apartment and running around and all, but uh, I really believe in my heart. Family first. I am, I am so sorry. Me too. And it's good to be back. And it and is good to have you back. Let's just get your bag down. I got it, I got it. Mom, I'm stronger than you. No, mommy. No, mom, go. You're gonna make, you're gonna make me fall down, go. Mom, I got it, mom. Mom, I've got it. Okay. I am back. I'm so happy to be back. And it's behind us. And we are going to move ahead. I actually had an epiphany about myself. Somewhere along the way, the filter that I hear through when I hear you, I stopped hearing good and only was hearing negative. I'm not constantly saying negative. When I walked into, I was so happy to see you. I didn't say, I don't like your skirt, which I happen not to like particularly, but I didn't say that. It but was, I just want to say improvement. that you have somehow managed to work <laughs> in that you don't like my skirt. That's what a parent I'm does. Saying, I'm acknowledging... And I expect you to say the same but, to me. If there were something wrong with me, I would be the first to say, Melissa, tell me what's wrong with me. Be very careful. I wanted to come back to Melissa's house. It was suddenly really wonderful. So I thought, I'll bring her the family engagement ring. I found something that I really want to show you here. Let me see. Look at that. God, it is so pretty. Is that pretty? So pretty. So I think you and Jason should get engaged and maybe he doesn't want to get you a ring or you, he can't afford the ring that you want, who the hell knows? But I thought it's such a great ring. It's such a great family ring. 
A diamond is a symbol of a commitment and of moving on to the next step. Can I just say something? That is a beautiful ring. Look at the luck okay. in this ring. Show me the My luck. My first marriage sucked, but I got the ring. Okay. I got the ring. I got the stone. <laughs> Second marriage, Daddy was happy right up until the time he committed suicide. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's your first marriage, and you got Cooper out of it. It's so lucky ring. Okay. The That's ring nine carats of rock. I just feel like the ring has bad karma. Melissa. No, let me explain. Two of the three stones are from failed marriages. It's got it's a bad beautiful. juju. It's got two failed marriages. The ring doesn't have bad juju. And I'm so sick of that expression, juju, meaning negative. Nobody says it's bad Protestant Protestant. Or, uh, gosh, that ring's got terrible Catholic Catholic. How do we introduce Jason? Boyfriend? Jason? Partner. Oh, you I sound so gay. Ugh. Only lesbians okay. have partners. Okay. Like what to meet my partner, Sally. Okay. Mom, it's a waste. Of this is called compromise. I'm gonna take it and I will think about it. And on that note, I'm gonna go get a glass of water. Cooper, Melissa. come Melissa, say I'm hello to your saying. grandmother. Got, she's back, Coop. She's Grandma. back. Oh, Grandma, my Grandma, sweet. Oh, oh my darling. Oh, oh, oh you look so cute. Why is he wearing these shorts? Mom. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> I am so happy to be back with Cooper. I mean, I'm thrilled to be back with Missy, but there is such a bond, such a different love with a grandparent and a grandchild. <laughs> You're gonna love this. I can't believe I forgot to tell you this earlier. Okay, hold on. Every time you start with that, with a slight giggle, uh -huh. I know it's going to be something <laughs> that's so enjoyable it. for me. I thought this was a good time to tell Jason really seriously, like, just how much my mom wants us to get married. You're going to love this. So my mom shows up with my old engagement ring. I feel like it's got, like, bad karma on it. You know, it's one thing for my mom to push me about getting engaged by bringing back my old bad juju jinxed ring. But I mean, seriously, how is Jason going to feel about this? I don't feel a lack of commitment to this relationship because I don't have a piece of jewelry. Do you ever not come home at night? No. Do I ever not come home at night? No. Do we not ever spend time with Cooper? No, I always spend time with Cooper. Exactly. Are we there through thick and thin? Yeah. That's all that matters. She's not going to let it stop. She's, she's not, not going to stop. She's not going to stop. This is, this, is, this is her project now. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Thank God Jason has a great sense of humor and loves my mom, and more importantly, understands her. That he didn't see it as offensive. You know what? What? We need to get her on some dates. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. No. More dates she's on, more relationships she has, the less the chance I have to have that talk with her. Oh, God, she'll be worrying about her own relationship instead of ours. I know, isn't that brilliant? Oh, good, then she can micromanage her relationship. I was talking to Jason, and we were talking about you coming here. And one of the things I think is you, you don't have a lot of friends out here anymore. They're all scattered. I think that it's really important for all of us that you kind of get back out there a little and go to more events and... You know, it's like what you always said to me when I'm single. You, if you don't go out, you don't meet people. Yeah, but Melissa, when you were single, you were in your 20s and your early 30s. At this age, the only events I go to are funerals. But the advice you give everybody is... is go out. You know, it's very easy for Melissa to say, oh, you gotta start dating. Have you ever tried to conga with a guy, carry an IV stand, or kiss a guy in, in, in an oxygen mask? Takes a lot of the glamour away. I just think that you need to get out there and go on some dates. I just, I really believe that that's gonna, you know, it's gonna be good. Melissa, I don't wanna get all dressed up at this age to be rejected by someone that can't even see me. Mom, how do you know they're gonna reject you? It's very hard for someone to go out with someone like me. They have a preconceived idea of who I am. They have a preconceived idea of what will be fun. And uh, they're all scared they're gonna end up in my act. They're all, are you not gonna say this on television about me, are you? Okay, Which I, I will. Of course you will. <laughs> but when I have told you the same exact words, what have you said to me? Take if, a chance. Take a chance. If they like you, none of that's going to matter. In all seriousness, I'm going to talk to, like, Margie. 
I'll see maybe, does Jason know anyone from the tennis club? That's good. If a guy can play tennis, that well, means... Well, at least he's upright. Yeah. It's very easy to say, oh, you got a date, you're going to love him, he's rich. Big deal. So his colostomy bag is from Gucci. It's not enough. Somebody's got to change it. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. The man showed up, a little underdressed, I thought, compared to what I was wearing. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye kids. Bye, have fun. This date is really going well. And then he starts talking about his passion. I have some good news. Good news what? I don't know if I should be doing this. But? But I was at the club today, hitting some balls, and I met this guy, Barry Howard. So Jason said he met this guy playing tennis. And you know, my first reaction was to say, has he got green fuzzy balls? I think it's very sweet that Jason did that. Okay. Who is he? He was a set designer at CBS for 30 years. Right. He's from Larchmont, New York. L all right, so. Yeah. yeah, little hometown crowd favorite. Yeah, all right. Uh, he does cultural attractions now, like for museums. What's that? Like interactive exhibits. Yeah, like the dinosaur talks and moves and says, you know, I am T-Rex, I was roam the earth 60 million years ago, stuff yeah. like that. They teach the children that dinosaurs could talk, which exactly. is really stupid. Well <laughs> He's from Larchmont. I'm from Larchmont. He likes dinosaurs. I had a dinosaur. You said Joan Rivers is looking, or you said no, what? No, you know, I said, well, you know, you're 73 years old. I don't know. I don't like younger men. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a cougar. <laughs> He's 73. He's, I can't keep up with him. Really? We all know that Jason is thrilled to see me go out in a day, but we also know his motivation is get the old bitch out of the house. I mean, I'm not that stupid. Okay, great, thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Melissa, Jason got me a date. Just think, we might have a new daddy. Yes, we might have a new daddy. Okay, stay where you are. Okay. I am back on the market, and I have a couple of dates. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, so, so I want to just see Are they what's... dressy? Um, what's well, what age appropriate? Also? Age appropriate to shroud, so I, I don't want I... age appropriate. Yeah, I think I have a couple things in mind that would be perfect for you. Okay. I am in a store with Melissa, and we are doing this mother-daughter thing, which is so sweet, and we are buying clothes for my date. And dates, we hope, because everyone's now suddenly fixing me up. This whole dating thing is getting me crazy. Why is it getting you crazy? Because I just want a companion. I mean, you need to go out and meet people and go on these dates. I mean, what's the... Look at this. Well, listen. I know. Aren't those crazy oh, good? To be young or a hooker. I like that. I think you're actually going to get a lot I of use out like of it. You look like a doctor? No, you don't look like a doctor. I just got your biopsy. You're a lucky woman. Never <laughs> mind. I look like I want to make you a sandwich. No, you don't. You want fries with that. Okay. I like fries with anything. What exactly. if somebody Got to it. took off their shoe and was like all crusty and okay, disgusting? Okay, well, you know what? We, I have mom. a foot thing. I don't but know if I can go there. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, what would you do? Would you say? I would bring them a, a nice little nylon and I would say, we recommend you try it on. Could you bring me a nylon then? Mom! Melissa, look at, look at, oh. Life yeah, is good. Mom, I don't wear fur, you know that. It's rabbit. That's still fur. If you were my date and I met you yeah. for the first time. I would not want to take you home in that. I am ready for my date uh, in the sense that um, I'm still alive. I think you should know I called Sally Glassman and she's coming out to the house. Sally Glassman, Sally Glassman? Sally Glassman, the white witch, Sally Glassman. The one that cleaned out your apartment. Yeah, when I had the ghost. Right. I just thought it'd be nice to get rid of any bad feelings in the house from the fight. Now that the fight is behind us, I really wanted to just cleanse all the negative energy from it out of the house. Thank you so much. I bought something that looks like a dog. I bought it, something very dressy. I bought a pair of shoes that came right out of Modern Horror Magazine. Let me just wait till my card cools off because I have done major damage here. Okay. okay. It's terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. We had this big family round, and I just thought it'd be oh. great if you would come and bless the house and bless us. And just good to see good you. Good to see you, Sally. See you guys. You? I love Sally being around the house because now when someone says, 
there's a witch in here. I know they're not talking about me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through the house first of all and just bring it to a place of peace. I don't refer to Sally as a witch. What do you refer to her as? I like to think of her as a spiritual advisor. What do you think of me as? Go on, say it. Listen, this will unconstipate you. On certain days it rhymes with witch. Okay, that's good. Et tous les lois, tous les esprits d'Afrique. Gardez la maison. Gardez la famille. Toute la famille. She's just wonderful, and you just feel all the spirituality coming out of her. My big mistake is I should have had her bless the pool because it's still not done. Melissa. I'm Barry. Nice How to you? meet you. Good, thank you. How are you doing? Good to How see you. Doing? Come on in. Thank Come on you. in. My mom's almost ready. Okay. A little role reversal. My mom's first date was here, and you know what? I have some questions to ask. You're divorced? Oh, yeah, for many years. You say that with such pride. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Well, look at you. Yeah. You look nice. Wow. Well, one of us is either underdressed or overdressed. <laughs> <laughs> the man showed up. A little underdressed, I thought, compared to what I was wearing. All right? Okay. You ready? Come on, I'm ready. I'm. Come on. As I said, well, you're one so, of us is still I, I mean, if I knew you were going to dress, that's all right. Please. You're going out on dates, and I'm waiting up on you. But the nice thing with these guys, most of them only drive during the daytime, so you're up anyhow. Bye. Bye, kids. Bye. Have fun. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is very nice. Cozy. Yep. And we can pick our own wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Barry's a very nice man. Very nice looking. It started out quite nicely. Well, try this shrimp. It's horrible. <laughs> you know, try this. We'll I don't want to die alone. Mm. It isn't good, is it? Mm. Could you wrap this up yes, to go? Because yeah. I really don't like my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. don't tell the chef, because I'll spit in the calamari. <laughs> this date is really going well. And then he starts talking about his passion. The way they catch in squid out here in the Pacific is the squid come up to light at night. All right. So these guys go out in boats. They have these bright lights. And I know because I could never sleep. I was very surprised how interested I became in squid fishing. Anyway, the way they catch them out here in the Pacific is Go in ahead. order to attract the squid. Right. And when I come to the topic. Luckily, it wasn't just Barry and me on the date. I had brought along a good friend, Cabernet. <laughs> when the squid season was on, I'd be looking at it in my bedroom sliders and I would see these bright lights, you know? Keep it going. Uh, would I go out with him again? Maybe would he go out with me again? Maybe. It was it was okay. On a scale of one to ten, both of us probably thought three and a half. Are we splitting this check? It's on me. Are you sure? Oh yeah. So not used to being treated. You'll always be treated with me. Barry is a lovely man, and I know that somewhere out there is a woman who will be fascinated by squid fishing. It's a shame Sarah Palin's taken. Hello. Hi. Hi. So? So, uh, so. How was it? Uh, I learned a lot about calamari. I just find this whole process so reminiscent of, of when you were going out on dates. I used to wait up and you'd come into my room and you would tell me if you liked him and you didn't like him and what you did. It's all fun. My life is so full unless somebody really turns your head. It's amazing. I don't blame you. And someone that's amazing is out there. Yeah, but he's usually in a diaper. There wasn't a wow factor. I don't think there was a wow factor on his side either. I want to go get some more peanut butter. Please You're not me. interested in grandma's date? No. You have no date advice for your grandmother? And I'm only nine. <laughs> Now you know he's going home and he's saying to his daughter, well, she was kind of fat. 
You could see the plastic surgery scars, overdressed, looking like an old whore, laughed at her own jokes constantly. It doesn't fall into the bad column. He it was... falls into the neutral column. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. What's going on? I met this guy. Was he sitting upright? You must be Don. I am T A N G O. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I couldn't even begin to put together a list of requirements in a man for you. I mean, what is it that you want in one? I don't know. I, uh, age appropriate, uh, certainly uh, affluent, uh, educated, sense of humor, smart, nice dresser, not interested in sex. The Pope. The Pope would be perfect. Hi, Joan. Hello, sweetheart. You look great. So do you. You look fabulous. What's going on? What's up? I met this guy. He is gorgeous. He's a choreographer. He used to work with Martha Graham. She's 77. Was he sitting upright? <laughs> you need them upright? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm not telling you to go marry him. I'm telling you, go out with him. He wants to take you to dinner. He's dying to meet you. What's a date, for God's sakes? What's the big deal? Go. Listen, I'm delighted. Of course I'll go out with him, and I'll call you after the date. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> you must be Don. I am. And you must be... Joan Rivers. Joan. How nice to meet you. When Margie first called me and said she had a date me, I got excited because... I know the group she travels in. I mean, he's going to be arty, he's going to be intelligent, he's going to be rich. I mean, the last guy she fixed me up with was a billionaire. And I can't wait to see him as soon as he comes out of jail. Were you a dancer? Yeah, oh, yes, I was. That's a... professionally? Yes. Oh. Not a ballroom dancer professionally, but I, I was a concert dancer. When I first talked with Don, I thought he was just a very charming man. But then when he starts to tell you that he danced with Martha Graham, that is a choreographer. You kind of think he lives with his mother and a cat. Would you like to try just a little bit? I'll try anything. Though I just want to see how we match up. All right, fine. I'm warning you, though. You think I'm being funny. <laughs> I am a terrible no, dancer. No, no, you're Margie did this out of spite. No, no, she's okay. a lovely lady. She's and a I'm lovely lady, but she's I'm a very mean bitch. <laughs> the last time I imagined me dancing was when I was literally on Dancing with the Stars. It was the radio version. Follow me, Don. Okay, I'm following. And... <laughs> One, two, three. See, look at how, see how nice that this. works? Yeah. Look at this. See, look, look at this. You know exactly oh, what to do. Oh, do I know what I'm doing here? Oh, do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go turn, twirl, and... Back at you, Don. Yeah, here we go. Here we and... go. I don't dip on the first date, Don. <laughs> okay. Mainly because I can't get up. <laughs> Don is a very good-looking man. I'm having a lot of fun with him. Trouble is, I think we're both looking for the same thing. A man to love us. T-A-N-G-O. T-A-N-G-O. Get ready, Don. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sorry. You okay? <laughs> I'm fine. You sure you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. That, I think, was a first for Don. I don't think he'd ever been on top of a woman before. <laughs> I'm back. Hi. We are all going to start taking dancing lessons. We are with the fun. N-G-O. It turned out to really be fun. Darling, he was good, good, so good. dear. Got some exercise in. T-A-N-G-O. Next could be Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. I don't know. The so tell me, tell me, tell me. No, it, it was fun. So he got there and? And he was waiting very sweet. Dressed nicely? No jacket. Very California. Uh, but a vest. Attractive? Movie star tee. Hair. Nice, nice. Hair. Did you pull on it to make sure it's real? Uh, no. <laughs> you chit-chatted. And then we danced. And at one point, we fell down. Oh, God. So, 
So tell me about him, is he and I, widowed, divorced? Well, I don't think so. Kids? I don't think so. Let me just say that when we were dancing, when he took a leap, very often he did not come down without a little help from me. A keen fashion sense. But he was charming. So you had fun. And darling, yes. Do you think he maybe made a friend? I would keep him as a friend. I, well, I could see where Margie liked him. So Margie wasn't completely off base. This is just maybe it's not a romantic But Margie date. has no gay radar. No, none at all. Okay, so that's all good. Yeah, good. it was a lovely afternoon. It was a good practice date. My mom seemed so happy when she got home from her date. It was great. She clearly had a good time. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, come here, come here, come here. I didn't know this was going to happen. I was avoiding this moment. Here we go. Lean into me. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid. T. A. N. G. O. T. A. N. G. O. M. A. M. B. O. M. A M B O. See, look how happy you are. You're in a good mood. M B O. M A M B O. Shocking. You want to leave? Hi, Margie. I just got home from the date. How are you? Oh, how was it? How was it? Well, what am I going to tell you? Uh, he was a dancer. Yes. He was a single dancer. Oh, I know what you're trying to say. He's gay. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> well, I didn't ask him what his sexual preference was before I set up the date. No, I don't. I think you're really ungrateful. I am never fixing you up again. You know, you're I'm right. Mean spirit. That not means you're right. I, I look at Katie and she's very happy with her life. I'm a fool. Excuse me. Thank you <laughs> for the gesture. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Sabrina has found me someone at the gun club. Take that, Benji. Didn't send me a Valentine. Great. Melissa mentioned yeah, yeah. that she would love to have you start going on some dates. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Well, I ran into a very lovely man yesterday at the gun club. Oh, don't give me that. Unfortunately, the dates with Squid Boy and uh, the Dancing Queen didn't exactly go so well. But Sabrina found me a date at the gun club, which is interesting because that's where I met Sabrina 21 years ago. I was taking shooting lessons, and she was working there as a college kid. We were shooting, and he had a very nice aim, and I was complimenting him, and we started talking. How can you talk at the gun club? Hello? What? <laughs> You're looking very nice. Would you like to meet my friend? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try, right? It's worth a try, right. Hello? How's it going? Going good, thank you. I'm, I'm supposed to meet somebody here? Two dates down, no connection at all. But I'm going to be a good sport. I'm going to try the third. Good. All right. Joan? Don't tell me. You must be Alan. Hi, I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. How are you? you? Pleasure to meet you. This is Thank some you for I was very impressed with Alan because he was dressed for a date. He was wearing a suit and a tie. This is Thank some you for place. meeting me here, yeah. Uh, this is, uh... This is where you want to be if you're, if someone's chasing you. I, I learned to shoot a gun originally because my late husband, Edgar, was English, and English people go on these shoots, and, uh, then I'm a celebrity, and I lived in New York. Good to know how to handle a gun, and I really can handle a gun. I, I'm kind of like Annie Oakleyberg. It was great just hearing those shots. I felt for the first time in all these weeks that I was back in New York. You know what you're doing? Are no. you comfortable? No. Well, I, I, I know. You can do that, yes. You cock it, right? Cock the gun, you gotta cock it. You need to cock it, let's cock it. I never had so much on a first date in my life. Take that, Benji. And send me a Valentine. Great. Okay, David, die. Didn't call me for a second day. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. He got it when I was killing off old loves, and he joined right in. He had a woman that we just shot to pieces. Joan, I gotta tell you something. This, look at this. This is terrific. What if they do it when the target moves? That's called marriage. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's very hard to get to know a person when you got a gun in your hand. You're kind of distracted there. So now we're going to go out to dinner. Goodbye, guys. Just to your shooting. Thank you. Yes, that was very surprising and very good. My name is Faye. Hello, Faye. I love you. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Watch you. This is my friend Alan. She couldn't care less. I know. Please do a good job. She's beautiful. The restaurant is lovely. We're really having a good time, but people keep coming over and interrupting me to take my picture. Thank you, Faye. Good night. Good night. Can we take a picture? Absolutely. Come on in, Simone. Take a picture of you. I didn't know what to think, you know, when all these people, they, they, they come up, they interrupt. It's as if they, you know, it's as if I was invisible. A pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just, I mean, this is all the time, right? The minute you walk out the door, they're running up to you. We should get one of those machines, you know, with, like at the bakery where you take the numbers out. That way we know who's coming. Do your dates usually just sit quietly, you know, while this happens? Usually. If I can remember my dates. What else is there to do? They didn't have cameras in those days. <laughs> Joan. Oh, here we go. Uh, come here, come here, come here. Do you want to get in this? Do you want to get in this? Take a picture, Joan. Oh, you want me to take the picture? Joan, Joan, Joan. Joan, Joan. 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 Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Whose camera is this? I want to know whose camera I'm putting in the wine. You were amazing. Thank you so okay, much. Here. Alan really got to taste what it's like to date me. Who are we looking at? Which one? Look at him. Oh, look at him. Look at look at look at him. Look at your handsome. No, look at him. You're in the public eye, people are coming over, pushing you aside. This is why I'm still single. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, there's no other form of birth control that's quite this good. <laughs> you are so funny. Are you telling me I'm funny? Come on. It's such a good time. What I like about Alan is he can take pictures and he carries a gun. He can be like a a fighting paparazzi. Wow. It's such a good time. Thank you. <laughs>How was your date, Sunshine? Good late. morning, and my date was very nice. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Well, tell me. A very, very good time. Excellent. Really? Tell me, tell me. He was really nice, and he was dressed appropriately. appropriately. Gentlemen. And uh, we went to a cafe. People kept coming over. I mean, there was, you know, it was. But it was nice. I think he got into it. People were taking pictures. He was taking the pictures with them. Are you sure he was, like, into that? He fit in, Melissa. You know I what I'm that. saying? It I kind of got that feeling that he would, it would yeah. work. Alan, way to go. How'd you leave it? Did you make plans? Uh, no. That it was a nice, warm embrace. embrace. Hug. No, you know, a nice, it was lovely meeting you. It was lovely meeting you. Okay. We should do hug, this again. Hug, hug. We should do this again sometime, and that was it. That was very nice. I think you should call him and thank him. I would say, I'm not going to call him. Of course you could. Call him and thank him. He has to call me. If you like him, make it easy for him. Well. I think in the situation, you need to sort of open the door for him. Oh, come on. Call him. Call him. Melissa. Why not? Because my generation, women don't call men. Men call women. Sext him. What? Se what's that mean? Like when you text sexy, provocative message. Sexting. Melissa, what do you say to him? Hi, what are you wearing? A diaper? <laughs> Call him and say, let me write it down. <laughs> I have not had this much fun Four. with a straight man in I'm, years. I'm going to dial him. Phone's ringing, Four. Joan. Get ready. Eight. Hello? Alan? Hi, it's Sabrina from Joan Rivers' office. I have Joan here. She'd love to say hello. Hi. Um, I just called to say that I haven't had this, this much fun with a straight man in years. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yes, it was it was lovely meeting you too. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say we had so much fun, and I, I would love it if we could do this again sometime. Well, we'll have a great trip. Yeah, yeah. Bye. And and, and he said, uh, yeah. But uh, I'm very busy the next couple of weeks. It was a no, okay? He just didn't like me. Oh, screw him. I don't care how old you are, rejection is rejection. It hurts just as much. I feel so awful. I mean, I feel like I've caused this. Well, you did. 
push the dating. You all push the dating. And I accepted it. And you say, well, now I'm old enough and it doesn't matter. But you feel horrible. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's fine. I don't, it's okay. Okay, we'll have it's other okay. dates. On I mean, to the next. On to the next. On to the next one. No, but not for a while. Come on, Lola. You're not the only lonely bitch around here. Let's go hump somebody's ankle. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. He's riding a motorcycle. That's how he picked me up for the day. I'm not gonna forget this, Peter. I have a special surprise for you. Look up at this guy. So have you met somebody? Oh, they fixed me up on a couple of dates. Men? You know, Peter, it is, it's either right or it's not right. And I, not that I'm any great prize. I'm not a great prize. But uh, if it's not right, I'd rather talk to someone like you. I got a guy who's a, he's a doctor. A doctor of what? He was a tree doctor. He makes a lot of money. He's 66 years old. It's too young. He walks very slowly. Try the tree guy and then we'll see how that goes. Wouldn't you be surprised if you liked the guy who had different interests what from you? What do you talk to a tree guy about? This tree doctor doesn't sound like the kind of man I like. He sounds very outdoorsy, very rough and tumble. I'm looking for a guy, uh, kind of English, uh, a gentleman, uh, Always wearing a beautiful jacket, you know. I'm, I'm, I guess I should date a waiter. I'm open to meet. Then do it. Then do it. Media. Why are we arguing? Say yes. Just do it. I will go out with the tree guy, but I don't like that he's 66 years old. I finally agreed to go out with this guy, but we're not going to have anything in common. What am I going to say? Tell me about uh, woodpeckers. Embrace this. You're gonna, you're gonna have a nice time. <laughs> I think Jerome is a great date for Joan because he's nothing like her. And that's why I like him. A tree guy? I'm turned on for you, don't resist it. You can feel it, aren't you a little bit? You're a little bit turned on. Be right there. Be Jerome. I am Jerome. John Rivers. John Rivers. Nice, nice to meet you. You too. And you I too. assume those are for me. Yes, those are for you. That's very sweet. Thank you. I have an ulterior motive here. Maybe I can get the street doctor to help me get rid of Peter's trees. I mean, they're blocking Melissa's view of the Pacific. You live out at the beach, also? Yeah, yeah. I have a little beach house down there. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So well, this is. No, that, not that BMW, uh, that's white. I have a yellow one right here. You're making a joke. Joan, would I joke about a thing like that? No, wait, wait, wait a second. Where am I supposed to go? I don't understand this. Oh, you, you ride right in the back there. How old are you? 66. Do you want to live to be 67? <laughs> it's safe enough. You know, let me go put something else on, okay? Will you uh, wait for a second? Sure. When Peter told me about the doctor, he forgot one thing. He's riding a motorcycle. That's how he picked me up for the day. Beautiful, the Better. perfect perfect motorcycle jacket. Okay, this is, All right. this is it. Look at this. Go Here's pitter. our little Cupid. This makes my heart go pitter-patter. I'm not gonna forget this, Peter. You know what? I love that you're pushing the envelope. Look look, it's, it's a great look. Yeah. You know something? This could be one of the most there exciting nights of your life. Why Tell don't we stay at Melissa's? <laughs> you, know, you want to have an adventure? I've had plenty of adventures. Oh, one more won't hurt you. And by the way, I have all the emergency numbers for later. Is this a joke? Why is this a joke? You're going to get on the motorcycle. Are you taking her to a nice place for dinner? I'm taking her to my beach house. A little beach house in Malibu. Yeah, this is... Tell me what I do. Put your one leg in the star up there. Your left foot. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I grab right. onto my shoulder. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. Uh, you're on. Lean back. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Oh, you're very welcome. It's only about 10 miles. All right. 10, yeah. 10 miles? Give me good by the way. Hands off tonight. 10 miles? Be a gentleman. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Terrific. You're going to have such a great time. Go ahead. See ya. I get on that motorcycle, and I swear to you, the first thing I thought was, do I have my organ donor card with me? But you know, motorcycles are fun. It's like a big vibrator. Are we there? This is it. We've arrived. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. There you go. Hey, that we was are. great. 
Where are we? Because I have my eyes shut the whole time. <laughs> Probably recognize the Pacific Ocean. This is absolutely stunning. And you set this up? Is this for us? Yeah, that's for us. I could use a drink. Cheers. 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 How do you know Peter? He's one of my clients. Here I more. beg you, make him trim his trees. Melissa is really losing her view. This is what she should be looking at. Believe it or not, I also work as an expert witness. And there have been several cases where people have come in and actually poisoned their neighbor's trees in order to kill them so it would open up their view. <laughs> what kind of poison, Jerome? Just curious. Well, just curious. <laughs> and how do you give it to the tree? <laughs> you know what? After the sun starts going down, it gets really cold. Yeah. Let me get you a blanket. I wouldn't say no. It'd be very kind of you. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Would you like a little appetizer? I would love All right, a little let me go appetizer. get you something. Have you got a second blanket? Yeah, how about my jacket? Yeah, thank you. All that right. fine. I'll tell you the truth. I thought for a while it was love at first sight because my face went numb. And then I just realized I'm cold here. I have a special surprise for you. What? It... Look up in the sky. Oh, that is so <laughs> fabulous. Oh, that is oh, I'm lovely. So glad. That's how much you've warmed my heart. What if you would have hated me? If I'd hated you? I would out of a race it. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you, if that heart means something, yes. will you help me kill Peter Tilden's trees? Uh, Jerome was a lovely man, but when I couldn't convince him to cut down Peter's trees, check. Can right. we just go home while it's still daylight? Sure. You know, I get very nervous. Hello. Hello. Did you survive? Oh, my God. I was on a motorcycle. Oh, I have been on a motorcycle all the way up the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> Can I have it? No. Oh, Cooper. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. Hello, Thank sweetheart. You. Okay. Hello, Cookie. Teeth. Oh. So? Tell so? me, tell me, tell me. I haven't seen anything since I heard. Last thing I heard was, Wah! It was an experience. Very nice man. Mm -hmm. Do you know something, Melissa? I'm 77 years old, and I am very content with my life. And I was thinking about it today. I like my life the way it is. I like where I am. I like my friends. I like being single. And then I was thinking about you, and maybe I have no right to bring the ring and to tell you that you should change what is good for you. I, I think I'm just waiting for the lightning strike to come through the house. Um, <laughs> because you're actually saying that you think my life might be working for me. I think your life is working for you. And maybe it's about your generation, which I don't understand. As my mother did not understand my generation. I appreciate that, Molly. You love Jason. Jason loves you. You're totally happy the way you are. I don't know how to address him. I don't know how to address his family. I think they're a little embarrassed. His what parents do you aren't embarrassed. I think his mother would like to see him marry. I know that in your heart, like the ring is a big gesture. It's a fabulous ring. Okay, but mom, it's my ring from my first marriage that ended in divorce. I just feel like, ew, like you don't repurpose a ring like that. Well, what did Jason say when you showed him the ring? Honestly, we both started to laugh really hard. So you don't think you'll ever get married again? It just means that when I think about getting married, I find it very hard to breathe. For whatever reason, the idea of marriage truly makes me feel trapped. It makes me terribly sad that Melissa doesn't want to get married again, that she was so burnt by the experience. Uh, but then again, uh, it saves me a fortune in not having to throw another wedding. Hello, you. Hello, sweetheart. Are you ready for bed? Mm -hmm. Teeth brushed? Yep. Yeah. Oh. A big thing. OK, my darling boy. Here you go. Go get tucked in. I am very, very proud of you. Because not only did you go out on the dates, you didn't break them. And more importantly, you went on your own. Thank you. It's very sweet. Maybe I should turn lesbian. So how would I explain that to Cooper? Unlike you, we wouldn't be living in sin. 
We will be married. We will have a beautiful ceremony. Look, Cooper, I want you to meet your other grandmommy. Say hello, honey. Hello. We love you. Get registered at the Home Depot. I'd be all in white. She'd be in a nice dark pantsuit. Hide her big ass. <laughs> Damn f right the pool get done. Bring it to my friends. Get it done for the weekend. Surprise my little gal when she comes home from Vegas. Oh, God. You'd both still be living here? You wouldn't have found a house yet? You know what we're going to do with us? We're going to extend the garage. You'd finally be a trophy wife. <laughs> Next time on Joan and Melissa. We used to own this house. Melissa, this is the room you lost your virginity in. You know what? What? A little less attitude would be much appreciated. Melissa and Jason are arguing. They're acting like an old married couple. They need to get away. I'm giving you a trip to two of you alone. This was seriously just a total and complete bust. I had Cooper all to myself. We headed right for the bowling alley. My thumb is stuck. Previously on Joan and Melissa. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I am so sorry. Living with Melissa is only temporary until I find my own place. Now, see, okay, this could be a nice house for you. It's being built right now. I don't like Mediterranean. I haven't found the right place yet. The next thing that's missing from your life is you need to get out there and go on some dates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going under down. <laughs> oh, oh. You must be Jerome. I am Jerome. No, that's not that BMW. I have the yellow one right here. I've been staying with Melissa until I find my own place. I've been looking everywhere. I am now going to meet a realtor named Shauna, who is bringing me to a house that she says is dog friendly. And uh, <laughs> okay, look at the lawn. It's obviously very dog friendly because it's all. Uh, I specialize in showing homes that are dog friendly. And I'm really, really hoping that Joan will bring at least one of her dogs today because I really want to know if the dog likes it. Hi, John. It's so great to see nice you. Nice to see you. Hello. I'm Shauna. And this I is figured. My, this is my partner, Kobe. Okay. This is my my assistant, Serena. Can Kobe hey. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. He loves to wear clothes. Do you have your dog okay. with you? No. Oh. oh, I know. So tell me a little bit about this house. Okay. Well, there's hardwood floors throughout in case any of them have accidents yes. and right this way is okay. the kitchen. Okay. See, I thought over here you could have a separate eating area for the dogs. If they don't want to go into the, the dining room, they could have a little more casual eating here. I think it's very uncivilized to go to the bathroom outside so they have their own bathroom. So upstairs I'll show you. You we, have a dog bathroom? Yes, yes. So this is okay. really a dog friendly, friendly house. house. Yeah. If the dogs are happy, mommy's happy. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go upstairs. Okay. I want to show you the shower because in the shower there's two separate shower heads, so you can take a shower on one side, and one and of the dogs the can dog take a shower on the other side. Yeah, so yeah. they won't be lonely if you're in the shower. They can be with you at the same time getting their bath too. Did you go to college? I want to specialize in. Dogs. Dog friendly designing. Okay. <laughs> She's such a pretty sweet darling girl. Yes, but she definitely needs help, Joan. And so is the dog. I never saw a suit that small. And Her little tongue was hanging out. It's, it's hot. If you're going to dress them, dress them in shirt sleeves. This is California. Are you single? Yes. What happens when you go on a date? Do you leave the dog at home? No, I usually have him in my purse, and if Kobe doesn't like him, I can't go out with him. What do you do when you get in the bed with a man? Kobe's the only man in the bed. I don't think he'd let another man but in the bed. But when you have a romance with a man. I haven't had a boyfriend for years. 
That dog's eyes were looking at me and going, SOS, SOS, SOS. Ready? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God. I walked into Cooper's room. I went into shock. There was, there was Jason and Melissa, and it's the first time I ever saw her making a bed. Why didn't you hire somebody, because Melissa? Hire we figured somebody. Because it was just, it's just as easy to do it ourselves. Melissa, there Mom, was only one was famous Jewish carpenter, and look what happened to him. I know Cooper's little boy, and we got him a bigger bed. I don't like furniture that comes in parts. I, li I like furniture that has French fingerprints on it. We so can he can around. either lie like this. Correct. Or he can lie the way he always does. Like this. Yes. This would be narrow. No, no, it does have to be turned the other That's way around. That's what I just said. It has to be turned the other way around. You know what? What? A little less added should be much appreciated. You know right what? Now. I'm doing my best here, huh? Melissa and Jason were arguing, which is very rare for them. I've never seen that before. You don't think you should just bring a professional in? I'm scared that things are going to collapse on top of him. Top Melissa, of it's earthquake country. I'm I know, but it's not going to collapse on top of them. The reason it's taking so long is because Melissa doesn't know what she's doing. She's my daughter. The only tool she has ever used before this is a mascara brush. Well, it doesn't look very sturdy to it me. It will be. Look, one, I only planned on doing this one person. And two, I have both of you standing here arguing with me nonstop. She's not, she's helping you. She's doing <sighs> the lifting. Mom, he, he, I, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Okay, I'm gonna go look again for another Allen wrench that I gave you earlier. Melissa's getting a little snappy. Building this bed is taking four times longer than it would have if I just did it myself. They need to get away. I think that's a great she, idea. Don't you think so? They could go to Vegas. They're acting like an old married couple. This is the time they should be doing something romantic. First of all, she, look, she's not even wearing makeup. My day, it was romantic. You wore outfits. My mother, to the day she died, my mother put perfume on before my father came home. I'll bet you, if I call the Venetian Hotel, I could get everything. I get Cooper, they get a great weekend, okay. free. free. Let's food. go to Vegas. Okay. I am very worried about Jason and Melissa's relationship because they're not having enough romantic time together. I just was on the phone to Vegas as a treat. You could go for a weekend to the Venetian. You could see Phantom of the Opera. It's perfect. But I've spent, we've, I've spent so much time in Vegas. The two of you alone. <sighs> I'm giving you a trip to Vegas. You wouldn't like to go to Vegas? Jay, I have spent plenty of years as a child in Vegas, as a teen in Vegas, as an adult in Vegas. Believe me, I have done Vegas. We want somewhere where we're removing all that kind of external stimulation and wanting just quiet. I mean, I refer to this house as the house of loud. Is it, you're making this like it's a terrible thing? No, 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 no. I mean, how many people say to somebody, it was like a great suite in Vegas I know, I'm weekend. saying thank you. But I think we would rather, if we're gonna go away, I think we'd rather go somewhere that's quiet. Somewhere like Lake Arrowhead. John, thank John, you, Mom, that's John, really sweet of you. I'm begging you, make the bed. We are, but Mom, thank, Mom, thank you. You're welcome. I think it is good for us to go away. I think it's good for us just to- Just the two of you. Just the two of us, and, and, and that's why we're excited to go to Lake Arrowhead. We just wanna go and be away. Okay, that's fine. And not all the lights and the flash and then this. I mean, I spend my life running around in heels. It's the last thing I wanna do. So Lake Arrowhead. Okay, that's a nice choice. Is it pretty? It's pretty enough. They can definitely be romantic. It's quiet. Okay, done, done. Done deal. I know they want woods and nature and eating berries and nuts. I don't know, I don't get it. Guess what? You're spending the weekend with Smokey the Bear. I got you a cottage, I got you everything you want. We're very excited about the trip. I'm very thrilled. Thank I'm, you. And thrilled. Yeah, just, I just wear bright colors because there's hunters up there. Do they oh, have bears? I'm really excited. I wouldn't wear perfume, and don't, if you have your period, don't go bears, go after periods. I'm not making a joke. No, I know, but it's I not like- I was in Banff, and they don't walk out right, of your period. Right, but we're not camping. We're staying at a resort. Even so, I will keep bears that- Bears can smell, Melissa, and they're hungry. I will keep that in mind should if I have my visit, my monthly visitor. I beg you, Melissa. I yeah. will keep that in yeah. mind. Don't wear a fur coat. Cooper will be just fine. What time does he like his happy hour? Uh, usually about six. I can do it. You know, some lemonade and a couple pretzels, he's good to go. And just a kiss of vodka. No. 
It's very, very, very European, Melissa. <laughs> Are you sure she's gonna be okay? She's gonna be fine. God, we need to get away. I know. So, going to Arrowhead this weekend, and I'm gonna do a little shopping before I go, get a well, couple cute things. And when we get our, our nails done. I need to stop and get my nails done. Great. We'll have a girly day. And well, we're gonna make a rule. We're gonna, like, not answer our cell phones. We're gonna just, like, have a nice afternoon. And I will treat. Ooh, my oh, my treat. Yeah. Thank and you. let's get some really cute stuff out. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Birdies and chickies. And well, Mom, I wanna do stuff. Well, no, we I mean, wanna, we, this might be the weekend, Melissa. What do you mean the weekend? The weekend. What do you mean the weekend? Who knows? Who knows? Proposal, a, a child is conceived. Things happen, romantic weekends. Can't we just go shopping and get our nails done and everything doesn't have to have like an ulterior motive? There's no ulterior motive. I just think it'll be fun. I'm treated. Okay. There's a store here. I passed it a million times. That is the cutest thing. Oh, Here very it is. cute. Oh, I love the sweaters. Okay. Let's go. The nails came out well. Yeah, the nails came out. They did a good nice. job. Okay, you. Here, right. I'll go first. There we go. This is not a holdup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Anna. We just had our nails done. Are yours dry? Yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm good. Go. Come on, look around. Right. We need to try that. <laughs> Melissa, this is great. Trampy, but not skanky. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, Melissa. What? <laughs> Viagra on a hanger. Mom, <laughs> this and the motorcycle jacket. Oh, my God. I'm going to throw and up. And this is habit I'm glad <laughs> to pay for. You can be shared at the MTV Award. Seriously, why does my mom need to now be commenting on my underwear? This, this is Jason's Christmas gift from me. Okay, Melissa. I think I'm just going to go start trying things on. That's great. It's like a slutty burka. Lingerie is what moves the human race forward. Yes, and I have lingerie. Please don't move the human race forward. I have beautiful lingerie. Well, have that some more. Okay. I have beautiful teeth, but I still brush them. If you won't try them on, I'm going to try them on for you. Melissa, this is fabulous. Oh. peek a -boozy. Oh, my God. I just can't see these things. You know, Melissa, you have the same attitude as your father. Maybe that's why I don't have siblings. Want to see a slutty smurf? No. I feel like a deep show for guys with cataracts. This is something Victoria should keep a secret, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you could smile. Seeing you in that lingerie, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Got your attention? It did get my attention, but I don't think for the right reasons. It doesn't matter. Rebecca, are you married, Rebecca? No. No. Doesn't your mother want you to look sexy on dates? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't your mother be thrilled if you were going away with somebody and you were wearing this? Underneath something. Wouldn't your mother be happy? <laughs> you That's the difference. My mother just wants me to wear it open. <laughs> exactly. Rebecca, yes or no? It's beautiful. See? I'm not even going to humor you Thank anymore. You. Just put them in oh. and let's go. Thank you, Thank my you darling. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. It. Enjoy. Enjoy. My best to your mother. Thank you. Thank you. Her mother sounds like a woman after my own heart. Yeah, those images of you in that underwear are going to be burned in my brain forever. That's good. I think I need to wash my eyes out. <laughs> Yeah, this is beautiful. Well, it should be. This is where we used to live. You know, we're literally like two blocks away. Should we run by? Okay, what the hell? We're looking for a house. My mom's got to like something. So... I showed you a house I like. Yeah, the house I grew up in. Yes. Oh, look at our house. There it is. Oh, I want to see if your avocado tree yeah, is there. Yeah, let's see if we can see it. So we stopped at our old house, and it looked very good. Not like what we had it. But it looked very good. It looked really outside. good. Can't see a damn thing. Want me to give you a boost? Let's ring the bell. Let's not ring the bell. Here Mom, we go. Seriously, don't ring the bell. Hello, um, I don't think you know us, but we used to own this house. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's uh, Melissa Rivers and Joan Rivers and... You're it, kidding. No, no. no. Is it Joan Rivers? Yes, yes. Mm, come in, come oh, in. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. They let us in. They let us in. The old gate opened. <laughs> and in we went. Fools. How hey, lovely to meet you, Joan Rivers. Hey, we hear you Hello. plant that orange tree. Is that true? No, there's a there's an avocado tree. Yeah, that's there. There Can it you is. Just see it? There's my avocado tree. <laughs> right there. Look how big. That's your avocado, my avocado tree. tree. 
in first grade, we had the project where you have to grow an avocado pit. 20 odd years later, that tree was still planted in the yard. And there it was. Oh, they opened up the whole wall. This is wonderful. You've heard of your lavish parties here. Yes, we gave great stories. parties. We were so happy in this house. Good things in this house. Oh, they kept. Oh my God. You kept the hunting scene. My mom had to make all the horses smiling. I made them smile. And there was one you wanted to put lipstick on. You never did it. This you've opened up and it's wonderful. Do you remember Daddy and me just skinny dipping in there, Melissa? Thankfully, I do not. <laughs> Thankfully, I do not. Uh, this was my room. Very changed. Very changed. Oh, Melissa. This makes me so sad. Why? This is the movie you lost your virginity and we were out of town. Mom, I started not, and do you have to crap all over every memory I have? Seriously? I wasn't here. Where was it? It's not your business. You know, Melissa, you should tell me. I would tell you. I don't want to know. Oh, my. We, oh, my God. We redid the whole thing. Oh, wow. But we used to do, every Halloween, we would do a thing called a Beast Feast uh -huh. on, on the, the floor. floor. Whenever I would have, like, a sleepover or Halloween, always we did what's called a Beast Feast, which is you put uh, garbage bags on the floor, and you put all the food on the floor, and you basically are a beast and have to eat off the floor. It's kind of like Hasselhoff style. Well, this weekend, I will do this with, with Cooper. Oh, that'd be great. I want to show you something. Yes. Because this keeps coming. Every once in a while, we get mail from your house like this one. Yes, yes. That's... I'll give you my address where it's supposed to go. That's nice. That's... Uh... Yeah, I know, I know. How generous of them to have found a piece of mail for Daddy. Yeah. And they saved it. I, I just, lovely people. If you had to give it to strangers, I would have handpicked this couple. Thank you for my husband's. That's very sweet, thank you. There's something about this house and this property and whatever is in these walls that to me is still home. This living room, do you remember Johnny Carson, Lawrence Olivier, Alec Guinness? I mean, the people that have been in here, that came in here and sat in here. It made me very happy that the house is loved. It brought back everything. It brought back Melissa's childhood, it brought back my parents visiting. I remember. My mother walking through the front door the first time she saw the house, and she said, I understand I was a parent, she said, this makes a parent so happy to see a child live like this. Sorry we barged in, but I'm so glad we did. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Hey, Cooper! We're just gonna do a little cooking okay. and then a good movie. Good it's gonna be awesome. nice and quiet. Get away from the chaos. Yes, very nice. Oh, yeah. I knew we made the right decision to go to Arrowhead. Honestly, I can't remember the last time Jason and I went away, just the two of us. It's her emergency numbers? I left all the numbers. Okay. It's all good. After Jason and Melissa left for Arrowhead, I had Cooper all to myself. <laughs> so we headed right for the nearest bowling alley. I am on a diagonal. Uh, the other way. Okay, okay, okay. It's good? Uh, okay. Are we all right? That's fine. Okay, I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, my darling. I am very excited. Woohoo! Bowling is the best sport because it's the only one you can play while eating. Great, and we'd like two pair of bowling shoes, please. Cooper and I 
bowling since he was about four years old. We have matching bowling shirts, which is great because now I have photos to blackmail him with when he starts dating. And I would like seven red. There you Isn't go. Lucky. Oh, okay. All right, now I'm gonna put you guys down on lane number uh, 21 and 22 today. The shoes. I'd forgotten you wear other people's shoes. Ugh. God knows who wore those shoes. I had my little bottle of hand sanitizer and it went into the shoes and it went into the, the bowling balls. Wait, 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 wait. No. Just give me, give me the shoes, just for a second. Oh, now my socks are gonna feel. It doesn't matter. Make sure your socks cover the top. They are. Okay. My turn again. What are you doing? Making it a little cleaner. Do you miss Dominica? <sighs> My thumb is stuck. Cooper, could you get, could you ask the man my thumb is stuck? Hello? Hello? I don't know, there were three holes, and I said, what would Tiger Woods do? And a finger went into each hole, and one got stuck. I had to call the attendant. My thumb is stuck. Just, um, I don't want... Stuck. So embarrassed. I felt like a dyke in Holland or in a nightclub. It just won't come out. Thank you very, thank you very much. Cooper's nine now, so I figured it's time he learned about gambling. Listen, we're gonna bet on this game. If I win, you have to wash the Mini Cooper for a week. Uh, if you lose, yeah. you have to do my homework for a week. Your homework for a week? I can it's help It's only going to be possible because I'm winning 140. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Your mother's not going <laughs> to like that. Too bad. <laughs> okay, here we go. Strike! That's great. Wait, don't go, Grandma. You're supposed to hit it. You're supposed to hit it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Homework. Here it comes. Come on, come on, come on. This is sort of close, Cooper. Eight to 74. Just like our ages. This is close. Don't go, don't go. Grandma, it's not good. Ah. Right, not terrible, not terrible. Game over. Bowling is a lot like childbirth because you always forget the horror and you just think at the end of what fun you have. Congratulations. Homework. Homework. <laughs> uh, give me your feet. No, no, no. Oh, yes. No, oh, not. yes. Oh, yes. Don't touch the floor. Touch, touch. Don't touch the floor. So right when we got there, Jason and I wanted to go take a walk. We thought, oh, it'll be romantic, it'll be nice, we'll go walk down by the docks. The weather is beautiful. I know. No smog. No smog, it's, it's nice. nice. It's it's look at this. It's nice to be away. It's quite old. Quiet. Hey! What's up? What's up? Hey, I know you. Dude, I know you. We're down on the docks and it's lovely and quickly, our couple became a trio. You know what? We should hang out, guys. That that is such a poser. He made a friend who happened to be, well, really drunk. You guys aren't even gone yet, and I already miss you so much. Oh, well, thank you. I love you, man. I love you, too, man. We'll Good see to meet ya. ya. I mean, there's just no catching a break. So 
after we went bowling, I said to Coop, what do you want to do? He said, I'd like to invite six boys over. I thought, oh, he's like a little Snooky. I said, fine. Hey, guys. Hey, Cooper. Hello, hello. 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 Hello
You're, you're the greatest. Feel better. My best to everybody. Thank you, my honey. Bye-bye, honey. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Conrad, coming up on Joan and Melissa. All right, kids, kids, this is Aunt Lynn. She's here to help us. I felt perfectly safe leaving Conrad and Lynn with the kids. Okay, you know what? Tonight, I'm rushing off to do this charity event. I'm really saving Brad Garrett's ass, which is very appropriate because it's sitting on a toilet now and it ain't going nowhere. Thank God he didn't call me on smell a phone. I mean, work. Hey! Uh, uh, hello! Okay. Right, everyone, hello. Kids in inside. Hi, thank God. I wasn't sure that Conrad could handle all those kids himself, so I called Lynn because I know she knows how to get along with boys. At least that's what it says in her diary. All right, kids, kids, this is Aunt Lynn. This is Hi. Aunt Lynn. Hi. Hi, Q. And she's here to help us. I've got this under control. I have nieces. I'll, I'll, I'll have her. I'll have her. Now, listen, kids. Conrad and Lynn are in charge. They're going to make the spaghetti. The pizza is coming. Go yeah. fix your makeup. All right. All right. OK. I felt perfectly safe leaving Conrad and Lynn with the kids. They sent a limo, and off I went to do the show. Will you keep an eye on this? Yeah. Who wants to have fun? Here. I do. I do. You're going to have a beast feast? Oh, yeah, beast feast. Who wants to have a beast feast for dinner? I do. I do. OK, you know I what? Stop it. I'm going to tie you all up. Hi. Everyone sit. We're going to start with spaghetti. Nobody starts eating until I say, OK, eat. Ready? Every Halloween, mm -hmm. we started having the Beast Feast. Yes, you put all the food on the floor, usually something messy like spaghetti, and you had to eat the whole thing on the floor with just your hands. How about ice cream? Oh, ice cream! Oh, 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 oh. Is this fun? Yeah. Do you like spray cheese? Thank you. I love this Dude, you're stepping in this. Good. You're good. Ladies and gentlemen, filling in for Brad Garrett, Joan Rivers! It's very hard. I try. I try so hard. I try to be good now. I'm living out here with my grandson. Then we went swimming with sharks. $2,500 you pay to go swimming with sharks! So I stood next to the fattest woman I could find. <laughs> and I said, I hope you have your period. It is just... What a great night this is turning out to be. Lynn and Conrad are watching the kids. Melissa and Jason are having a romantic weekend in Arrowhead, and I am going on stage where I belong. You guys are acting like zoo monkeys. Zoo monkeys! Yeah. All right, listen, I'm zoo starting monkeys. to sweat. And I am 43 years old. And when a 43-year-old woman says, I'm starting to sweat, bad things happen after that. I could become <laughs> homicidal. It'll oh, walk out there. Oh, you ever see a horror movie? Yeah. That's what could happen. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Ah. I don't have children, and I don't mind going to oh, Whoa, it sounds loud. Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Rivers! You gotta play the game. You gotta pretend you're having a good time when you're having sex. Fake it. Orgasms. Orgasms. Nobody in this room has faked orgasm but me. It is so easy. You just go, ooh, ooh, ooh. It is common courtesy. <laughs> He's doing most of the work. You gotta encourage him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh oh, uh oh. You're the best. You're the best. All the time I was working at the Catalina Club, I was so happy because between Conrad and Lynn, those kids were in good hands. You know what? 
I don't have children and I don't mind Lord, going to jail. Lord, 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 listen to Lynn, she's in charge. You mean this? Where did we get this? I got the biggest Christmas tree you could ever in your life see. There are all the animals under the tree. I got Mary, I got Joseph, I had the kid. I'm Jewish, I got the kid a nanny. It, it was just... And I redressed Mary. This is the honest to God truth. She was wearing like a blue schmanta, like a, I don't know, like a... Ugh. So hear me out. I put her in a Chanel suit. Manolo Blahnik shoes and a stunning Fendi bag. You are the mother of God. Look it. It is. Oh, a campfire. You got the fire, oh, I got the fire. You We walk over to the campfire thinking it's going to be romantic and lovely, and we get there and it is all families. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah. Are you guys staying the night? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> buffet. It's like the buffet in the Venetian. Yeah, it's like the all-you-can-eat buffet marshmallow Marshall. buffet. Oh, never had my eyes carry that much either. Because the sticks are a little short. Ow! Okay, you have to be careful because it's very hot. Okay. I did. I know more okay. swearing, okay? Oof. It's a beautiful place and it's for families, but this is maybe the least romantic weekend ever. If you don't know when the good times are rolling, you're a Princess Diana, I'm not happy. She had every thing you could want. She was tall, she was thin, she was beautiful, she was rich, she was married to a guy who didn't want to sleep with her. I, 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 <laughs> she had a crown. If you had a crown, you can go back to any class reunion for the rest of your life. <laughs> then let all those sons of <laughs> who didn't ask you out for the prom say to you, how you doing, how am I doing? Check my hat, that's how I'm doing. <laughs> Better than you. Good night, a pleasure working for all of you. I didn't think anything about leaving the kids. I mean, first of all, it was only gonna be two, two and a half hours. Lynn is very responsible and she's great with kids. Conrad is a big kid, he's in the house. And I promised Brad, I mean, he had the runs. What are we gonna do, say, no, go on stage and every time you get a laugh, run to the bathroom? <laughs> so how, how, how old are you guys? I'm age, I'm six. My son is nine. We're sitting at this campfire and I'm looking around and it's all families and we don't have the most important part of our family with us. We're just feeling really pathetic. You know what, I'm gonna go make sure the house is still standing. Okay. <laughs> Conrad. Hey, Conrad. Hey, Mel. Whoa, it sounds loud. Everyone's having a great time. Everything's fun. It's all good? Yeah, everything's good. If the house starts to burn down, I'll call you. Okay, bye. <laughs> What's happening to you, Spazzers? He called it, didn't you? Of course I did. How are they doing? <laughs> They're good. It sounded really loud. But everyone sounded good. I miss the little guy. I am, too. I mean, here we are. We end up at this family resort. And there's without, zero romance. And nothing our, has gone right. Nothing has gone right. We don't have our family. I mean, this is like, you it's been a bust. You know what? What? Maybe we should just go home tomorrow morning. Oh my God, you totally <laughs> read my mind. At least we have a nice, quiet day together. Oh yeah, it's beautiful at our us. house. I mean, we'll... I know. Oh, I love you. I, know. I, I love, love you. you. The evening's still not total bust. Romance will be had. <laughs> Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Surprise! We're home. What are you doing home? What do you mean you left? The point is, these other mothers left you in charge. Oh, those other... Come on! Here it comes. This is gonna be good. After the show, I came home. The house was quiet. I went to bed. The next morning, I got up. I was making Cooper breakfast. Oh. Good to be home. I know. I get to see the little guy. I know. Not too much. Always better, a little less. Hello, 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 I missed 
this is fun. Dude, we had a great time. And yes. why not? Exactly. We missed everybody, so, so we came back. Right. We had a lovely time. And we thank you it for that. Awesome. We had a very nice time too. Tell us everything. Beast. What did you guys do? I, I well, we had the beast feast. What'd you serve? I, I don't know. Lynn actually served, did the serving. Lynn. Yeah. Why was Lynn Why was here? here? Because I had to leave. I left to go perform. What do you mean? Uh, Brad Garrett called, and he has this terrible flu, internal flu. He had the runs, and he was doing this thing for charity. So he said, "Would I please go on for?" We're just down uh, at, at Catalina. What do you mean? So you said you left Cooper. Just with, and his friends. With Lynn. Mom. Lynn. Lynn is full of fun. I, know. I think those little boys had a great time. Cooper adores me with But Lynn. the point is, Lynn doesn't have kids. Lynn is not around kids that much. Lynn doesn't get it. You were in charge. What not only, I'm yeah. in charge. But not only did I leave you in charge of Cooper, I left you in charge of Cooper's friends. It was an emergency. Mom, but you don't leave. Would you please tell him how nice everything was last What do you night? mean that you guys left? No, 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 no. He everything didn't was leave. Fine. No, I was here. I was, Lynn was here. The kids were fine. But, but that's not okay. Well, why did cool? Yeah, yeah, why don't you tell him? I talked to you last night. I talked to you last night. Good. Why didn't you tell me? I have no Ten. problem leaving Cooper with Conrad. Well, when are. have I ever left Cooper and with Lynn? Lynn? The point is, these other mothers left you in charge. They, oh, those other mothers. Mom, I have no problem that you decide to set up a sleepover. My problem is, is you set it up and then you left. Okay. But I had to go. I had to help them out. It's show business. I understand, but sometimes you have to say no. Sometimes you have to prioritize your responsibilities. What if there had been an emergency? You're right. And you could have thrown up a flag. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next time it will never happen again. Uh, yeah, well, you guys I'm are right. Sorry. It's not going to happen I'm sorry. again. I'm sorry. It was an hour and a half. Am I right? It was an yeah, hour and a half. Yeah. Most, I was gone for what? Three hours, three and a half hours time. And what happened? They had a, a night to remember. The bottom line is this. You came out here to be with us and to be Cooper's grandmother and experience all these things. You get one call from work and you're out of here. Melissa, it's called helping somebody out. That's what it's called. But well, we're glad you're home. We had did a you use my, my gifts? Yes, we used the gifts. But we had all the gifts? Which gifts did you use? Not in front of Cooper. I bought you, your mother some gifts. Okay, Mom, enough. Yes. I just think that um, life is is tough and rough and everybody is busy. And so it's just nice to think about when you can, putting out a candle or having some flowers or a little gift on a pillow or pretty outfits and underwear. I think that's what makes life romantic. It reminds me that I do have to step back and does, take care of my relationship. It doesn't hurt to talk about Cooper if you've got strawberry and Cool Whips on your stomach. It was so awful. <laughs> Next time on Joan and Melissa. I am Joan Rivers and I am sound of mind. This is my last will and testament. What's the matter? She's in so much pain. We gotta go to the doctor right now. Yes. All right, all right, come on. She could be pregnant. Let's, let's go, go, let's go, let's go. Could she be pregnant, maybe? Well, that's not a crazy question. She's coming. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Okay. Surprise! Surprise! I've been looking for a house, and guess what? I found one. Previously on Joan and Melissa. I'm doing it, Melissa. I'm coming out to California. Hi. Welcome. This is the beginning of family dinner. Cheers to that. Cheers. 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 Living with Melissa is only temporary until I find my own place. I know it's a different generation, but you don't have a father, and someone has to turn to Jason and say, what are your intentions? Mom, enough. Oh, no. What is going on? You gave my furniture you away? There's been a lot of anger. What have I said lately that really upset you? And I know you don't always mean what you say, but sometimes it cuts. This is a train wreck. Unfortunately, I'm finding it a little more stressful than I thought it was going to be. But I can handle it. You know what's the matter with L.A.? What? You guys don't appreciate 
that the whole place is like a giant flower show. We do appreciate it, but that's why people grow these lovely flowers, so they have their own, so people like us don't come steal them. I don't consider this stealing. I consider this pruning, neighborly. Are you? Are you and just trimming? You're pruning for them. Yeah. We gonna do it here. I got it. Here, I got it. Mom, mom, mom. Those teeth are expensive. I got it. Yeah, I got it. I, listen, I've done this before. You were born. Okay. There we go. There we go. This is so much better than Central okay. Park. I think it's time to start to head back. Oh God. I know you're done with this walk. Yeah, for me, can why you why at least make an oh, effort? Oh. 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 Now that's nice. That is nice. Yeah. See, there are things here that you can find. A little big though, but very, and that I like. That I like. I've got to get serious about looking for a place. And Conrad has his license now, so I said, okay, really take me to a lot of places. The home has 5,800 square feet of livable space. Then we've seen, ugh, Spanish and French and, and English and uh, Moroccan. Perfect pool for Cooper. One, none of which I've liked particularly. Uh, this is done purposely. Oh yeah. I mean, it's all metal and steel and uh, it's like a bunker. What? What's wrong? Uh, it's spooky. There was one that was haunted. He took me to. Spooky. Nothing I've, I've liked so far, but uh, boy oh boy, it's been like a UN tour. I've been in the business, what, selling jewelry, what, 20 years? Right. So let me show you this. You got to be excited. You gotta be I would excited. love some tips. Conrad showed me a lot of houses, but he just doesn't uh, know how to get me really interested. So I think I'm going to show him how to sell. Two of you come in, mm. like a young couple, first house. <laughs> first house. OK. I have to do it, too. OK, that's fine. That's I, fine. I see the children. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on okay. out. OK. And we'll show it, all Done. right? You owe me for this, Conrad. Oh. Yeah, I'll pay you with my way. first commission. I, I will be you, Conrad. Okay. Hello. Come you must be there. there. Don't. I know this is crazy. Sh shut your eyes. Okay. You. Come in. Okay. okay. She's scared. I would, no, no. It's all right, dear. All right, so it'll be all right. Right where you are, I will tell you when to open your eyes. Look up. Is that amazing? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yes. The chandelier. One of a hundred made in the entire world. How do you oh. clean something like that? Oh, it lowers. The, whoever <gasps> built this house, and I know the owner, every detail has been thought out. It's amazing. Please come in. Okay. okay. Nice. This is your dining room, and if you notice what they've <gasps> done in here, copied from Gardens of Versailles. Yes. They did research. These are things just lie. Yeah, I love um, it. When you don't have things, you pass it over very carefully, like um. I think they're two washers. I'm not sure. I think there are. Also, one of the largest pantries I've ever seen. I like that. I saw that. That was good. Yeah. Come into my world. And what is this world all about? This room is me. For an agoraphobic, this room is perfect. How many people can make a and a deal at the same time? <laughs> you know, the more I'm talking about this house, I'm really starting to like it. It's really a beautiful it's house. A I love showing Melissa's house. I adore real estate. It's my passion. In my time, I've bought uh, four, five houses. Five houses. Uh, I put Fannie Mae to shame. You know what's so wonderful is when you sell a house, you really have to make yourself fall in love with it. I have fallen in love with this house. I can't wait to, to show all the, the good things of it to Melissa again, because you forget. Joan, I'm very appreciative for your words of advice. Well, you know what. You just got to fall in love with the house. Right. Impress them with the house and the neighborhood. It's very important to let them think they're celebrities. They love a neighbor with their celebrities. So ask me who's in the neighborhood. Okay, so who's in the neighborhood? There is one woman who lives uh, quite close, but um, I can't say the name. <laughs> But I think you would go gaga <laughs> if you knew who she was. Okay. I got it. They loved you. You could say, like, I think she's a bit of a material girl. <laughs> there you go. This is fun. The PSA on aging. We've got that scheduled here at the house. Why me? <laughs> Betty White sick? I also got a call today from Eli. Eli the Eli who? Eli the funky and fabulous. Eli is a professional, what you call, team builder. And she came to the house to kind of work things out because there was a lot of tension with everybody in the house. She destroyed this family. She I was called. here. It's a follow-up is what she does with all of her clients. 
Eli's last visit here at the house, I mean, she completely turned everything upside down. Do you see how the, the conversation is getting more honest? To me, what we're doing right now, it's gonna get ugly. I wake up every day feeling like I'm a failure. I don't know what I'm doing, it's so terrible. Before you were here, that was a very harmonious environment. Sir. I can't do anything to please you. Let me get the out of here. Let's let her come back. I mean, she truly is a lovely person. Oh, oh, she's a very nice woman. Very nice. She just caused havoc. I am thrilled Eli is coming back because apparently some people of this household are still speaking to each other, so her job is not done. Oh my God, is that Eli? What the hell is she doing out there? Is she facing Mecca? I always love it when you find out the psychiatrist's craziest of all, because I think it gives us so much more of a simpatico feeling toward everyone she works with. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello, hello. I wanted Eli to come back because she left this house in shambles. I mean, I went off to New York. Uh, no one spoke to anybody. It was just terrible. When you left, this place cleared out like someone screamed plague. Things were a challenge, but it, it seemed like you had at least some tools. I say everything I think, and Melissa is much more like her father. And so when she opened up, I thought that was very good for her. So all you got out was that I opened up. You don't think you've done anything wrong in the last however many months? I have to think about it. But Look at what we're sitting on. Yes, I, I, I admit that uh, perhaps I should not have changed the furniture. I had no idea. I came home and my furniture was gone. Her furniture, I thought, didn't quite look so good anymore. I call it given away. She calls it donated. Even a racehorse slips. So it gave away her furniture. OK, hey, it's like wrong adjacent, wrong-ish. See, this, I love this that. is what the house thinks of me. And I'm tired of being the clown, the devil clown. This is perfect. That, that's more now, accurate. OK, Melissa, what I'd like you to do is to get a puppet and tell your mom what you'd I'm really sorry. like to say right now. My house, not yours. So OK, now talk to the puppet. I'm sorry. You cannot come into my bathroom and take pictures of me in the shower. Once. What? She looks great. You want to see them? Don't bury me in this. You know, again, with the death. I know my age. I'm very lucky. Pick up the obituaries every day, and there are people half my age that are already dead. So I'm very aware. It scares me. I worry about it. I'm so frightened of the loneliness and loss that I'm going to feel, and that weighs very heavily on me. So, Melissa, if your mom had one minute to live, what would you tell her? That I love you, and your life has meant something. And more importantly, you've meant something to me. You've made a difference. Very nice. It's probably the nice thing she's ever said to me. I think you're a wonderful mother. I think you've been an amazing daughter. And my final wish for you is please, God, let you love your life and have fun with your life, because it goes like that. And I'm beyond proud of you. And I hope as you get older, you will get your face back. I knew that's where I was going. I, I knew it. I knew I exactly that was going to be the joke. I think, well, I actually, in between all that we had a breakthrough. Bye, goodbye. goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, you know what? For you know all what? the craziness, she's great. She's great. And you know what? What? I totally apologize about the furniture. Thank you, I appreciate that. Totally. I want so much to get the furniture back because it will make Melissa happy, and that truly is one of the two reasons I came back to California. One, to be with Melissa and, and, and make her happy and a family, and two, they have the best plastic surgeons out here. Sabrina, Sabrina, yeah. Sabrina. Yes, ma'am. Eli was just here. And of course, I'm wrong, I'm wrong with the furniture. So let's get the furniture back. 
John, that's a problem. Seriously. What kind of problem? First of all, it's been two months. Right now, there might be somebody trying to buy it, so the sooner we make the call, the sooner we'll know. I will do it. Let me take care of it. What more from Miss Eli? We talked about death, and Melissa talked about death, and how sad death would be. Have you got the little camera? I'm gonna make a will with, what are they, a, a visual it. will? I have it. You want the camera, you want the, the video? I think it's important to make a will. This age, I'm not afraid. I want to make a will while I have all my faculties intact, where I know what I'm talking about, while I still can be very much in command of my own life, uh, before Alzheimer's kicks in, and that's why I want to leave every single thing to my daughter, Melinda. Melissa. I'm really concerned about the furniture, but here's the camera. How does it work? Do you know how it works? Press this button to turn it on, all right. and this turn starts and stop. Okay, is it on? Is it recording? See that red light? Okay, that I'm gonna use you as a witness. You're gonna sit down next to me. Joni, do I really have yes. to be a witness? This, I am Joan Rivers and I am sound of mind. She's sound of mind. This is my last will and testament. I leave all my jewelry as follows. What do you like of mine? Tell me the truth, what do you like? Um, you better do it now. I feel palpitation. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Whoa, Jason! What's the matter? She's in so much pain. We gotta go to the doctor right now. Yes. All right, all right, come on. Ah! feeling of a Brad Garrett at the comedy club a few weeks ago, they call me back. Men don't call me back, but clubs do. And that's why I love performing. I think old people should just die at 70. I, 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 oh, I do. I think at 70, they just take you out. <laughs> Goodbye, Grandma. And, uh, think of all the apartments that you could get. It, it's just... I love playing a small club because you can ad lib, you can say, anything to when there are only two or three hundred people in a room. It's all about sex. Intelligence, I spit on intelligence. No man will ever put his hand up your dress looking for a library card. I don't give a <laughs> how smart you are. No, because I was saying what I like, and I happen to love anal sex. I love it because you can double task, you can multitask, you can, you can be very busy on a computer at the same time. It's like... So how are you? <laughs> How's the family? <laughs> Take your time. It... Good night. A pleasure working for all of you. And I love you so much, and I'm completely flattered by it, but you know you're doing a bit that I do. Almost verbatim. You're making a joke. No, I'm serious. The anal sex thing. I did it on my Comedy Central yeah, I've been doing that for years. John, I did it six years ago on Comedy Central. I do a whole thing, and mine's not anal sex. It's just doing it doggy style, and I, I mm. say the words multitask. I okay. would never take them. John, I never in a million years think you took it out of this, and believe me, if anyone's gonna take a bit of mine, I'm glad it was you. I am so angry at Lynn, because one thing comics do not do, we do not take each other's jokes. It is such an honor system. For years I've been doing that joke. It's totally fun. I just don't want you to I see me do doing it and think that I took it from you. Lynn, I love you very much. I'm yeah. just gonna okay. take it. Maybe you took it from me. Joan, <laughs> this is what I did not want to have happen. I absolutely did not take it from you. I did not take this from you. I am, you have no idea, I am fuming about this. Go work it out, go work it out. I think Lynn really in her heart somewhere believes I took her joke. All right, I gotta get the TMZ crew in I here because I want, I don't, I'll take her. Joke. I know. I find that outrageous. Okay, I'm gonna get the TMZ people in here so we can get them out. Not right. Not right. About the house hunting, I'm not saying you're not trying, but I mean, if you think about it, there's so many houses on the market right now, and it's it's. Would you like me to leave? I'm Would not you saying you want to leave. Sleep in my car. No, I'm not, Mom, I'm not saying sleep. The top in your comes car. up. 
I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's really. Uh, why don't you come with me, Melissa? Okay. I think that would solve a lot of problems. Okay, I'll come, come with you. Come with me. I'll come with you. It's great. Okay. Welcome. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm Melissa Liz. Good Hi, to Liz. meet nice you. To meet Glad you could join us. Thank Great you. to nice see, see you. you. Come on in. You're going to love this house. It's a 7,000 square foot Mediterranean home. And it's a grand home for entertaining, for your friends, and also for your grandchild. It's got everything. That's a great backyard. This is a salt water pool and an eight person spa and everything is remote controlled. The heat, the water fountain. This house is sensational. I mean, it's big, it's bright, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. This kitchen is a cook's kitchen. Wow. Uh, this is a built-in cappuccino maker. There's two warming Ooh, doors below. I love the warming so, doors. I like the openness of this. It goes right it's up. It's a very open floor plan, Loose high yeah, ceilings. Yeah, I just don't feel great. You don't feel great? Uh-uh. You want to sit down? I'm going to go upstairs. No, I want to go upstairs. OK. How many bedrooms? There are four full bedroom suites upstairs with one maid's uh, room downstairs. Are you OK? Yeah, so let's check this out. I'm out with my mom looking at this house, and I really started to feel crappy. Are you OK? I just have been feeling like migrainey and just achy, achy, achy all day. So I just want to sit on the side. I just stay. Doors come on in either both side. Ways, right? yeah. And you'll notice all of the bedrooms have uh, walkout terrace space. Stabbing pain right in my side. But I wasn't going to let her stop looking at this house because I really feel like it could be the one. Are That's you OK? Yeah, I'm just like crampy. Sit down. No, I'll, I'll look. Just, you know, just keep looking. You I, just, I know. I'm going to go sit down downstairs. I really didn't worry about Melissa on the house tour because uh, I thought maybe she got sick and suddenly she ate or cramps or maybe she heard the price. They have their own screening room. We really, I'm Let's sorry, go. I, I, I really am, don't. Okay, I think it's a terrific, terrific house. All right, let's go, let's go. I'm one of those people who just simply doesn't get sick and I wasn't just feeling like ick, I was feeling like I was going down. Oh, Jason! You okay? It, no, it really hurts. Okay, really okay, bad. Don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. Put, stretch out your legs at least. Okay. okay. Melissa! She's in so much pain. I, we gotta go to the doctor right now. What's the matter? When you hear your child in pain, I mean, it's it's the worst thing you can hear. I, I was totally unhinged. It's like stabbing now. All right, okay, okay, let's God, go. It let's it hurts. go. I went up those stairs faster than. Kirstie Alley going to an all-you-can-eat buffet. I just flew. It was super Jew time. Hi. Who's your doctor? Heisinger. All right, have you called him? Rob, I called Rob. Yes, all right, all right, come on, come on. As a mother, that's it, you clicked right in. I grabbed her, I said, we are getting to a doctor. Raina, tell her we're on our way. way. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. She's just been really achy. Could she be pregnant, maybe? Well, that's not a crazy question. We'll still run a pregnancy test on you. If. She's pregnant. I think you should get married. I have great news. You're kidding! Just breathe. It's like a really bad cramp. <sighs> we have just rushed Melissa to the doctor's office, and I am out of my mind because of this terrible pain in her side. It's going to be fine. I just hope it's nothing serious, but you know, sometimes you walk into a doctor's office one way and uh, your whole life has changed. You come out another. You think you're pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. If you were feeling a little bit better, Melissa, we could steal supplies. Hey, Melissa. Hi. Hi. Whole family's here. Yeah, the whole gang's here. Holy I'm... moly, that must mean you're really sick. It started cramping, coming all the way around from like here to here. Let's Think start in with that. Lay back down. Come yeah. on, let's look at your yeah. abdomen. Okay? Yeah. Oh. She's just been really achy constantly. And now it's moving to that the, side too. Is the left worse than the right, or it's kind of equal? I'm gonna the hit you right here. The left is worse here. than the right. The left is worse the left than the is right. Worse than the right. Could she be pregnant, maybe? Well, that's not a crazy question, because anytime a young woman's nauseous, obviously that's on the list. 
but stress can make you nauseated. I mean, is there any other special kinds of stresses that have been going on? What? My mom's been living with us for the last two months. I've been living with her for two months, but... Well, it is kind of interesting that, that all her symptoms started about a month ago. The doctor said this could be due to stress. And I could see already Melissa and Jason were going, we know stress is spelled J-O-A-N in this household. But the doctor said it couldn't all be from me. Of course, the doctor doesn't know me. We're going to do a bunch of things, including a pregnancy test, and I'm going to run Good. a bunch of lab tests. Come on, let me walk you over to my office. Can you also uh, harvest some eggs while she's here? Mother, get out of while the room. While you're doing Mom, it, Melissa, please. you're I'm here. When the doctor said Melissa should take a pregnancy test, I was so excited. I, I, I didn't even wait for the stick. I said, just pee into my hand. She had a very rough pregnancy with, with uh, Cooper. I don't think she's pregnant. But if she were, wouldn't it be great? Yeah. Are you really living with your mom? Yeah. She's supposed to be looking for a house. Yikes. Yeah. If she were pregnant. You know, you, we'd have to make your room the nursery. That'd be great. Except I wouldn't put a child in that room. That room, Jason, I'm not complaining. It is so below ground. Every night I send a canary down before I walk in to make sure there's enough air. We're going to run some blood tests on you. We're going to do some x-rays. We're going to see if we can get some stat ultrasounds to see what's going on inside you. If she's pregnant, I think you should get married. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's not something we haven't, you know, it's something could, we talked we about, We could call it, it was a girl, we call it Little Joan. <laughs> <laughs> She'll kill herself. Oh, my God. <laughs> if Melissa is pregnant, Jason and Melissa have to get married. That is what you do. It gives a child a very strong base to start with. Then you mess them up. Hey, Melissa, hey. I brought your family back in. Hi, okay. hello. 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 We've got all her reports. How you doing? Everyone, please take a step back. Why? Because okay. I feel like everyone's hovering. I'm like, well, everyone is hovering. Okay, are. but can, can I have my personal space? And then you can hover well, outside that? I you can have your personal space when you're well. When you're sick, no, you don't get it with Jews. Jews don't have personal space when they're sick. Sounds it's logical a Jewish, to me. It's the 11th commandment. You know, the pregnancy, we can approach that from two different directions. You know, from your mom's direction, I guess it's bad news. You're not pregnant from your direction. She had Jonah for a boy and Joe for a girl. Well, that's creative. What about the nagging soreness in my abdomen? Mm -hmm. Ovaries are fine, no cysts. But guess what? We're looking for a left kidney stone, and this is kind of the wild things of medicine. We found a right-sided kidney stone. When it passes, it could be quite painful. Uh, but right now, we have to let nature run its course. Should you pass it, I want you to fish that out because we then analyze it under the microscope. We can then design specific treatments so that another one doesn't happen. This comes from drinking soy milk. The good news was uh, it's a kidney stone. The bad news was it's not a baby inside it. All right. So come on, let me take my baby home, and we'll take care of you. Okay. I just want to go lay down. I'm very, very tired okay. and sore and cranky. This has been very stressful for me because this is the first time I've ever, in the last 20 years, left a doctor's office without a bandage. Get you upstairs. Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs and lay down. Hey. Okay. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. Happened. Well, kidney stone. It's kidney. What? Kidney stone. Yeah, they don't know what it. else. The How doctor, big is it, Joan? I, I, he said like four millimeters. I don't know. I wish you had told me in carrot size. So you understand your mother now has to go to the bathroom through a coffee filter so that we can catch the kidney stone. Can I bring up for show and tell? Here you go. How are you feeling? Okay. It just hurts. All right. Okay. Oatmeal, a rice cake, which I took a big bite out of, and I left it in the bottle so that you can just keep drink, drink it and keep on drinking. Yeah. These are the filters, which I'll put in the bathroom. Okay. Try that. That's good. The juice, hot water. I love my mom, and she tries so hard and is so sweet, but she made the instant oatmeal with cold water. That's why it's not dissolving. You need to use no, hot I water, not cold water. Melissa, you gotta eat something. Oh, I just don't want to eat. I'm just, I'm just really, 
really uncomfortable. All right, just okay. Hurts, All right. And I just don't feel like eating. Okay, okay, okay. The realtors called from the house that we looked at. They were very worried about you. Oh, yeah? It was a great house, didn't you think? It was a really pretty house. I love that family room to the outside. Okay, maybe we'll look at it again, huh? Okay, Mommy. All right, if you need anything, shout. Hey, Joan, is that you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. I got one quick thing for you before you run off. I'm having lunch with my agent, if I can recognize him. You so look make fantastic. It fast. Yeah. I have great news. Yeah. We got the furniture back. You're kidding me. I oh, Sabrina. Not. Oh, my darling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, she is going to be so excited. I, when? When can we get it back? We can have it delivered tomorrow. Tomorrow? Are you? Don't tell Melissa. Promise you won't tell Melissa. I'm not saying a word. Right, can we get the other stuff out in the morning? Absolutely. We can do a switch all in the same day. What do they want for it? How much do they want for it? Whatever you think it's worth. I don't know what it's worth. It's your daughter's happiness, Joan. All right, give me the checkbook. Where's my checkbook? Okay. Okay, so I'll give them a check. So what do you think? $500? I think you're gonna have to add some more to it, Joan. They worked with me. A thousand dollars? This is Melissa's happiness. I decided on $23,500 because Sabrina sat there and just stared at me. I mean, if Sabrina had not been in the room, they would have gotten a beautiful, wonderful thank you note and $500, and everyone would have been fine. It's a lot of money to bring back crappy furniture. And here's so they know I mean well. There we go. I think Melissa's going to be so happy that her furniture's back, she's going to pass that kidney stone right in the couch, and then we'll have to recover it. It'll be a win-win. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. Do you want me to have a baby? You want a brother or sister? Mm -hmm. To whom it may concern, Lynn is out of the will, period. Oh. She's feeling much better. She's sleeping. Is she OK? Well, yeah. she's not OK. I mean, it's like, Ugh. is she? <sighs> they say that kidney stones are next to childbirth, it's the worst pain a anyone can have. Yes, and at least when you know what it is, you can deal with what it is. Mm -hmm. You girls, ahead. I am planning to give everybody, just so you know, uh, Dominica, uh, I am giving you some really nice jewelry. You yeah, know, Sabrina, right. you're getting jewelry. Mm -hmm. And Lynn, I am giving you my entire joke collection. Lynn gets my entire joke collection, which That's you will see, so Lynn, nice. if you look it up, you will see that I have been doing anal sex jokes since 1974. Because I have not forgotten what you said in Catalina. So just so you know. OK, first of all, I did not accuse oh, you of anything. Oh, you certainly did. Oh, I did not. Oh, I... Lynn. Oh, Lynn, let us talk to each other here. Lynn, it was my big moment, well, my Comedy I... Central half hour. Excuse me, I missed the half hour. <gasps> I must have been doing something in the afternoon. Oh, that's so mean. After my performance at the comedy club, Lynn came backstage and accused me of stealing one of her jokes. I mean, ridiculous. I mean, the nerve. I mean, is she nuts? When you stop? was upstairs with a kidney stone, and you are yelling at me and fighting with me because you claim I stole a joke. First of all, I didn't ask the anal sex because it's you not an anal sex joke. Mean, what do you mean it's not an anal sex joke? Mine is a doggy style joke. What is the difference? One is in the and one is in the It's amazing the things you can learn in your kitchen that have nothing to do with cooking. My day, you were a lady, just let him do it. Oh, 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 oh. Do you know what I'm saying? You just let him do it. That was it. You can have And then you go back. And it was usually during a commercial. <laughs> you are a sore loser. To whom it may concern, Lynn is out of the will, period. Whatever. Hey, honey. You awake? Yeah. Brought you a couple of things to cheer you up. Oh, God. Flowers for you. And? What is that? Vodka with lemon. Vodka it's supposed to kill anything in the kidneys. Vodka with lemon? Yep. Drink enough of this, it'll dissolve anything. It's like Drano. Ready? I'm doing it with oh, you. Oh, God, Jay, I'm going to throw up. That's not going to work. Everybody has a suggestion on how I can pass the kidneys down. I got some coconut water for you. It's really, really good. My aunt swears by it. 
It's called chicken bone grass. It's an herb, but it's real rare and you can only really get it in China. I'll start like whipping. Like it kind of opens up the pores, so it cleans the whole body. So you take olive oil, coat your thumb. Okay, now you stick it up your butt and you wiggle it. And it does something, loosen something up there. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I made you a card. You made me a card. Oh, is that me? Mm-hmm. Oh. I love you, Angel. Love you. Oh. Grandma says maybe you're having a baby. I'm not having a baby. Do you want me to have a baby? Mm-hmm. You want a brother or sister? Mm-hmm. Sorry, and I just want you to know, if you hear me scream, in the next, like, 24, 48 hours, don't worry. It's just me passing a kidney stone. Got it? Mm-hmm. I think we should name my kidney stone Rosetta. Mm-mm. Yeah, Rosetta Stone. I like Larry. Larry Stone? Mm -hmm. Okay, Larry Stone, then. I love you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I leave my Emmy to Jay Leno because somewhere in his lifetime, I think he should have the pleasure of touching one. That is as close as you're gonna get, fatso. Oh, I beg with you. I plead with you. I read an article in the New York Times that after people die, their hair grows, their nail grows, and they fart if they've had gas during their lifetime. Nail down my coffin. Otherwise, I swear to you, it's gonna blow open during the service. It was hard to believe that something so small could hurt so much. That's it? Wow. I mean, my kidney stone was only four millimeters. I mean, that's tiny. And it's just, hey, everyone! Guys! Guys! People have been in my face the entire time. As soon as I'm passing the stone, I'm in agony. No one's home. I passed the stone! Hello? You guys, I passed the kidney stone! Typical. Coming up on Joan and Melissa. She's coming! Okay, okay, okay. Too okay. Many okay. Shh, shh, shh. Surprise! Everybody, I have an announcement. Joan Rivers, I am of sound mind and body, and this is, I guess what they call, an amendment to my will. I have been doing a video will, because after I die, I want the family to know exactly what my wishes are. Lynn Coplitz apologized to me for saying I stole one of her jokes, so she is back in the will. She gets all my joke files, and I beg her, I beg her, Please use my jokes to freshen up your act. My goodness, I mean, take my Kennedy assassination bit. I mean, it'll just make you sound more current than what you've got. So I just got a call from the charity. Yeah, yeah. And the movers are coming up the hill. So they should be ringing the doorbell any minute. Ah! Right now, so, isn't it? When I first moved in, I hated the way Melissa's living room looked, so I got rid of all her old stuff got her new stuff, and gave the old stuff to charity. She hated everything, and uh, luckily, I was able to buy it back. They're here, hold on, All right. hold on. Okay, come in, come in. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Come on in. How nice to meet you. Okay, go All right, to guys, it, gentlemen. Go to it. I can't lie to you guys. I'm watching everything you're doing. Now this table is beyond heavy. Shut your eyes, think you're lifting Connie Wilson. It's already looking better. Come on guys, go, go! 
It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. I can't wait till Melissa opens that front door and sees all the furniture's back. I mean, not in a million years would she think that I did this. And this is fabulous. She knows I'm making amends this way. It's so much easier to say that I'm sorry. It's also more expensive. She's coming. Get down. She's coming. All right. All right, come on, everybody. She's coming. Everybody, back down, behind, down, lower. Hurry up, hurry up. She's coming. Thank you. Lynn, move up. Okay, okay. okay. Two okay. minutes. Okay. Time. This is good. This is good. It's good. How'd you pull this off? Sabrina. Your mom was delighted to make this happen for you. Look, I was wrong. It's 100% better. I kiss every single one of these pieces. How about oh, that? Oh, I am so. Look, we got the pillows. I am so happy. Everything is back. I am so impressed that you got my furniture back. I mean, they have to admit, it does look good. Yeah. Oh, no question. No question. What a difference. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I did have it cleaned. Melissa <laughs> decided we should do our weekly family dinner outside and potluck. Not the way I would do it, but it's going to be great. I want you guys to know my first potluck dinner ever. Ever? So, ever? Ever. 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 While we're all getting started, I'd like to make a toast. Yeah. First off, to another beautiful family dinner. A wonderful tradition started by my mother. You're here. And most importantly, I'd like to introduce you all to someone. Larry <laughs> the Stone. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I can't ask the stone. Oh, Larry, Larry oh, the Stone. Oh, Thank you. Oh, chin God. chin. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh. Now, oh, when did it happen? Well, no one was home. Isn't that nice? There you go. Oh. Look at Larry. It's Larry. Cooper named him Larry. I couldn't be happy if the stone is gone. I was a little disappointed at the size of it. Because, you know, I like a big stone. But uh, I'm thrilled that it's out. To Larry. To Larry. Larry. Larry the stone. To Thank Larry. You. We, we Larry. hate to see you go, but you gotta go, Larry. <laughs> I don't go get the hell out. <laughs> It sounds oh. good. Help. Everybody, it's I have an announcement. Awesome. Announcement, announce Here we go. Excuse me, announcement. When Joan and I were in the doctor's office, we started talking. And, you know, she was talking about marriage and everything else. And I know we've talked about it, uh -uh. but, you know, I just thought this might be the time. When Jason pulled the box out, I mean, all I could hear was like my heart pounding in my ears because I'm thinking, she's gotten to him. Are you like it? Mm, I love it. Look, oh, let me see, Mouse. It's a commitment oh. ring. It's not an That's... engagement ring. All I gotta say is, thank God it's a commitment ring and not an engagement ring. Cause... I knew better. We talked about it. But tell me, what does it mean? <laughs> oh. Explain to me what it, it means. It means that we're in a committed relationship. Well, it's a commitment ring. You know what a commitment ring stands for? I want to spend the rest of the week with you. We don't have to be engaged. We don't have to Good be job, married. Jim. My day, first you got pinned, then you got engaged, then you got married. So where does the commitment ring fit in? Somewhere in between pinned and engaged. Is it more serious than a pinky lock? Yeah, it's, it's more serious than a pinky swear. Then what's the next step? Of course, your heart hoped to die. No, Mom, it just means we're committed. We're in a committed relationship and... Blood mix. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a commitment. I know. It's very That's gorgeous. It's a yeah. good yeah. job, Jamie. Very, very, very you. you like it? What's the next step? A chest bump? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not sure why this is so confusing. It's confusing because one step should lead to the next step. Okay, but... Same as somebody gets married, that leads to divorce. I mean, people know what's happening. To the commitment. 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 And I have an announcement also. I know it's been a good eight weeks. I've been living here, good times, some little bumps along the road. It's been tough, but I think on the whole it's been wonderful. But I've been looking for a house, and guess what? 
I found one. Oh, how really? about that? Congratulations. And I fixed, I closed on it today. You're going to have to ask my realtor because I you got him involved. No, no, no. Go on, I, I, tell I, him I, I, well, Yeah, I went in and I negotiated the deal and split the commission with the other agent, and Jones got the house. Hooray! Congratulations! Oh, my God. Congratulations. 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 Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. A bigger thing that's great. You know what house it is? What? When you and I saw it when you got sick. Oh, really? Isn't it beautiful? It's a very nice house. It's, it's the beautiful. greatest. I think it's so beautiful and light and big. And what I thought I would do is I'm going to let you have that house because He's growing. You've got all that wonderful room for you, which is so terrific. And this, this house is perfect size for me. Not too big, not too small. I feel cozy, I feel Mom. comfortable. I'm so happy. So here's to your new house. I appreciate the thought, but... I don't want a new house. But you love that house. Just you said you love that but house. But just because I In love... In between your pain, you said you love that just house. Just because I love the house doesn't mean I want that house. I love my house. I of course you love the house. How many people have said to you, here's a house? You got it. I don't want this house. I don't know how I'm going to convince Melissa to move to the other house. I just figure maybe I'll just live here. If I live here long enough, she'll do what my other three husbands did. She'll run out screaming. Oh, you're going to love it. But, Mom. Trust me. Mom, I love my house. Melissa, this one is so much nicer. Mom, you're acting like you're getting evicted. I don't understand it. You're going to a house double the size. I don't want you it. To have a screening room. Ah, to have a playroom with a billiards table in it. A waterfall on your swimming pool? I mean, this is, this is like living like a movie star or a major call girl. I mean, it's great. How would you like a big playroom? Mom. It's got a game room. It's got a movie theater, Cooper. Mom, Wait, you Cooper, see. cover your ears. Mom. Okay, now you got me thinking. Whoa. A game <laughs> room. Oh, 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 <laughs> Mom, you're not getting my house. I'm, I'm in it. I'm not trading I'm not leaving. house with you. I'm not doing this. I am not leaving. Yeah, there was a gorgeous... Congratulations, Melon. Yeah, no. Congratulations, no. Melon. So I've been working on my will, and um, I put in here a lot of things already that I want people to have, because I've been asking people, I want you to keep this. It was like, Mom, just I just keep it. But I hate talking about this stuff, and you I hate. You don't have to talk about. It. That's why I've done it. It just, it makes me sad. I just, I just. But it's a fact of life. It's okay. I just don't want to. I just. Then don't deal with it till you have to. <laughs>